All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. In today's video, we're gonna be going over some updates, um, updates to my channels, how I'm doing videos, uh, personal life updates, as well as updates on my return to Japan this year. And before we begin though, you guys might be wondering what all that stuff is in the background. And that is, um, I just got done doing laundry and decided to cover it with a blanket because don't we cover all our problems with a blanket? Hashtag relatable. So anyway, guys, let's get on with the actual bit of news here. And the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is that I'm no longer going to be doing monthly update videos. And the reason behind that is I feel like they've pretty much run their course on this channel and they've kind of been the same old, same old for a while now. And I feel like I've been in a way obligated to make those videos. Just if anything, to put something up on the channel to show you guys I'm not dead. I feel like I've, you know, not been giving you the type of content that I'm necessarily proud of. If I do have something significant I want to update you guys on, I'll be sure to post an update video, but I don't want to feel obligated to do so just because, well, it's a new month, so gotta get cranking on that update video about nothing. Uh -huh. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that I've reopened my old channel, youtube.com slash andysan. And the reason behind that is I decided to make that basically my archive channel. So it has all of my old videos and I'm going to be slowly phasing newer videos onto that channel as well. Mostly my old update videos and a couple other stuff. The reason behind that is it's, well, way easier to do on my old channel because they already have like most of the videos on there anyway. And so over the next uh, couple months, I'm going to be phasing out some update videos on this channel and moving them over to that channel. So if you guys want to check out all my old vids, uh, be sure to do that. YouTube.com slash Andysan. This leads into the next bit of news, which is I'm gonna be changing the direction of this channel. Um, the reason you guys have been seeing uh, some Andy Before Japan -y stuff, as opposed to like vlogs and other stuff, is that you know I want to make this channel a bit more Japan-centric. The reason behind that is, is well, I'm gonna be going to Japan this year, so I want to kind of set the table, set the groundwork for that. And that's one of the reasons why I'm phasing out old update videos and just some other stuff that's not really relevant to this channel anymore. And that's why I've been phasing them into their own archive channel. And I'm gonna be doing a lot more Andy Before Japan-y stuff and other Japan-related stuff on this channel. I am gonna also do vlogs about my life and things like that that aren't necessarily Japan-related, but when I'm in Japan, I'm in Japan, so, you know. <laughs> but the channel is going to be mostly centered on Japan stuff. So let's get on with some personal life updates. Now, as you guys know, I've been doing the freelance video editing thing for a couple years now. I think up going on two years at the time it's recording. Thanks to that, I've been able to keep afloat while looking for a job out here in North Carolina. I moved out here a couple months ago to save up some money so I can get back out to Japan this summer doing the freelance video editing thing for other channels to keep myself afloat, pay expenses, save up. And I've also been selling a lot of my stuff on eBay. So I sold a lot of my cameras, camera equipment, and other big electronics, some DVDs, Blu-rays, things like that. And I've also managed to get myself a new work at home job. Really excited for that. It's just a temporary part-time gig, which works out for me because I'm only going to be here for a couple months anyway until I get back out to Japan later this year uh, and it still gives me enough time to continue to work on videos so basically for the next couple months the rest of the time that i'm here in the states i'm basically just going to be working saving up selling stuff because i'm really really adamant about getting myself out to japan this year you know i've said in years past you know oh, it wouldn't be nice if i could go to japan or oh man i really miss japan but really i, I didn't do anything to progress towards that. I just, you know, talked about it. I didn't really do anything beyond talking about it, you know, because I felt like it was so out of my reach. You know, I had all these other things like, well, you know, what about my job? And what am I going to do about my car and all this other stuff? And it's just like, you know, I've kind of gotten to a point where even I'm sick about hearing how much I miss Japan. I think at this point, 
you know, it's kind of like put up or shut up, basically. So, like, if I'm really serious about missing Japan and wanting to go back to Japan, I should make a serious effort to do that. So, that's why I moved out here, North Carolina, helped me save up, spend some time with the bro. You know, can't wait to get back out to Japan, making the videos that I used to make for the Andy Japandy series, and, you know, been rewatching it here and there. I've been following a lot of newer YouTubers on the scene, kind of getting some ideas for what's new out there and just how they do things. And、um, just looking forward to it, man. You know, once I get out to Japan, be making videos not just for myself, but also、uh, being more hands on with my、uh, freelance video editing clients because they're all out in Japan or in, in Asia. You know, I just want to help them out as best I can, you know, whether that's just being an extra cameraman or. You know, being more hands on with the editing, just kind of showing them, yeah, you know, if you do it like this, you know, it'll be, it'll be cool and all this other stuff.、Uh, the last little bit of news here that I'll talk about before we head out is my update on my return to Japan. So, as you guys know,、uh, I've been applying to schools in the Tokyo area. Um, been applying to one in particular. And、um, right now, since the winter break has pretty much ended for colleges, I'm now able to submit college transcripts. So that was the next big barrier as far as、uh, paperwork goes, because I've ended up submitting everything else that I could. I was just waiting for winter break to end so I could request transcripts and you know, they'll be able to send them out in a timely manner.、So、right now, just working on that. Getting a letter of recommendation written up by、uh, one of my former bosses. So, once we get all that stuff in,、um, the application will start processing. And from there, you know, it's either a yay or a nay. And I'm hoping it's a yay, obviously. In the event that it's a nay, the next point of action would be to, you know, try to find a college here in town, take some classes, boost my GPA, because I think. I think my GPA is the only thing that's really holding me back. I know the last time I was in college, I didn't really do so well. And a lot of it, well, all of it really was on me. And, you know, I've learned a lot from my times in college. And, you know, I just feel like environment plays a huge role in success. You just think about even plants. You know, some plants grow really well in the desert, others, not so much. I feel like, you know, when I was in college last time, it was up in Michigan. I really didn't have a friend base or, you know, a family base out there that I could reach out to if I needed help or even just to like come over on a weekend and have a nice meal and hang out and catch up and stuff. I really didn't have that up in Michigan. It was pretty much just me by myself. The difference between me going to Michigan versus me going back out to Japan is that I have a huge、uh, friend base. Out in Japan. You know, I know so many people out there through my time networking when I was stationed out in Japan. And even since getting back here, you know, my network has expanded just through meeting people online through other people I knew from networking out in Japan. You know, I was talking with Tokyo Kuni the other day,、I、just sent him a message, you know, asking, you know, I'm going to be going back to Japan this year. And I was just wondering, like, you know, what type of videos do you think I should make? And he basically gave the old Quentin Tarantino quote of, I just make videos that I want to see. And just so happened that other people wanted to see them too. That really stuck with me. And I want to thank、uh, Kevin for、uh, responding to me for that. And I think that's the kind of mantra that I'm going to go with when I get back out to Japan is just making the videos that I want to make and you know, not trying to chase after. Numbers and subs and all this other stuff. You know, just make stuff you want to make, and if people like it, awesome. If not, hey, at least I'm happy with it. In any event, guys, I think that's just gonna do it for this video. I want to thank you for watching this vid, liking, commenting, subscribing, all the cool call to action stuff that YouTubers do. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son, sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to a new update video. So, I guess technically, since this is the beginning ish of a new month, this could be my February 2019 update video for you guessed it, February 2019. Woo, yeah, sue me. So, <laughs> even though I said I wasn't going to do any more like monthly update videos, I do have something to say, and it does technically fall on the beginning of a new month. So, 
sue me, okay? In any event, um, let's go over some new stuff. So the biggest thing you probably have noticed is that over the weekend I updated uh, profile pictures and cover art for my channels. Now the only channel that I haven't updated yet is the Andy Talks Navy channel. I'm still working on some cover art for that. Um, I really do like the uh, the profile picture for it so I don't know I might might hold off on redesigning it for a later time but definitely needs some new cover art. That shit's from like 2012 or something. I don't know we got to get that get that all taken care of. So so stay tuned for that. And the next bit of news, which is pretty much the main reason I'm even making this video, is that I just called Western Michigan University today and they've received my last uh, money order. My balance has been completely resolved. Now they're gonna lift the hold of my account so I can send out transcripts over to the college I'm applying to in Japan so we can get moving with that process. So I'm very excited. Um, it was a bit of a kick in the old bank account as I talked about in my uh, Japan update in Andy Before Japan D episode 6 if you haven't watched that yet and I'm pretty much down to zero at this point you know which you know which really sucks because I worked really hard to get you know my savings and stuff in order but uh, you know combination of car breaking down and you know getting this you know the last of my balance at Western paid off stuff I had to get for my new job you know it just it just kind of is what it is at this point so you know now that I've got myself all set up now it's time to save up and uh, get moving back out to Japan so yeah really excited for the way forward and as far as new videos and stuff like that goes I'm probably gonna record something right after this update video so you won't be starved of content from the old Andy San Sam Modesta anytime soon another thing I talked about in uh, Andy Before Japan episode 6 the update video was that I've been going through a little bit of burnout as of late so I know I haven't really done much uh, last month. Uh, that was mostly just like my recovery month, you know, getting settled into uh, my new job, get everything all prepped for that, and just kind of getting myself ready for the new year, kind of taking a break after running so hard at the end of last year, you know, getting all the stuff sold on eBay, getting last minute uh, freelance stuff taken care of, even just applying for the job that I got really took a lot out of me. You know, I did do some projects and I did make some videos and stuff in January, but for the most part, you know, I, I not really took it easy, but um, I just decided to kind of limit my output uh, just because I knew I was running myself a little too hard and didn't want to completely burn out. So I was just like burning out. And I knew that, you know, if I were just kind of tone it down a bit and, uh, you know, get my self care back in order, then we'll be able to uh, carry on smartly from there. And I'm happy to say that. You know we're getting there. I'm um, still not 100% yet, uh, but I'm definitely, definitely a good ways closer to it. We'll say <laughs> probably like 85%, maybe 90. <laughs> so we're definitely getting closer. Also got some new freelance video editing projects, you know, lined up. Um, there's several that I've been working on. Um, I've been like really super long projects and it's been really difficult for me to try to find like a good starting point because it's one of those things where it's just a massive amount of footage and b-roll and just stuff that I have to sift through and try to make sense of it basically so that's been uh, that's been really hard for me to uh, to deal with and I feel so bad because you know the the guy I'm making the videos for has been a great client for me and I want to get the projects done but it's just like such an intimidating amount of footage of just like I don't I don't know where to start dude but yeah my resolution is to get those all done by the end of February most likely earlier but uh, definitely before the end of February so well stay tuned for that um, it's definitely definitely gonna be quite a task especially if you guys see the amount of footage that's in these projects but in any event guys um, I think it's gonna do it for this little update video uh, I'm gonna record a new Andy before Japan D episode uh, right after this one I'm really digging this new uh, vlogging setup um, I'll have to show it to you guys in a little tech video at some point with that said this is the Andy San Sign up for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. K.
catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, we are back. Or I guess we're on, not really back. <laughs> but, uh, um, we're back live doing this thing again. So it's been a while since I've done a, uh, a good old vlog from the McDonald's, McDonald's, but it's at a different McDonald's than I used to do these McDonald's vlogs at. So um, yeah, a little different. So anyway, hi, Andy here. And uh, yeah, once again, we're at the uh, McDonald's in a different city and state. Uh, from the first one, so yeah, um, just hanging out, um, was watching some of my older, uh, McDonald's vlogs, and, uh, just got done eating here, threw out all my stuff, um, it's pretty good, had to wait a little bit, but, uh, case raw. So, yeah, I was just watching some of my old McDonald's vlogs, and I was thinking, like, man, it'd be kind of cool to, to do one of those again, um, Although this this one's a bit noisier because we got like uh, all kinds of highway noise and sorts of other stuff. So I do apologize if that shows up in the live stream. Um, but anyway, man, I really do like these uh, these raw vlogs. Um, it's kind of nice to just like kind of go out and about and uh, record some stuff without worrying about bringing it back home and putting it together and. All this other stuff, so that's nice. Um, now, I guess, you know, we can give you guys some updates on what's going on with me, uh, my return to Japan, all that stuff. And then we'll get into the, uh, the main uh, crux of the video today, which is 13 years on YouTube. Well, technically it'll be 13 years tomorrow. But uh, yeah, 13 years on YouTube, that is insane. But we'll get to that later, so. <coughs> excuse me. So just some updates on me. Um, uh, brr, words. <laughs> Should've had some iced coffee while I was here, right? But in any event, um, yeah, speaking of coffee, I've actually been cutting back on, on caffeine as of late. Uh, it sucked for like the first two weeks, you know, I figured it'd take me about a week to get over it But like it wasn't really until this week that I started feeling normal um, Before then it was just like, you know, it's hard getting out of bed in the morning. My sleep schedule is all over the place and uh, Yeah, I just I didn't feel like awake even after just having one cup of coffee um, Which is kind of scary because <laughs> You know, I, I just cut back on how much coffee I was drinking. I didn't completely cut it out. Um, but some things I, I am noticing since I cut back on coffee was that um, I'm much more, I guess, appreciative of the one cup of coffee in the morning that I that I make for myself. You know, I, I don't take it for granted like I used to when I was drinking two cups. It's a, it's a small thing, but you know. And I think you know, long term, it's going to be good for my energy levels. Because I notice my energy levels are very inconsistent. You know, there's times where I have a good amount of energy and uh, can make stuff. I'm in the creative flow of things. And other times, uh, it's hard to even get out of bed. You know, and I guess that's life, right? Um, but last night was pretty good. Um, last night, I managed to get like a whole bunch of stuff done. You know, and also trying to find a good, um, just time to do it. You know, when is my creative peak time? Because I think the thing that's been kind of throwing me off, one of the many things that's been throwing me off, is uh, when I work on videos. Because like one of my things, in order to kind of combat burnout, was to not work late nights. Um, I, I wanted to just have, you know, my late nights, just kind of sitting in bed, either reading, watching anime, whatever, and just, just kind of relaxing, not really doing anything work-related. You know, I would just do all my stuff either in the morning or in the afternoon, and I could just goof off guilt-free, basically. It rhymes. Nice. Um, but, uh, you know, I did all that <clears throat> stuff, like, really late at night because uh, one of my clients wanted some last minute editing and stuff done. I'm just like, fuck it, I don't want to wait till the morning to do this. So I just 
knocked it all out, easy peasy, no problem. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, how can I combat, you know, having a healthy sleep schedule with uh, doing most of my work at night? So um, I'd really do like the effectiveness of me working at night. It just like everything flows a lot better. You know, during the day I'm just way too anxious and you know, I'm worried about getting things done. And then by the time night rolls around, you know, I'm trying to go to sleep, but I feel guilty for not getting anything done. It just leads to me being a big anxious mess. So uh, I think I'm going to be experimenting with doing more things at night. Um, but I think setting <clears throat> setting boundaries has been best for me. Um, you know, as I've been told, as I told you guys before, um, went through a, a big case of burnout um, late last year, early into this year, um, where I didn't really want to do anything, or my output was very minimal, um, and that was really hard for me because you know I really do enjoy do doing videos, and I know some of you guys in the Discord, which I have a Discord by the way. Um, might have to make that a, its own video to kind of advertise it so more of you guys can get in on the action. But that's where I do most of my interacting with, with you guys and spitballing ideas, sharing different interests and stuff like that. And uh, I really, really do enjoy it. So I might have to make a, a separate video for that just to show you guys uh, what all goes down in there, give you an invite code and whatnot. Well, I might actually change that up here soon, but, excuse me, in any event, um, you know, I've been working on myself, mostly, um, just trying to find the best ways to stave off burnouts, um, you know, just trying to build a healthy, a healthier work relationship between myself and my work. Because uh, I felt like, you know, when I first started doing freelance video editing, I wanted, you know, I had something to prove, you know, it was just like, you know, I was constantly working really long hours, not really making a whole lot of money relative to how much I was working, but I did it because I wanted to put in the hours, put in the work, put in the time, uh, generate a portfolio of work to show people that, you know, yes, I can actually do this, I can actually edit and look at what I've made so far and all the people that I've worked with and help them out and everything. And uh, you know, I, in, in some ways I felt, you know, in, in some ways like invested in my client's success. And you know, that was kind of a good mentality to have, but I noticed that it wasn't necessarily a very healthy mentality in the long run because um, just, you know, as an editor, there's only really so much you can do to contribute to your client's success, you know. Client success is, you know, predicated on several different factors, you know, 95% of, of which are completely out of your control. You can make suggestions, but anybody can make suggestions. So, you know, the only thing you really have control of is, you know, the video that you give them and even then they may ask you to like redo some bits or add this cut this switch this around stuff like that so you know I've learned to you know build a much healthier relationship between me my work my clients so um, it's not that I don't care about their success I do it's just that it's you know my, my focus is to make the best videos for them and for their audience. Um, and we'll just kind of keep it at that, because like their own success, you know, is, uh, is won by them. You can give them the tools, but it's ultimately up to them to, uh, to carry out the mission. So, you know, I'll just work on building up my own skill set, making the best videos that I can in a timely manner, and uh, do it consistently, because that's the main thing. You know, I've noticed I've, I was, I've been slipping up, you know, this year as far as consistency with things. I know some of my clients can uh, can attest to that. And to those clients, I, I am really sorry. It's just I'm going through some stuff, but uh, you know, coming out of it. 
and uh, ready to, you know, get this year off on the right foot. Um, as you guys know, I applied to a college out in Japan. Um, I think I might have let the name slip a couple times, so it's no big secret, but uh, I'm not going to overtly mention it. Um, just because I don't know if things are going to work out with that particular college. And, uh, you know, if they do work out later on, that's fine. But as it stands now, uh, it's all, it's, uh, kind of, I don't know, <laughs> basically. So, um, and I, I made a, a new Andy Before Japandi talking a bit more about this. Uh, but, you know, that video is going to be coming out very soon. And, in that video, you know, I say, I give you guys some updates going on with it, but basically, uh, the, the interview process, which was after I submitted all my paperwork, and they got all my transcripts and all that stuff, um, they set up an interview with me, and that's part of their application process. Now, I'd never been through an interview before, or a college interview, I should say, so I didn't really know what to expect, so I looked up online all kinds of different questions and things that most colleges typically ask uh, for interviews, and it was just kind of like typical job interview stuff, but college related, like, you know, what made you interested in this college, and what can you contribute to this college, and, you know, maybe telling you a bit more about yourself and things like that, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, I had some uh, responses and stuff queued up, you know, just kind of in the old head brain, and I felt ready to go. So, when I got the interviews through Skype, like, I I went out all out on this, you know, I was wearing nice clothes, made sure my hair was looking nice, and I think I might have, you know, pulled it back a bit so it didn't look all throwy and stuff. But uh, I made sure I was nice, presentable, had the good lighting, made my bed, all that stuff. But, uh, you know, when they came on, it was weird, man, because it wasn't just like a one-on-one -on -one session like I was expecting. Um, it was between me and uh, three other people. So they kind of like passed the, uh, the camera around when they were ready to like ask a question. But it was basically like, 13 minutes of them asking me like why my grades were so shit um essentially and I, I did expect to uh get some questions about it like why did you why'd you do so poorly at this school and this school um what are you doing to uh fix that you know if you do get accepted here what will you do to uh, address those problems um what have you done in the uh gap year that you haven't been in school, you know, stuff like that. And uh, I managed to address all of it, but just, they kind of came at me taken, uh, taken aback by that, actually. I didn't expect them to be so aggro about my grades and the that and the But I did expect them to ask me about it in some fashion. I just didn't expect it to be the entire conversation, you know? So, hey, what up, Zappy Games? Zappy Gaming, rather. But yeah, um, so I just felt like a complete piece of shit after that interview. You know, it was just, I felt so defeated, you know. It was a very, very low feeling. Like, I just, I literally, like, sat in my chair just in stunned silence. I wasn't listening to any music, wasn't looking at stuff on the computer, I was just like facing away from my monitor, just completely like out to lunch. I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I, I couldn't process it. You know, it just, I just felt so completely defeated by it, you know. And I, you know, I kept telling myself, well, if my grades were such an issue, then they would have just told me that even before the interview started, like, why waste everybody's time if this guy's grades are so shit and we're not gonna bother accepting him, you know? Just send him a little, little thanks for trying, kid, email, and uh, go on from there. So, that interview was last week. Uh, 
You know, the whole weekend I was just completely out to lunch and watching some anime, just trying to get my mind off of it, basically. And, uh, you know, I've kind of come to terms with it at this point. Um, so they said they're going to get back to me within a week or two of that interview. So if I don't hear anything by uh, the close of business Friday, Japan time, which would probably be, what, like morning time tomorrow, my time. Uh, it's probably gonna happen next week. Just kind of, yeah, uh, you passed, kid. <laughs> Even though I felt like I conducted myself as best as I could, given the, uh, the circumstances, you know, I, I don't expect to uh, to be going to college out there at this time. So, you know, moving on to Plan B, which uh, you know I did anticipate grades being an issue. So, I figured in the event that they wouldn't accept me. I would just go to the local community college here in town, um, build up my GPA, um, save up some BAH, put that aside into uh, going out to uh, out to Japan, and uh, I think that's gonna be gonna be the route for me. But uh, I'm waiting to hear back from them first before I do anything, you know. Because, you know, it would be kind of dumb to, like, go through all this and they're like, yeah, you made it, kid. You can come out to Japan, you know? <laughs> so, but, you know, I got contingency plans. You know, if you give me the okay, I'll sell the sell this car, use that money for, uh, for money and a little bit of living sustenance until the bill kicks in. Try to save up as much as I can between now and then, which you know, since we're approaching March, really is it's kind of crunch time, basically for that. We seal to uh, so I sell it. I don't want. Okay, all right, and we're back. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's basically what I'm looking at. You know, if I get accepted, sell the car, make as much, make, make as much money as I can between now and then, uh, get rid of as much as. Uh, Get rid of like all my stuff that I've been taking with me to Japan, extra clothes, electronics, stuff like that. Um, use the money. It's like not all my stuff's worth a whole lot in the market. Uh, but, you know, do what I gotta do to uh, get where I need to get, basically. And if I do get rejected, which I think long term will probably be the best thing for me, it'll give me more time to save up. And uh, I'll just go out to the community college. Um, build up my GPA, collect that BAH, save it away. Hey, it rhymes kind of. <laughs> uh, and then just uh, reapply in the fall, you know? And if I still get rejected, just keep on going until, uh, until I say yay. <laughs> um, but obviously this next time I'm going to be applying to, uh, to more more colleges instead of just the ones that I went through. So, yeah. Um, you know, feeling, feeling pretty good about it now that I've really thought through everything. And really, like, looking back on it, I probably should have just went to college, you know, as soon as I got here. But, you know, I figured I had a pretty good shot at uh, getting into school I wanted to go to and 19 schedule up yet at the time because their site was kind of a mess it's a little better now but it was kind of a mess back then so I thought that the enrollment times you know start stop dates for the classes overlapped so that was the main point of contention so I didn't want to you know go to school here and uh have to basically drop out at the last month just to go to school over there. You know what I'm saying? So I figured that wasn't really an option, but after actually looking through the 2019 um, catalog, or not catalog, but like the 2019 schedule, uh, it is definitely possible for me to, uh, to do that. I mean, to not skip a month or whatever, drop out or whatever. So it's possible for me to like take summer classes here get my GPA up, <clears throat> show them like, you know, hey, I'm going to college at such and such place, you know, I have such and such grades so far. Um, is it okay now? They may they may even say no because, you know, it's just one semester or so. And 
I may have to prove like something consistent. I don't know. Um, but um, and I, I did get some some glowing recommendations, you know, from an old shipmate of mine. He was my LPO. Got it. Really good. Like that shit fucking brought me to tears. Actually, just reading it, I'm just like, fuck, dude. You know. So did a good job. Did a good job. But uh, there's that. Um, you know the uh, the statement of purpose that I wrote, basically outlining my background, my situation, why I didn't do so well, um, going to those colleges that I went to, and you know, had a condensate of it. But like I've been saying before, it was largely due to environment, really. You know, I didn't have a support structure out in uh, in Michigan, and there wasn't really anything for me that was creatively fulfilling. You know, it just felt like you know I couldn't really like go anywhere and make stuff. You know, and plus, you know, I was just going through all kinds of different uh, adjustments and stuff, and I've talked about these throughout my videos. So you, you guys know, you guys know the drill. And if you don't, be sure to watch my old videos on the Amazon archives. <laughs> so um, that's basically where I'm at. You know, we're like, what, almost 23 minutes in? <laughs> it's just been personal updates. Uh, but yeah, man, um, that's where I'm at right now. Just waiting on the word from them. You know, just kind of take it from there. You know, just doing that doing some freelance stuff um <clears throat> you know just doing my uh my work at home job which uh that was kind of an odd thing that happened so um you know i guess we're not really gonna get into that but uh yeah just do my thing there i uh, was trying to save us save up as much money as i can hold on to as much money you know try to save up things like that um so I guess we'll get into the uh, the uh, the title of this live stream 13 years on YouTube so I guess technically tomorrow would be my 13 year anniversary uh, March 1st 2006 ooh, was uh, when I officially started my very first channel which is now my archive channel the Andy Sun archives um, but that was actually my original channel and uh, yeah, when I started it, it, you know, I originally started that channel to uh, leave comments on other people's videos and to just interact with them because, you know, YouTube, at, at the time, there was really no other video sharing website like YouTube, which is why it, you know, became what it became. And uh, the main thing was, it was people um, being able to upload whatever they wanted. It wasn't a, a curated website, per se. Uh, and people uploading on a fairly regular basis so you know every week or every other week something like that um, and the comments you know being able to interact with the people behind the videos and not just say oh that was funny huh? you know oh, men get punched in junk cat video you know stuff like that um, there was you know interaction between the you know the video maker and the audience and that was one of the main draws for YouTube for me was that connection and I wanted to you know reach out to people that I watched on a regular basis and make comments and stuff in order to do that and to sign up for uh, for an account so I did that um, never really thought I'd actually make my own stuff uh, but I also used that to kind of upload some old um, clips from you know back when my friends were in uh, karate class and karate tournaments and stuff because uh, they originally had them on video CDs and you know I wanted something to where I could like show them on the computer without having to like find the video CD and put it in the computer and then like fast forward to the part that I think is like really funny so I ended up uh, just putting the clip up on YouTube so we could watch like my friend kicking this guy in the face <laughs> or this one guy like one punching somebody and they just like fall down you know oh stuff like that and uh, you know I'll show my friends band practice and everything um, 
you know, I didn't get into making my own videos until, uh, was, oh yeah, September 2008. I should know this. September 2nd, 2008. It's the day after Labor Day, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> Around Labor Day. I don't remember. Something like that. Anyway, um, so I managed to get a camera off of eBay. <clears throat> Back when I was working at Walmart, wasn't really making much money there at all. I uh, managed to find a used camera. It was a San Diego Zacti CG6. You know, definitely budget, uh, entry level camera. And, you know, keep in mind, back in the day, you know, we didn't have all the fancy schmancy stuff that you see on YouTube nowadays. You know, we don't didn't have the DSLRs on the Gorilla Pods and little road mic dangling up top and whatnot. <laughs> usually I had to kind of or even cell phones that was another thing like this this was not a thing back in the day you know we pretty much had either just what we could scrounge out of the closet you know maybe the mom maybe mom's old video camera or um, the uh, the two most popular cameras at that time <clears throat> were the flip cam and the senior Zacti series of cameras now the flip cam uh, Despite the name, didn't have a flip-out screen. The screen was fixed in the back. The reason it was called a flip cam is because the little USB dongle flipped out, and you just like connect that to your computer without having to use SD cards or any of that other stuff. And that was kind of the novelty of it. And plus, it was <clears throat> it was a cheap camera. It allowed people to get in on the action, fairly low price point. And then the other line was the Sino Zacti, which did have the flip-out screen. It was the old uh, pistol grip style cameras. So that was, you know, another good camera. And it was the camera that one of the guys that I watched on YouTube in the beginning, Tokyo Kuni, that was the camera he used. But he used a uh, kind of a, a mid-range uh, price point camera. Um, so I decided to just get one in the same like body style, but a little bit more my price range, <laughs> I guess we'll say. So I got a used one off of eBay that had a strip tripod and I got it for like a little under 100 bucks, I think. 90 bucks, something like that. Uh, which is a pretty good deal at the time. Now you can get them for like 30 or 25 bucks. So, uh, but in any event, <clears throat> you know, start off with that camera. You know, I bought it initially to take pictures to sell stuff on eBay because I had some old books and wanted to sell some games and things like that on eBay. And I needed a camera to actually show the stuff instead of just using stock photos, you know, cause I want to show the condition that the books were in, games, stuff like that. And uh, I also decided, you know, while I'm busy doing, all right, sorry about that. <laughs> the thing kind of disconnected there. But anyway, event, like I was saying, <coughs> <coughs> shit. As water, fuck. But anyway, like I was saying, um, you know, while I was, you know, taking photos and stuff for eBay, that was kind of the on the surface reason I got it. The actual reason I got it, you know, the one I didn't tell my parents at the time, was to uh, to make vlogs and to kind of, you know, share my life with people, just like uh, I saw the other YouTubers doing. And it was kind of rough at first, cause like a, I didn't know what I was doing. B, when I first started off, I didn't have proper uh, video editing software. Um, what I used to compile the clips and stuff from my original set of videos before I even had a camera was a software called Total Video Converter. And in it, it had a compile feature. So what you do is you would um, memorize the time codes for that video so you'd say like from from this point to this point okay put that in and then you know from this point to this point put that in and uh you just literally enter in the time codes <clears throat> in the order that you want the uh the video to be made <coughs> sorry yeah damn can barely talk and uh once you get all the time codes in then you would uh hit compile and it would put it all together so it was very non-intuitive, it was very clunky, very slow, uh, and especially on my computer at the time, I didn't have like a high-end, you know, editing desktop or anything like that. It was just a, 
middle of the road at best um, Dell desktop um, took forever to render anything and uh, I remember like some of my early videos even after I got like Sony Vegas which is the first actual editing software I used used that for years and years and years it wasn't until what was it like 2016 20 like late 2015 when I got the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud and uh, <clears throat> started using Adobe exclusively, you know, I wanted to uh, to get it because you know I was going to school at the time, get a discount for that, which is nice. And I also wanted to, you know, learn, you know, get my editing skills and stuff like that up, and actually, you know, use that on a resume for something. You know, and I didn't want to say, oh, I learned to edit in Sony Vegas because Vegas is kind of looked down on as an editing software. It's kind of almost like the joke software in a way. Um, even though it is, in its own right, a perfectly fine editor. And, uh, you know, I think it's fine to start off with. Um, and I think it's gotten better recently, I believe. I've seen some screenshots and stuff. So it's looking a bit more Premiere-ish, which is good. Um, but in any event... <clears throat> so I started off originally with Total Video Converter, which is not meant to be an editing software. It just had a compile feature that kind of sort of worked a little bit. Um, but from there, I decided to uh, invest in uh, an editing software. Got Sony Vegas. Um, started making some more edited videos. And uh, just kind of kind of grew from there, man. You know, once I joined the military, um, got, a, got my first um, HD camcorder. Which is the Sony, or the, the, not the Sony, the Sanyo um, SH1, which was the more traditional handheld camcorder style, and went up to like full HD, 60 frames per second, which at the time YouTube didn't support. Kind of wish I still had those old files, but in case they're off. So got that, um, and just continued to to upgrade over the years and uh, learn better um, editing and things like that. I think honestly, like my editing really improved once I uh, I started doing the freelance video editing. Cause like before, you know, I didn't really care so much about the editing. It was just like cut out any extraneous parts and uh, you know, just put out the video. That was basically it, really. Um, but once I got more into the nuance of editing for other people, I started incorporating that a bit more into my own stuff, and I started getting uh, used to that style of editing. And I really do enjoy it. But, you know, for my own vlogs and stuff like that, I don't incorporate it as much, mostly just due to time reasons. But uh, I think once I get out to Japan and get some good, good ass B roll and whatnot, I think we're definitely going to uh, to incorporate that style for sure. But you know, just doing the little vlogs in my room or vlogs out in town and stuff like that, just sitting in my car, eh, probably not so much. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's just been a crazy journey these past, uh, I almost said 15, 13 years on, on YouTube. And uh, you know, I haven't had the uh, the massive success that others who've been on the platform this long have had. Uh, I've seen a lot of people come and go on the platform, um, but for me, you know, I just I love making videos. You know, even though my channels may not be as successful as other people's channels, it's not really. Uh, a point of concern for me anymore. It used to be, it used to be kind of an ego thing, I guess. You know, it's like, well, my channel only has this many subs. Meanwhile, you know, so they just started their YouTube channel. They already have either as many subs as I do or like more. And like, what what are they doing that I'm not doing? I'm doing it better than they are. You know, just all the jealousy and stuff, which I guess hampered my own success in a way. You know, which is good because you know I didn't. The attitude didn't really serve me. But now, you know, my main uh, focus is on the freelance video editing, editing for others. You know, that's where I see my success at. Because if it wasn't for me <clears throat> making all those videos for my channels over the years, um, you know, even though the videos themselves didn't really go anywhere, um, relatively speaking. 
you know, but if it wasn't for me making all those videos, I wouldn't have had the editing experience and, you know, knowledge, whether intuitively or learned about editing and just getting stuff done in an efficient manner. Um, I wouldn't have had all that had I not worked on those videos. So, you know, some people may say, oh, the videos, you know, they weren't worth it. But, like, really, they were just kind of practice in a way for me to to get to this point for editing for others. But also, you know, I keep those videos up because they document that time in my life. They, uh, you know, show a moment in time of where I was at that point in my life. And even though the videos themselves may not be of good quality, especially by today's standards, um, they still hold a very special place in my heart, you know, for that moment in time. And it also shows the progression of my editing skills, I guess, you know. You see the different uh, camera upgrades, you see uh, just different uh, presentation, even just the way I'm speaking and everything is different. You know, some of my earlier vlogs were, you know, I was a bit higher pitched and, you know, I just kind of, kind of sound like this a little bit, you know, it's kind of, kind of interesting to, uh, to look back on those early, early videos, really. And I kind of sounded like that a little bit. I can't sound exactly like it was, but it's something like that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and that also, you know, gave me the uh, courage and confidence to do other things. And, you know, with, with the whole freelance video editing thing, um, that started originally to help one of my friends out. You know, you may know him online as Tikio Sam. He's out in LA now, time's recording. But uh, I did that originally to help him out because he was coming back to YouTube. Uh, he left his full-time salaryman job and was looking to give YouTube uh, a real real shot at that point. He was doing daily content and everything. And his hard drive had crashed. So he was in a line group with me talking about it. And I'm like, well, shit, dude. Maybe I could just edit for you while you get your hard drive situation fixed, which would be about like a week or two. So he had like the raw files and intro outro which I just took from one of his older videos and uh, managed to put some stuff together while he was getting his hard drive fixed and after he got that taken care of he's like you know what I really like how quick you're putting these videos out you know editing's not really my strong suit it takes me forever to do this stuff but you managed to make stuff pretty quickly so you know he took me on as his uh, as his main editor and from there he introduced me to you know, more people who would become my clients, and then through friends of friends of friends, I would get more clients, and you know, eventually through word of mouth from my client work and stuff, you know, I would get more little onesie twosies here and there, and uh, yeah, it's really, really become something as of late. You know, it's just, you know, I've really begun to take this this very seriously as a career path in a way but uh, I want to expand on that more you know I want to work with uh, with more clients um, I want to you know expand my network and uh, do bigger better things and I also want to do some behind the camera stuff as well I felt like you know the stuff I did with my folks production company in Ohio was pretty top-notch uh, I wanted to get more into that again, and uh, yeah, that's you know some of the main reasons I want to go back to Japan. You know, in addition to eat and experience, and just a lot of stuff. It's uh, gonna be pretty hard pressed pressed if you know, in Tokyo and bored. <laughs> Did that and you're broke, but even then, there's there's still st a lot of stuff for you to do, even if you don't have a lot of money. Or any at all. I have to make that once again. And my editing tutorials have done very well. Um, even though I haven't uploaded really anything, you know, tutorial-wise on that channel in about half a year, uh, the tutorials still get consistent amount of views, traffic, things like that. So, you know, it's definitely definitely a sign. And I want to expand upon doing the video editing and uh, expand it to other things, you know. I want to create a, uh, 
I guess like an agency or whatever, basically full of full of editors that will uh, put together stuff. You know, basically production company essentially. You know, we'll put together clients' videos. Either <clears throat> we'll uh, we'll film it for them while they're doing their on-camera stuff, or you know, they just send us the raw files and we put it together. However, they want to do it. Um, I definitely want to do something like that. You know long term because as much as I like editing videos I want to expand upon that and uh, be able to help other people out as well you know bring on people bring on other up-and-coming editors and kind of show them the ropes and have them work on big projects as well get their names out there and I think that's gonna be uh, where I go moving forward in the you know short term long term I guess of things so yeah um, I really gotta pee guys and it's been almost 45 minutes that I've been on live stream so um, with that said y'all this is the Andy San signing for now making you guys boop, with an old school Andy San outro uh, I wanna thank you guys for liking commenting with the thumbs and if you're an old schooler the stars, stars, I, I don't know, <laughs> the hand sign for stars, stars, I don't know, and uh, send a few friends to the party, like and comment and subscribing, like I said, and as always, we'll see you next time, catch you later guys, bye. Alright, and we're recording, hey gang, Andy here, and today I have some major updates as it involves my channels, life, all that fun stuff, so I guess technically, even though it's near the end of March, this could be my March 2019 update video for, you guessed it, March 2019. Ooh. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, uh, going on over personal stuff as well as uh, youtube -y stuff, and there's a lot to cover, uh, mostly on the YouTube side, but also from personal life side as well. So that's why I'm doing it raw on uh, Un unedited <laughs> so all the ums and ahs are here for your viewing pleasure in any event yeah just doing some housekeeping today so I don't have time to work on videos and such but I have a major announcement as it involves YouTube stuff so as of yesterday times recording um, my channel channels has been monetized so my editing channel, as you guys know, edited by the Andy San, was demonetized back in September of 2018. Um, and then I reapplied for monetization in October, the following month. And I've pretty much just been sitting waiting for them to re-monetize my channel. I've talked with them several times on Twitter and they always give me the same like, well, we're looking into it. We're still putting your channels up for, channel up for review and uh, stuff like that. And meanwhile, during that time, I also brought this channel back um, as my archive channel because it already had all my old videos and stuff like that. So I didn't have to like re-upload every single video again. Um, they were just there. And all I had to do was re-upload just a couple videos in comparison. So I was like, yeah, we'll just make this my archive channel, have my other channel as like my vloggy type channel, which then morphed into more of like my Andy Before Japandy series type stuff where you know I talk about uh, basically documenting my return to Japan this year, 2019, woo. And uh, just kind of went from there. But I noticed over the past uh, few months that there's been some of my old videos that have been gaining some traction as of late. And I'm really excited about that. And because of that, uh, my channel qualified for monetization according to the new YouTube partnership program and I just I just applied for it just to see because I didn't think that this channel would get monetized because um, it's kind of a long story I'm not going to get into all the nitty-gritty about it but the TLDR version was um, my old email that I started this channel with had some issues with the original AdSense program, like before Google even bought it out and stuff. So this was, this was many, 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 many years ago. This is actually like pre-YouTube many years ago. 
where it had some issues and uh, I wasn't able to monetize this channel when uh, the YouTube partnership program started rolling out for smaller creators. So that was one of the reasons I kind of uh, put this channel on ice for a while was because my other channel, which is now my editing channel, got approved for it. So I just moved everything over and you know, <laughs> long story short, but yeah. Uh, but anyway, man, I just applied for monetization just to see if uh, it would get approved. I didn't think it would. But on the same day that my editing channel got approved, this channel got approved for monetization. So I'm just like over the moon about all this because this is the first time this channel has ever been monetized in its 13 plus year existence. And very excited about that. Also very excited that some of my older videos are getting some traction out there, getting back into the search algorithms and stuff like that once I turn this channel back on. So really glad, really glad to see that. And yeah, man. Um, so what does that mean for the future of this channel? It's a big question. So. I'm doing a lot of thinking since last night because once I got the email saying this channel is approved, I felt like it pretty much changed everything. Like if it was just my editing channel that got approved, I mean that's awesome, but it pretty much just be business as usual. I'd you know make more um, tutorial videos and make some other content and stuff like that, and just kind of carry on business as usual. But because this channel was also approved for it. That changes a lot of things. And one thing I've been thinking about doing is something I've kind of been doing a little bit on the on the DL is moving all my stuff from my the Andy Sana Life and Video channel over to this channel. Once again, back in the OG Andy San channel. And uh, now that it's been monetized for the very first time in its existence. Um, I think it's time to, uh, to consolidate some things. So yeah, um, it's not gonna happen today. This is gonna take a little bit, not a long time, but maybe like a week or two or whatever. Um, maybe a couple days, <laughs> I don't know yet. Whenever I get some time. But yeah, I'm gonna be moving all my content from my The Andy Sauna Life and Video channel over to this channel, which will be rebranded as my The Andy San channel. So no more Andy San archives, uh, stuff like that. Um, now as far as like the uh, the uploads and stuff from, um, well, I guess it would have been the Andy San Life and Video channel, um, those are still gonna keep going on. I'm also going to add my Andy Before Japandi series on that as well. Um, I'm thinking about actually making those on a separate day though because you know I have 10 of them so that's like 10 weeks worth of content if I just release one a week. So I'm thinking uh, you know maybe releasing those on like a Tuesday or something. I think that sounds good. So we got Military Mondays for my military related content that I'm cycling in. Um, those are going to be going on to like October, November, something like that. Pretty much till the end of this year, you know. I'll have to check, but it's around there, I believe. Um, then I got, you know, Wednesdays for my uh, older vlogs that get cycled in. And then I think Tuesdays, I'm also going to cycle in the Andy Before Japandi episodes. And then once those episodes um, are all cycled in, we'll kind of go from there and kind of see where to go from there, basically. But that's going to be the plan for for the time being, for now. So Monday's Military Mondays, Tuesday's gonna be Andy Before Japandi, Wednesday's gonna be um, just another upload from the archives. Um, don't know how many more of those I have. Uh, probably a couple more. And then maybe we'll shift over to Wednesdays, I'm not sure yet. Kinda play it by ear. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, really incredibly excited that this channel has been approved for monetization because this this changes everything man you know like i was saying earlier and this is giving me all the motivation to make more content 
on YouTube because I noticed, you know, I haven't been making as much stuff as of late. You know, I've been saying, you know, I'm working on freelance video editing projects, been working on uh, my part-time job and just trying to get the whole return to Japan thing set up. That's been taking a lot out of me. And, you know, I'm also, you know, trying to focus more on, you know, not doing as much despite all the things that I say I'm doing. Uh, so I've also been like allocating time for me to just decompress, you know, whether it's just sitting back chilling, watching some anime, watch some YouTube videos, whatever, just, you know, dedicate some time for me to just chill out and not do anything, you know, as far as like making videos and stuff like that goes. There we go. Focus, dude. <laughs> um, so I noticed that, you know, once I dedicate time towards um, just me chilling out, and not actively making stuff, I noticed that you know I don't get burned out as easily. So that's one of the main main things that I'm going to be fighting against is burnout because I know that you know if I try to make too much stuff, and try to do too many things, I'll eventually get burned out. So it's all about like properly scheduling them. So you know you have to have a good like work life balance as far as that goes. So. One of the things that I'm dealing with as a freelancer is the whole you should be working syndrome. You know, whenever I get a, a spare bit of time, I'm always, you know, worried that even like now recording this update video, you know, I always feel like, well, I should be working. You know, there's a couple of videos I got to get working on, whether it's my own stuff or stuff for my clients. You know, I feel like, yeah, I should be doing something, you know. <laughs> So I have to like constantly fight that urge to always be working, you know? And it's fine to, to have that drive and stuff. And if ideas come to you, you know, you gotta be on the fucking ready. You know, that's why I got stuff like Evernote, which is a great app on my phone. So if I get any ideas, write them down in Evernote, or, you know, I have so many friggin' WordPad documents on my computer of different ideas, whether it's tutorial ideas, um, Andy Before Japan ideas, or just like some other stuff that's not any of those things. You know, always be writing down ideas and stuff like that, whether it's just like a sentence or like a whole outline of stuff, you know, always be ready when inspiration strikes. And thanks to smartphones, <laughs> it's a lot easier to, to document all that stuff. So yeah, that's basically what's going on as far as YouTube stuff goes. We're like, what, 11 minutes in? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Told you I had a lot of stuff to do and talk about. And this is raw, baby. So just got the deal. So um, yeah, just recap with the YouTube stuff. Both this channel and my editing channel have been approved for monetization. So you're going to see a lot more content come out from those. Oh, one more little short bit of YouTube stuff to go over before I move on to personal life stuff. Um, so I'm also trying out a new format that I'm seeing a lot on YouTube. You know, the whole, you know, text to speech Reddit posts. I see those get a lot of traction on YouTube. And it's just kind of something I'm trying out. Um, with a couple things. So, uh, so far I have material for about three, I'm looking at my computer now, like three videos. And then I got a fourth one lined up. I just got to get all the, all the bits and pieces for it. So yeah, the cool thing about those videos is they're pretty easy to put together. A lot of people like them, so they get a ton of views. And it's just a, a different format that I'm trying out. And that's gonna be on a separate channel called Andy Asks. And uh, links for that channel are just gonna be in the channels page of this channel, <laughs> Channelception. So if you wanna check that out, so far, Times Recording has two videos up. Uh, once you know I get turned and burned with that, we're gonna have a lot more. And then you know, get more into the rhythm and flow of a schedule as as things go. So anyway, that's all the YouTube stuff for sure this time. Because I'm wearing a YouTube shirt. So anyway, random. So personal life stuff. Um I know I haven't really been doing a whole lot of video stuff as far as like vlogs and talking about personal life since my uh Andy Before Japan D episode 10 came out where I said that I was rejected from uh, the college that I applied to out in Japan. 
Um, I talked about how the interview didn't really go so well and haven't really heard back from them. And, you know, some people in the Discord, which, by the way, I do have a Discord now, and I'll put a, uh, a link to join in the description of this video. Might pin something in the comments. Remind me if I don't, but uh, I'll put a little join link down below, and you guys can join my Discord. So, so far, it's uh, very nice. Um, have a lot of good conversation with the people in there. It's just a really good, like, incubating type area. You know, I feel really good about you know, the community that, you know, I've put together for Discord. And it's so far just been, you know, people I know. So to make it public and stuff, I think it's going to be nice, I hope. <laughs> but I got some mods, so we can hopefully remove any bad characters that sneak in. So watching you. But anyway, event, guys, um, as far as, like, personal life stuff goes, kind of went on a tangent there. I do that. <laughs> But as far as like personal life stuff goes, um, yeah, haven't really heard back from them since that interview. Um, I sent out an email uh, to the uh, the person I was in contact with, who helped me set up everything basically, and it was just basically saying, you know, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, since it has been like over two weeks since I heard last heard from you guys from that interview. Um, just kind of assuming didn't get uh, get into the program here so I'm just going to uh, take some classes here at the local community college get my GPA up to help save up uh, to move out to Japan and hopefully reapply again so you know they haven't replied to that yet either so um, but if anything it was just for my own peace of mind and less you know for them really so it's just my own little point of closure, as it were, with that particular school. So the plan moving forward, as far as Japan goes, the Japan, <laughs> is to, you know, start up school here at the local community college. I've already applied, got accepted, all that stuff, so woo. Um, so the plan is to take some classes over the summer. Um, boost up my savings thanks to the BAH and uh, you know keep doing my thing freelance video editing um, and then do you know videos of my own as well um, we'll have to get like some kind of schedule or something so I can balance everything out so you know maybe one channel will kind of you know be a little less content or maybe you know for stuff like you know the tutorials I can batch record those and then just like release them over a period of time like I did with this recent batch so yeah um, we could do something like that and then maybe you know do some vlogging here and there you know just we'll figure it out play by ear <laughs> you know me and schedules right you know I don't don't always see eye to eye but uh, we'll get there when we get there so yeah plan is you know boost the GPA community college classes, um, save up the BAH, and then uh, reapply to a different school, uh, the school I really should have applied to in the first place. And uh, I'm not going to say the name because A, I don't want to jinx it, and B, you never know who's watching. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to apply to a different school, not the one that I applied to before because, I don't know, after that whole interview thing, I just, I didn't really like the way that they handled it. They could have handled it a lot better. And, you know, if my grades were that much of an issue, they should have just told me right off the bat, you know, hey, you know, your grades aren't really all that good, so, you know, we're gonna cancel the interview or just like tell me, you know, thanks for applying, but uh, get good, kid. <laughs> so, but, you know, they brought me in for an interview and it felt more like an interrogation, of, like why my grades were so shit. But uh, I've already talked about that. In the other video so I'm gonna apply to a different school and uh, since I'm going to classes and stuff you know I don't think my grades from this semester by the time I apply to that school will count towards my application to that school but you know if they say anything at least this time I can say well I'm taking some classes um, like so far into it I just started but you know so far I have these grades which aren't official because like 
you know, I'll be like a third of the way into the class by that point, I think. Maybe a little more because it's summer and it's, it's accelerated. Uh, we'll just have to play it by ear. But, uh, you know, at least I can tell them, you know, going back to school, get my GPA up and stuff. So if they say anything, you know, I have that to work with. And if they still deny me for this coming fall semester, you know, I'll just continue to go to school here, you know, continue to get better grades, get my BH, save it away, and uh, apply for the spring semester, 2020, Tokyo Olympics. Ooh, fun. And uh, yeah, so I was actually, uh, one of my friends was talking with his old um, professor from the college that I want to go to. And he said that they're going to be making a uh, uh, like a, a new part of campus, basically. Hope I'm not giving away too much. Um, that's going to be, you know, starting up in the fall of this year. So, whereas before the campus was a little small, so they could only accept so many people. But now that they have a much bigger campus, you know, they'll be able to accommodate more students, and it'll just be nicer. So, you know, even if I don't get in this fall. We'll apply for the spring and hopefully by then I'll be able to get in because I'll have like two semesters of school under my belt at that point so hopefully I'll be able to get in and uh, you know do good things stuff like that yeah um, and then you know if I have to wait two semesters I'll have like a shit ton of money saved up hopefully you know pending something happening um, and then uh, be able to move out there with uh, no problem, you know, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, yeah, that's that's where I stand so far as, you know, as far as my return to Japan goes. Um, last little bit I think we'll talk about here is my car. Um, that's one of the things that's been giving me problems for the past month or so. Um, and we've been fixing it up getting it ready and stuff like that and uh, thinking about just selling it you know we already have some people who are interested in buying it and uh, already have a car lined up to buy once I sell off this car so it'll be a lot nicer on gas <laughs> excuse me a lot nicer on gas and uh, you know just a nice point A to point B car um, one that works because <laughs> You know, the person I'm buying it off of, you know, my brother vouched for him, says he knows his stuff, and has fixed it up, so there's like no mechanical issues or anything like that. Um, it is an older car, but it's a nice car. And it's pretty nice in gas mileage too. So I can't wait to uh, get the ball rolling with that. Um, we're actually gonna be meeting some people who are looking to buy my car today. So that's, you know, another reason why I don't have time to like, you know, record this video in, edit and stuff because we're going to be going here in a little bit so but in any event i think i've rambled and raved long enough if anything for the youtube watch time because you know i get the months hun every dollar is uh you know put me that that one little dollar closer to japan so if anything there's that so with that said guys this is the andy san so for now, thinking you guys, Pook, for tuning in to this video, watching my videos over the years, and on different channels, and stuff like that. And man, we are just going to kill it moving forward. You know, a lot of good things are on the way, and uh, just gotta keep uh, doing our thing. And you know, we'll be back in Japan before you know it, making some good ass content. And, uh, yeah, new season of Andy Japandi. I can't wait. Like, so excited. So, anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, Andy here. And today, I just want to talk about some things, get some things off my chest. So, it's just kind of kind of be a stream of consciousness, raw vlog um talking about some stuff i've been thinking about over this weekend uh so let's get into it and uh 
yeah, one of the things I've been thinking about is just um, my progression, you know, in life and towards my goals. And it just feels like, you know, I've just been feeling this, this like sense of just like I'm constantly stuck in limbo, you know, and it just feels like, you know, everybody else is passing me by and I'm getting left behind, you know, because a lot of my friends who are still in Japan are moving on up um, either to better jobs, you know, better places within Japan, the ones that do YouTube, you know, I'm seeing their sub counts grow and getting more views and this, that, and the other, and that's great. I'm super happy for them. And even my good old buddy Tikio Sam, he's out in LA right now doing his thing, you know, rubbing shoulders with, uh, with the big boys and uh, stuff like that. And, you know, it's just, it's just got me thinking, like, what am I doing, you know? Um, I mean, granted, I did get monetization approved for this channel for the first time in its, in its like, 13 plus year existence. And I got remonetized on my editing channel. So it's not like I'm not doing anything. But, you know, I just think that this constant comparing myself to others, you know, is really... Um, sabotaging me and you know it could be you know obviously the, the obvious answer is oh, well stop comparing yourself Andy you know you're you know you're the only one you have to beat and stuff like that but you know it's another thing that's just been kind of bugging me is just this feeling of just constantly being in a waiting period you know just constantly being on standby you know because I'm like waiting for classes to start, waiting for my GPA to get to where it needs to get to, for me to apply to the school in Japan, and then wait on the application process for that, and then if I get accepted to, you know, buy the tickets and all that stuff, and then wait to fly out to Japan, and then wait to make the videos that I want to make, and it's just wait, wait, wait. And uh, I know, patience, it's a virtue. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's just one of the things where, you know, I feel like, you know, I, there should be, you know, I think the one thing that's like really bothering me is that I'm not seeing little milestones or like, you know, little signs of land, I guess, as I'm making progress towards my goals, you know, and, uh. I think that's the thing that like really bothers me late at night when I'm trying to relax before I go to bed. It's just this feeling of dread and anxiety of like, you know, you're not as good as you think you are. You're not making any progress. You're 33 years old. You have like not a lot of money, living with family, and you're not really doing anything with your life. And uh, it just, you know, makes you feel like a piece of shit, basically. But, you know, those are the things you have to deal with when you're working towards your goals. And, you know, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to pursue those goals. And I have to, like, constantly, it's, it's a constant battle to push out the negativity and the depression and the anxiety and push out those negative voices and replace them with more positive thoughts of, you know what, yeah, what you say is true, but I am making progress towards my goals because of X, Y, Z, or Z for my British friends. <laughs> um, you know, and to like have those little bullet points of, okay, I'm making progress because I did this and then this happened. Or I you know this and then this happened. And, you know, feeling like I'm stuck in limbo, I don't really have those bullet points to look at, look at and say, you know, this is proof of me being able to do things and me making progress towards my goals. So I think, you know, while I'm waiting to get out to Japan, which I think the wait is going to be a bit longer than I really want, 
because, you know, the way the schools, sorry about these focusing issues, but the way that uh, school and stuff set up, you know, as far as community college I'm going to be going to and then the college I'm going to be applying to in Japan, I won't really see any, like, official grades or anything until um, after the summer semester, which is, like, August-ish. And by that point, the application deadline for uh, the sum the uh, not summer semester, but the fall semester for the school I want to apply to would have already passed. So um, <clears throat> the only other time I could apply would be in the spring semester of 2020. So you know, it's just again more waiting. But you know, I also again. You just got to put in the work. You got to do your thing. And uh, this is me putting in the work, doing my thing. So I know that um, some people may not like these particular videos right now as I'm making them because, you know, people want to read and watch a story with a happy ending or to, you know, see somebody's hard work pay off you know, or at least know and kind of follow somebody through the struggle knowing that their hard work will pay off and that, yeah, you know, the protagonist is going through some shit right now, but um, they're going to make it out. They're going to see their goals through and they're going to move on to uh, do good things. And, you know, I realize right now these types of videos may not be all that interesting to everybody but I know once I get out to Japan these will be the type, types of videos that I point to and say see you know everybody thought this was like a fluke thing you know oh he just got X amount of subscribers overnight he's just a just a one hit wonder flavor of the week whatever but you know I've been grinding for years and you know for some people it only takes a couple years to make it. Others, it takes many years. And you don't really know until it happens, you know? And uh, it's just one of them things that you just gotta keep doing. So I think while I'm waiting on getting back out to Japan and waiting to make the videos that I wanna make while I'm out in Japan, I can do something a bit productive during my time here in the States. And so, you know, I'm thinking about making some like relearning Japanese type videos. I don't know if you guys would be interested in something like that. Cause I definitely want to brush up on, <clears throat> on the Japanese that I've already learned and then continue on from where I left off. And you know, I found that, like, language is very much, uh, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it sort of thing. So, I haven't had a whole lot of opportunities to speak Japanese while in America. And, uh, thus I've kind of lost my, you know, Japanese language ability. So, you know, and, uh... I just definitely want to get that back up. Obviously, if I'm going to be living in the country. You got to know the language, right? Even though by the time I get out there, it'll be 2020 and the Olympics will be in full swing. So hopefully they'll have more English friendly stuff, but I don't want to rely on that. I'd rather get, get around on the country on my own merit and skills rather than, you know, just, oh, he, he is a medica gin. Uh, no sorry English to be or whatever. You know, so, um, I told you guys this would be a stream of consciousness. But yeah, that's just something I'm thinking about. Just, you know, not only to improve my own language skills, but to also give myself a sense of progress towards goals because I can see, you know, point to and be like, see, I learned this many kanji and I can, you know, say these words and stuff like that. You know, it just gives me something to work on while things are you know, while I'm waiting, basically. So, anyway, guys, uh, I think my break is about over. Um, doing some work here. So, uh, 
yeah, breaks about over. So I think we'll end things here. Uh, just let me know in the comments down below in the boopy de boops uh, what types of videos you'd be interested in seeing from the old way and you see in San Madeshta. Always open to new ideas and, uh, you know, whether it's for new videos or maybe, um, like, ways I can show marketed progress towards my goals so I'm not all, like, worried about, you know, feeling left behind and, like, I'm not doing enough or I'm not doing the right thing or, you know, stuff like that. Just to kind of kind of shut this guy up for a little bit so I can get some sleep. But anyway, man, <coughs> excuse me. That said... This is the Andy Son. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Andy here. And today, just wanted to give you all a little up date on what's going on with the old Andy Sand Sam And uh, doing it raw because uh, I got work here in a little bit. And I got to get myself some lunch as well before I head out. I mean, <laughs> I say head out, but I'm actually like here at work, um, but don't start for a little bit, so. Got a little speck of time, figure, um, make a little, vlo little vliggity vlog for y'all. Uh, but uh, gotta do it raw, because uh, I don't have time to edit right now. So, let's get on with the, uh, the main thing I wanna talk to you guys about. Um, over this past weekend, I managed to uh, sell my car, so. Um, as you guys know, since moving out to North Carolina, uh, I've had some problems with uh, my car. Uh, had it for about three years. Um, served me well, you know, getting me back and forth to school, uh, moving, you know, not only up to Michigan to another apartment in Michigan, and then moving back to Ohio, and then moving out here, North Carolina. So, I mean, it's definitely done its job, I think, and, uh, you know, we fixed it up as best we could, but, uh, yeah, the wear and tear on it was just, uh, just a little too much for me, and I wanted something a bit lighter, because I'm gonna be going back to school here, and, uh, I didn't really want to pay all that much in gas, and plus, like, here in North Carolina, you don't have to worry about snow as much as you would, like, being next to a lake in Michigan, so... <laughs> Uh, there was really no need for a big ass vehicle uh, like there was back there. Um, so decided to get something a little lighter. So sold my car, and then I bought another car. So it's uh, probably the lightest car that I've ever had, and uh, really excellent on gas mileage. Um, it's an older car, and uh, you know it looks pretty good. Um, engine stuff's been rebuilt, a lot of other stuff that, I mean, I'm not a car guy, so like, I don't know all the little details and stuff, but all I know is that the engine itself has been rebuilt, and uh, a bunch of other little things as well, so, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to uh, starting up school with, uh, with my new car, <laughs> and getting going with that, but, you know, I just got that over the weekend, so I got to do all the fun adult stuff like uh, get insurance, uh, officially switch over the title. Title's been signed and stuff, but I got to get like a new title or whatever in my name. And uh, one of the taillights is out, so I got to fix that. So, you know, fun adult stuff. So, get that all taken care of and be good to go. So, uh, speaking of school, I'll be starting up at the end of May this year going to summer school. So as that involves my return to Japan, because I'll be starting summer school at the end of May and the school that I want to apply to in Japan, their deadline for this fall semester is in June. I won't have any real grades on paper at that point. So the thing is I'll have to wait for the following semester, which will be spring of 2020 to even have a chance of uh, being able to apply. So that's basically what I'm gonna be doing is uh, working my ass off for the summer semester and also fall semester as well, you know, in order to get my GPA up to a good amount and also 
you know, save up as well. So thanks to GI Bill and, you know, keeping costs down, you know, which uh, buying that that new car was part of that, you know, the save on gas mileage and because it's an older vehicle, insurance will be cheaper too. So yeah, um, <clears throat> just keeping the overhead as low as possible and then, uh, you know, bringing in stuff with the GI Bill and, uh, you know, I'm also getting some work, some different work as a freelance video editor as well. So looking forward to that. Um, yeah, man, things are things are definitely looking up. And uh, speaking of freelance stuff, um, I released a uh, video reel uh, the other day, and it was just kind of a, a quick little thing I put together. Uh, it's basically showing off some fun little clips. Uh, videos that I put together uh, for my good old buddy Eric Surf Six, and uh, you know I think you guys definitely liked it. Um, a lot of thumbs up and stuff, uh, a lot of views too. Uh, but you know one of my friends wasn't uh, wasn't too fond of it. <laughs> we'll put it that way. And uh, you know I kind of see his points. You know we were talking about it, and you know kind of kind of is what it is you know you only as an editor you only have like so much can like you only have so much control over uh what you're given like you're basically given what you're given and you know you just have to make the best of it you know just put it that way you know i don't want to disparage anybody because you know i'm very thankful to everybody for you know giving me this opportunity to be a freelance video editor and to uh to make these videos for other people and uh you know like i said very grateful for that but you know it, it does give me the itch to like get out there and like make my own videos and stuff like that so you know if anything it's showing me you know what i want to do for my own videos and uh it's like you know i wish i had you know more control over what was shown and you know was like in charge of the camera work and stuff like that and it's kind of hard to like you know backseat direct you know when you're thousands of miles away so you know another reason why I want to go out to Japan you know not only to make the videos I want to make but to also more closely work with uh, my video editing clients so definitely looking forward to that and yeah man so you know, as it relates to stuff I want to get before I get out to Japan, um, I did say that I was going to wait till I get to Japan to get a camera and stuff. But I think realistically, you know, there's a couple cameras that are, uh, you know, that I'm, I've been looking at. And, uh, you know, definitely thinking about getting one before I head out here. Uh, but I think the most important thing I'll be getting is a laptop, of course. Uh, once I get the laptop, then I'll uh, transfer off all the stuff, you know, from my desktop to external hard drive, wherever, and uh, try to sell it. So, yeah, just like with the car, I'm not expecting a whole lot out of it, money-wise, because it is pretty old. Um, but, you know, it's served me well. I have absolutely no problems with it. And uh, I just need something portable. And that's like the only reason I'm selling, you know, I'm gonna be selling my desktop. It's not selling it yet, but uh, I have to get the laptop first. So uh, I got my eye on a laptop um, on Amazon. Uh, it's gonna be a PC, it's not gonna be a MacBook. Sorry. <laughs> um, but MacBook is definitely something I want to try out later. Um, definitely want to learn more about like Final Cut and stuff like that because I feel like you know there's some of my clients who are like you know I wish you learned how to use Final Cut man you know I got all this other stuff that could help you out and all this different work and stuff but uh, yeah <laughs> I don't have a, a Mac machine so uh, can't use Final Cut uh, but it's definitely something I want to do eventually but uh, not yet not yet um, Definitely got to get out to Japan first and then maybe pick up like a secondhand model or something like that. They got a whole bunch of stuff like that out in recycle shops. Um, a lot of them do retain their value. So it ain't going to come cheap, but it'll come cheaper than what you would buy new, basically. So that's something I'll be doing a bit 
you know, longer term, a couple years, I guess, depending on financial situation and stuff. So, there's that. Um, and as far as the whole monetization situation, you know, as I've already talked about, uh, for those who don't know, not only has my editing channel been re-monetized, but also this channel, for the first time in its history, has been monetized as well. And uh, things are definitely going good with that. I'm really, you know, pleased with the, uh, the monetization situation, I guess. Um, I don't really know what else to, to say about it. I'm just, I'm just glad that, you know, we have that metric back. And, you know, it's just, you know, I get it. It's not a lot of money right now, but it's money that's going to be put away towards saving up for Japan. So, you know, even if it's a couple hundred here or there, you know, it's a couple hundred that I didn't have before. So that's money I can use for, like, plane tickets or living expenses until the GI Bill kicks in, whatever the case. So... That's just the way I see it. Now, as far as, you know, more any before japan -y type stuff, um, you know, I am cycling those into the schedule here. So those will be coming out on Tuesdays until I get the whole series out. And then we're going to be starting up some new episodes, um, just thinking up of different ideas and just trying to get a handle on the scandal that is my schedule, as it were, because I have a lot of stuff I gotta take care of this month, like taxes, which as a freelancer is not fun. It's probably probably the only like real disadvantage of being a freelancer is taxes. You know, you end up paying for it. Literally and figuratively, of course. So that's gonna be fun to uh, to get that taken care of. So but in any event, um, gotta get going, gotta fix up some lunch, get to work, work. <laughs> so I think that's gonna do it for this, uh, this little up date video. So with that said guys, this is the Andy Sign, signing for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you. Book with an old school Andy Son intro. Shit. Come on, folks, dude. Shit, sorry about that. That's what I get for doing these raw vlogs, right? So, in any event, welcome to the raw vlog. I uh, figured I'd just come on here, give you all a little uppy date on what I'm up to, what I've been up to as well. So, yeah. Um, so, basically, just doing this little raw vlog in my room because I'm working on a big vlogging project for Eric Surf 6. Um, last night, I just got done finishing uh, three vlogs for him, uh, some very important ones, too, because he has a very special guest on those vlogs, a very high-level YouTuber. I don't want to give away the name, but uh, if you've seen Eric's guest appearances on other people's channels, you already know who I'm talking about, But so I don't ruin the surprise. I'm not going to say anything until Eric's videos come out, but basically... Uh, this dude came out to Japan and, uh, you know, Eric showed him around and stuff like that. So a lot of fun was had by all, um, love putting together those vlogs, um, really put a lot of effort into those vlogs, you know, as far as getting the scenes and stuff like that, just right. So I feel pretty good about them and I can't wait for you guys to see them as well. So yeah, real excited about that. And, uh, this vlog that I'm doing for Eric right now. Um, it's a pretty long one. Um, I got to do a lot of trimming with it. So this is probably going to be another all day project. Um, I guess like the, the total raw footage is like almost an hour and a half's worth. So it's a lot of stuff I got to comb through and try to make it a sensible, sensibly sized vlog. Some are, you know, in the ballpark of like 10 to 15 minutes. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing today, Easter Day. Happy Easter for uh, those who celebrate. Um, it's just another work day for me. Um, yeah, just sipping coffee, doing what I love to do with uh, freelance video editing. And uh, that's the thing, man. You know, with all the stuff that I'm doing 
got a lot of opportunities, um, potential opportunities coming up in the hopefully near future. Uh, I can't really talk about them right now because, like I said, it's just possibilities, potential opportunities. Nothing's really set in stone yet. Nothing's really set in motion yet. But uh, there's a lot of really interesting opportunities out there that uh, started to come my way. And I'm feeling really good about it. And I feel that I've really made the right call in pursuing the freelance video editing thing a bit more aggressively. Um, whereas before it was just kind of a side gig, you know, just a secondary source of income. And then I go and do my real job. You know, if you call working at McDonald's a real job, I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I digress. And <clears throat> yeah, man, sorry, got the coughs. But uh, yeah, I uh, really love doing video editing. And I uh, want to make that my main source of income. You know, it's one thing to make videos of, you know, that I do, you know, these raw vlogs and other stuff. But it's another thing to put together something for somebody else and to see uh, their audience really take to it. You know, that gives me, you know, such a high, I guess. Um, and it feels good, man. It feels good. So... You know, I feel like I've really made the right decision in pursuing it a bit more aggressively, like I said. But since we're in the month of April, I do got to say, for those who are thinking about doing freelance work, whether it's video editing or something else, uh, the one major disadvantage with doing freelance work is taxes. So there are ways around it, but I'm not really I'm not a CPA, so I'm not qualified to really give you tax advice, but the information's out there, you know, contact Google, Google Sensei or Bing or whatever you use. Um, is Yahoo still a thing? I don't know. But anyway, the information's out there, you know, check it out. Um, and yeah, but in my case, um, I definitely got read pretty hard by the IRS, but don't worry. You know, they're all taken care of, pay the tax man his money. So we're good there. But yeah, that is one thing you definitely have to uh, take into account of if you're doing any kind of freelance work, any kind of self-employment type stuff. Highly suggest that you look up, you know, tax information or at least at the very least set aside like 25, 30 percent of your earnings into a little savings account. So come tax time, you know, you can just, you know, use whatever you owe from that instead of like scrambling to be like, oh shit, <laughs> you know, where's the money? Where's the money, Lebowski? But <clears throat> I digress. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much what I'm up to. Just busy working on videos and uh, my seasonal job is over. So that's pretty much been... 100% of what I've been doing lately is uh, working on videos for Eric as well as uh, other clients too. So yeah, feeling pretty good, feeling very productive, if anything. And uh, you know, we're gonna get some things in motion. And I start school at the end of May. So next month, I'm just recording. And uh, you know, we'll be getting the GPA back up. We'll be continuing to save up. Uh, for my trip out to Japan, or my study abroad, whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just putting some money away in the bank for plane ticket money, living expenses, all that fun stuff, because Tokyo is not a cheap place. You can live cheaply, but uh, the upfront costs pretty high. So you just gotta gotta learn to budget and just think practically, basically, you know? <laughs> So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing from now until pretty much the end of the year because the way things shake out grade-wise, um, I won't be able to submit my new GPA until I apply for the spring semester for 2020 because the deadline for the fall semester this year is like right when I start you know, summer classes pretty much. So my grades won't be official. So it's like, why would I even bother applying? You know, just be another waste of time. So I figure get some grades in the books, um, send an application, 
continue to go to school to build up credits and save up, build GPA, all that stuff. And then uh, come like the end of December-ish, early January is when I'm shooting for uh, getting my ass back out to Japan. So that's pretty much why I haven't made any Andy Before Japan videos because right now, just kind of in a holding period, not really much to talk about as far as that goes because I'm just waiting for school to start up and to uh, get going with that, basically. So, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. We're like eight minutes in. So I think we'll just call it a vlog and I'll get back to editing Eric's vlogs. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning this video. Happy Easter if you celebrate it. And with that said, this is the Andy-san. Sign for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And I got myself a new haircut. Check it out. Nice and smooth. So, yeah, um, welcome to my May 2019 update video, or you guessed it, May 2019. Woo. So, yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm going to go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So, let's just jump right into it. And obviously, the first thing I want to talk about is the haircut. So, yeah, decided to uh, put the winter coat away for the uh, the season since it's getting a little warmer here. And, you know, I got the the, the dry, curly hair. And I, I tried, like, putting oil and all kinds of stuff on it so it wouldn't be so dry. And it just wouldn't really work long term. I tried to, like, keep it as nice as I could, but it would still be all, like, billowy and stuff and you know kind of was what it was but mostly just because of the of the warmer weather i decided to uh put it away for the season and uh maybe come fall time it'll come back but uh, until then i like keeping it short so there you go unlike my youtube videos just saying so uh in addition to the haircut um also had an incident with the toilet the other day um actually ended up flooding the hallway and uh part of my bedroom because uh you know i was clogged and i woke up and i'm just like eh. <laughs> and uh you know i know i'm getting older when uh the first thought that runs through my mind when i see that my carpet is all flooded and that the hallway is all covered in water is I'm not dealing with this shit until I've had a cup of coffee. So, like, I unclogged the toilet so it wouldn't drip more water. Went and got myself some coffee. And uh, once that was all done, you know, proceeded to uh, clean things up. But it's just, like, one of those, like, damn, I'm really in my 30s now kind of moments. So, yeah, basically got the whole hallway and stuff cleaned up. That was pretty easy. Uh, the hard part was getting the carpet taken care of. Now, it got a pretty good chunk of the room, but thankfully uh, none of the electronics were compromised, surprisingly. I thought for sure you would run into it, but nah, wasn't the case. So uh, basically uh, what I did was I got a shop vac, uh, got as much of the water up as I could, uh, ended up sprinkling it with baking soda to draw out the moisture and to prevent mold which is the main thing I'm worried about. And I've had the fans running on it pretty much nonstop. I got them off now while I'm recording the video, but as soon as I'm done, I'll turn back on. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of slightly damp now. So I figure just leave them on overnight and uh, it'll be fine. Just, you know, vacuum up the rest of the baking soda and uh, we'll be good to go. So yeah, <laughs> crisis averted. Uh, but speaking of crises, um, the power went out uh, a couple hours ago. So I was in the middle of working on some vids, Eric Surf 6, and the power went out. So I'm like, well, so I just kind of sat down figuring it would come on in like 30 minutes to an hour. And, you know, it wasn't until like three hours later when the power came back on. So I was just like sitting there. Um, read a book. Uh, the one book I'm reading is The One Thing, and it's something I definitely recommend you guys check out. Uh, it's a great book, great for productivity and learning how to uh, focus on the one thing. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a good read. And I'm definitely putting a lot of those things in practice, which 
we're going to talk about it here in a sec. So, yeah, um, felt pretty good, even though I didn't get any videos or anything I wanted to get done done today. Uh, but it was beyond my control because of the power outage, so just kind of was what it was, which is uh, something really interesting because, like, the old Andy wouldn't have really dealt with it that way. You know, he'd be, like, sitting in the corner, like, panicking, like, oh, my God, you know. But, uh, you know, Andy 2.0 or whatever version I'm on at this point should have been around for a while. But, uh, yeah, just my way of thinking has improved a lot. And uh, not just because of that book, but just because of just things that I'm doing differently to uh, improve my life. Ugh, sit down here. And, uh, you know, I've learned a lot being a freelance video editor. And, you know, it's, it's a very different from a normal, like, 9-to-5 job. And there's a lot to like about it. There's also a couple things that, quite frankly, I don't really like about it. But for me... The pros far outweigh the cons, so I'm able to take those in stride. But it is a major, like, mind shift from how you would normally do stuff on a job, you know, because especially when you first start out doing freelancing, like, you have to avoid, like, taking in too much work, you know, because, like, when you're first starting out, the whole idea is to, like, get as much work as possible so that way you can make as much money as possible and either start cutting back your hours at your real job or just end up going full time with freelancing. And that was kind of the case for me when I first started out doing it. Um, You know, do it in hopes of cutting back hours, working at McDonald's at the time and then do that and then do school and, you know, balance that out. But, uh, we all know how that, how that went. So um, I've just been focusing more on, you know, having a better work-life balance, you know, work balance, work-life relationship, basically. So, you know, and also a lot of the things that I've been reading in The One Thing, oddly enough, this ain't a book review, I swear to God. Um, but a lot of the things I've been reading in that book, though, are things that I've already either kind of done or have done or are doing. And it's like just kind of reaffirming, you know, the stuff that I'm doing. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> but, um, you know, time, uh, I think you call it time boxing or time blocking, basically where you like dedicate certain blocks of the day to uh, doing something. And, you know, when I was first starting out doing freelance video editing, I would usually do my edits at night because during the day I would go to school or go to work that first, sometimes both. And then I would come home and then do the video editing and then go to bed, you know, maybe watch like an hour or so of anime and then that'd be it. (laughs) That'd be my whole day. Uh, But, you know, I've learned a lot doing the work that I have and, you know, I'm starting to, uh, just respect downtime a lot more because I think, you know, with the current, you know, hustle culture, you know, the always being on sort of thing where it prioritizes, you know, always hustling and always doing stuff, you know, you also have to take into account rest periods too. And some people, you know, they're the types that, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead sort of thing. Whereas others, like, they can't even function without nine hours of sleep. And I'm not that bad. But, uh, you know, adhering to a more robust sleep schedule, I guess, is uh, something that I've been taking very seriously. That's really helped improve my mental health significantly, is having longer sleep periods. Because, you know, with me being in the Navy... I learned how to function on little to no sleep. Um, I wasn't really good cognitively, if that's the word. You know, I couldn't do, like, thinky stuff very well in, like, an hour or two of sleep. But uh, as far as just kind of going through the motions, doing kind of robotic, manual, not thinky type stuff, you know, I can do that just fine. Um which, oddly enough, you know, most of the time in the Navy, that's what they 
want you to do anyway. So, just saying. <laughs> but, um, you know, it kind of got to a point where it was just like, just because I can function on one to two hours of sleep doesn't mean I should function on one to two hours of sleep. And certainly not all the time. Like, maybe if it's crunch time, studying for finals or something like that, sure. But, you know, shouldn't be doing that, like, all the time because otherwise you'll just burn yourself out and you know that's basically what happened to me earlier this year uh late in the 2018 was i tried taking on uh these projects it was just way too much footage way too it was just too much for me to handle and so it would get to a point where i like i'd put it off for easier projects and, you know, when I get some time, I'll kind of come back to it, see what I can do with it. But it was just, it was just too much footage. And so I tried hiring freelance video, you know, other freelancers to help me work on it. If anything, like sort through the footage and then I can just kind of put it together from there. But they ended up charging like way too much. So it's just like, eh, I'm not going to do that. And uh, I tried tackling it again. But it just it just wasn't working. So I eventually called up a client and was like, hey, man, um, I'm sorry I had to make you wait like so many months to get this project out. But it's just not happening. You know, it's just it's too much. So and nothing against the client, you know, like I, I took it on wholeheartedly thinking I was going to get it out in time. No problem. But, uh, you know, it was my fault for accepting the project and not realizing how much work was going to go into it. And uh, again, one of the perils of being a freelancer is taking on too much work, you know, and, you know, it's fine to get a whole bunch of clients and get a bunch of work lined up when you first start out. But, you know, learning how to balance or counterbalance whatever uh, work in life is the key to long-term success so you don't get burnt out. And that's something I'm doing a little bit better every day. You know, like with the whole uh, power average thing, you know, I was working on Eric's videos, kind of was what it was. And even if I had a laptop, it only lasts for maybe a couple hours. I couldn't render anything without it just dying like five minutes in because it takes so much power. But, um, you know just kind of was what it was so just kicking back chilling and when the power did come back on it was already kind of late so i knew i didn't have the creative energy to really work on it so like now what i do for editing videos is i usually do editing like first thing in the morning you know i get up i do my thing in the bathroom um go get myself some coffee get a uh, cliff bar and sit down and just kind of like wait for the caffeine to take over. And then once, you know, the caffeine's kind of where it should be, uh, then I start working on the videos and uh, do that pretty much through lunch. Um, and then by the time supper time rolls around, maybe a little earlier, depending on how quick I get the video done or whatever else I have to do, you know, it's usually, you know, done by then. And, uh, you know, go make supper and just kind of chill out the rest of the night. And, uh, I think that sort of schedule works best for me because it allows me to, you know, properly chill out, you know, especially after, you know, doing video editing and stuff. Cause like, you know, it may look, it's one of those things, man, where it's like, it looks easy, but you know, doing something that's very mentally taxing and creatively, uh, creatively taxing, you know, it does take a lot out of you. So you have to properly allocate, you know, not just time that you're doing it, but also time that you're not doing it. And I think for me, properly dedicating rest time has really helped me. You know, like I take rest periods a lot more seriously. It's not just like, you know, I'm sitting down, just kind of like 
half watching a show and thinking about something else, you know, it's like, <laughs> you got to take it a bit more seriously. Otherwise, you know, your mind's going to be on other things and then the anxiety is going to set in and you're going to screw up your sleep schedule and then you're not going to be real well rested. And, you know, just a lot of, a lot of these little habits and stuff kind of rely on each other. So if one of them gets screwed up and the others start to get screwed up too. And pretty soon you're just staring at a blank computer screen, wondering what the hell to do. So that's my little long ass ranty rant, I guess about uh, freelance video editing. I'm going to make a dedicated video on this <laughs> as Robert Blake would say, uh, I've been watching a lot of him too. Um, and I noticed lately he's been saying the phrase, I'm going to make a dedicated video on this. And I'm thinking about making a super cut where he's just saying, I'm going to make a dedicated video on this. And uh, I might take his advice and make a dedicated video out of this. Just saying. But anyway, guys, um, uh, even though we're 15 minutes in, uh, <laughs> if you guys are still here for the long haul, um, I guess we could talk a little bit about uh, some more personal life stuff. Um, as opposed to, you know, just power outages and flooding and all that other fun stuff. Um, you know, it feels <clears throat> kind of weird, you know, for me not posting, you know, more current stuff. And obviously, you know, you got the real uploads coming in, you know, Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday now. And, you know, that's something. But as far as new content goes, you know, it's, uh, it's one of the things, man, where it's like, um, I don't really have a whole lot to say, you know, during these periods. So I try to wait to say something when I got something to say. And, you know, that's why I haven't really been making any Andy before Japan stuff either. Cause you know, right now I'm just kind of waiting on class to start and then go through classes, get my GPA up, you know, all that, all that stuff to get myself ready to go back to Japan at the uh, beginning of 2020, end of 2019 is when I'm shooting to uh, to get back there. And uh, just got to get everything all lined up. And, you know, for me, school takes priority over everything, really, because I want to get out to Japan. In order for me to get out to Japan, I need to get my GPA up. And, you know, get my GPA up, I got to do good in school. You know, giga grades, some assignments, tests, all that stuff. So that's ultimately my ticket to Japan. So I got to take it, you know, very seriously. And it's going to be the first time I'll be going back to school since uh, the end of 2017. And, uh, you know, went through a good, a pretty solid gap year and a half, basically. Um, just trying to figure out what I wanted. And... You know, I thought it could wait for Japan until after I graduated school, but it just, yeah, it just wasn't in the cards for me, you know. Um, but now I'm back with a purpose. You know, I feel more invigorated, I guess, than I did when I first went through. Because I felt like, you know, it was just kind of logical to go to school after the military. I felt like I was just kind of going through the motions. And I think now that I'm much more deliberate in what I want to do and where I want to go, I think uh, that's really going to help with uh, my success in getting to where I want to go and doing the things I want to do, you know, and being more hands-on with my clients out in Japan, you know, whether it's, you know, being a camera person, getting B-roll and doing the main shots and all the other stuff to, you know, talking to them about different editing processes and, you know, different things that they want to improve upon on their videos and kind of guiding them through the process as well, you know, as well as, you know, shooting my own stuff, you know, because I look at that Manny Japandi videos, man, and uh, don't get me wrong, I love them to pieces, but... Uh, I've learned a lot since filming those videos and I want to put that, you know, that knowledge to uh, practical use, you know, 
you know, better camera angles, better storytelling, less, you know, me. And here we are in such location in Japan. Check it out. You, you know, turn the camera to the thing, which, you know, kind of was what it was for me at the time. I was still kind of in that old school YouTuber mindset of if you film it, they will come. But that's not the case anymore. And I've talked about that pretty extensively over the years. But, uh, you know, I've come to accept it. You know, times are changing. And the old Andy San Sam Modesto has got to change with the times as well. So, yeah, I'm really excited to, you know, meet up with everybody again once I get out to Japan. Uh, move some fresh faces as well because I've made a lot of friends uh, since leaving Japan. And uh, it'd be good to, you know, finally meet them in person. Um, see how they're all doing and helping out with videos and stuff like that. So, you know, feeling pretty good, but, uh, just got to take this thing one step at a time, guys. You know, it's like Rome wasn't built in a day kind of dealio here and I'm rambling. I know, but, uh, yeah, that's basically where I stand right now. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sun. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to my May 2019 update video, part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it. And I gave you guys a little uppy date on Instagram last night that was very well received. I wanna thank you guys for all the really nice comments you gave me last night involving that post. So we're just gonna kinda go over some things involving it and maybe elaborate on some other things. So you know how these update videos go. So, in any event, um, the main thing that's going to be coming up here for me shortly is school. So, for the first time since the end of 2017, I'm going to be starting up college again. So, I'm very excited about it. Um, my classes start in less than two weeks, the time it's recording. So, I'm very excited about all that. Can't wait to start. And the fun thing is, most of them are online. So, I don't even have to actually go to the campus. Um, all that often. I only have to go like twice a week. So that's pretty nice to allow me to still continue to do freelance work and balance out school and all that fun stuff. Of course, you know, depending on the workload involved, I might have to come back on some freelance projects because for me, once school starts, that's my number one priority because I'm going to go as hard as I can at school, especially this semester because that's going to be what I use to apply to the school that I want to go out to in Japan. Now, I don't want to name the school just yet because, you know, it might be bad luck to call, call my shot this early, but also, you know, they haven't accepted me yet. I haven't even applied to them yet. So, like, it's kind of presumptuous of me to even name drop them until, you know, after I've been accepted and all that stuff. So, yeah, but I will give you a hint. It is out in Tokyo. It is an English-speaking university, so pretty easy to put uh, two and two together, if, uh, if I do say so myself. So, but in any event, um, this semester, I'm going to be going as hard as I can on my grades and just focus as much as I can on that and try to manage my freelance projects as best I can. But, you know, for these next two months, I'm going to be going all out on school to get the best GPA that I can. So that way, when the grades are finalized and I send my results to the school I want to apply to in Tokyo, then I have the best possible shot of getting in. I mean, granted, they will look at my previous um, universities, GPAs and stuff like that, but they'll see that, okay, he took a little break here. He's doing really good now, so I'll have a better shot at getting in. And uh, the plan is to um, move out to Tokyo at the end of 2019, or maybe like very early 2020, depending on when I can get uh, tickets and stuff. So we'll just have to schedule that out when it comes to it, but it's around that time period, we'll say. And uh, plan on starting at uh, the beginning of 2020 in Tokyo, Japan. And it'll be the first time in five years that I'll be back in Japan 
and you know as you guys know since moving back to the states i haven't had the best of luck with things and you know before i blamed it on other circumstances outside of myself and yeah there were some things that you know were outside of my control that kind of hindered me a little bit but ultimately it was my own decisions that um, sabotaged my chances of, of success. So, you know, I took this time off from school to really think about what I want to do. And I want to go back to Japan. You know, I don't want to put it off anymore because I feel like the longer I put it off, the further away Japan's going to get. You know, even though all my expat friends are like, Japan will always be there. Japan will still be here. You know, for me, the longer I put it off, you know, it's going to be harder for me to get back. And even when I do get back, you know, all the hype and stuff that I've built up around it, it's not going to live up to that, you know. But I think now is a good time to come back because, you know, I've been away for about five years. And, you know, I've gone and learned so many different things, not just about videography and editing and all that stuff, which that alone is phenomenal. But I've also learned a lot about myself and just kind of how to balance things a lot better. You know, I learned a lot from, from my mistakes, from going back to college as a 30-something, trying to readjust to, to civilian life again, and then readjust to American life again. And as you guys know, I've gone through so many different roadblocks and, you know, gone through so many different uh, dips during this five-year stay in America. And, you know, I feel like I'm in a really good place right now. You know, I got my freelance stuff going good. I'm gonna be starting up school here in a couple weeks. You know, I got um, better local support. So if things start to get a little hairy, you know, I can always count on my family to, uh, to help me out. You know, if anything, just, you know, be there to listen to me complain about stuff. But uh, I'm trying to, you know, keep a very positive attitude about things because I noticed that negativity really is one of the things that pulls me down like really fast. So I'm just trying to eliminate the negative mindset um, and just try to focus more on positive aspects. You know, as some people may say, positive mental attitude, basically. So that I think is going to be uh, paramount to my success moving forward, not just in Japan, but in my career as well. And that's another thing, that's another reason why I want to move back to Japan is to um, build up my editing career and just to build something out of it, you know? Like, you know, work with so many people that I want to work with, you know, people who've, you know, I've become friends with, I've come in contact with, you know, both while I was in Japan and even after I've left. You know, there's a lot of people out there I want to work with and work with hands-on instead of just being some guy shouting instructions thousands of miles away in America, you know. And also, aside from that, I want to get back to making anti Japani videos because even though compared to uh, my other videos, they aren't the most highly viewed videos, but they were the most fun for me to make. And, you know, I look back on those and... You know, they do look kind of dated because, you know, I wasn't super focused on good editing or storytelling or anything like that. And I was basically allergic to B-roll <laughs> at that time. So a lot of it was either pointing the camera in my face and say, hey guys, this is Andy san here and we're going to this place in Tokyo. Okay, see you in the next bit. Turn the camera around. Okay, here we are. <laughs> And, you know, I tried different things and, you know, some of it was okay, a lot of it didn't work, but, you know, without that experimentation, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am now and focused more on improving my game. Like, speaking of game, the one thing that really improved my overall video quality, I think, was my Andy Cade series, you know, because before I started that up, I studied um, different, like, recording setups and how to get your voice to sound like really good for voiceover. 
and you know working with OBS which is what I'm using to record this video on so I just learned a lot even though the Andy Cade series wasn't really all that successful and I wasn't really all that good at being a Let's player to be honest um, but I learned a lot from the experience and I've taken what I've learned from that series and incorporated it into my following videos and I think once I get you know the chance to make the videos that I want to make again I think this channel will really start to come into its own because I feel like you know since moving back to America this channel really hasn't been the same you know I just you know and that's mostly due to lack of money and you know I just feel weird vlogging in America you know I worry about people either approaching me or you know wanting to steal my stuff because it might be a little expensive and you know it's just there's a lot of safety concerns for me when it involves shooting outside so you know that's why I haven't really done it all that often since coming back to the states now when I was out in Ohio I was in the middle of pretty much nowhere so you know it wasn't too hard to uh, vlog outside but after a while it just kind of became like seeing the same scenes shooting the same pictures it just kind of got a little a little boring to be honest so that's why you know I just felt like once I got back to the states my creativity started to stagnate and while behind the scenes I was learning more things with like video editing and starting that up you know I felt like my own videos suffered because of it and I think going back to Japan and getting back into that creative mindset and more importantly into the creative environment is going to significantly improve not only the quality of my own videos but also my freelance projects for my clients as well and to be able to put those skills that I've learned to the test is going to be tremendous for me so that's why I want to move back to Japan now that being said I know some people are gonna be wondering like well Andy you know once you move out to Japan do you have any plans of like staying in Japan long term are you gonna die in Japan and you know for me I'm like hopefully not <laughs> but uh, you know if it happens it happens but uh, you know I do want to stay in Japan long term but I do realize that the career that I want to go into isn't really supported out in Japan uh, for foreigners anyway um, it's not impossible to do I know plenty of foreigners out there who have had a really nice they've carved out a nice little niche for themselves in the entertainment industry in Japan and they're doing very well so it is definitely possible but you know I also got to think a bit more realistically as well so what if that doesn't happen for me you know um, there is the possibility of moving back to America but I would only realistically move back to America if either something happened at home with my family or if I got like a really good job opportunity that I just could not pass up and you know one of the possibilities would be to move out to LA and I know I've talked about this before in other videos as well but you know right now it's just not a really good possibility for me to to do that because I just don't have the money for it I don't have the connection base in LA and you know I don't have the solid portfolio that I need to even entertain the idea of working out in LA at this time but that is definitely something I do want to do in the long-term future is you know do something out in LA um, and I think long term again that's probably what I'll end up doing but you know for now I do want to go back to Japan stay as long as I can build up that portfolio and you know when the time comes that I got a solid portfolio got some interest in bringing me on to certain projects that pay extremely well you know who's to say I couldn't move out to LA or even like fly out to LA for a couple weeks to shoot something or whatever you know because that's the nice nice thing about uh, the West Coast is that it's very easy to get tickets and they're comparatively cheaper than uh, if I were to fly back and forth you know to Ohio or wherever so you know 
that's a possibility as well. But I'm just keeping my options open at this point because right now it's just uh, future speculation and stuff. And, you know, that's kind of where I see myself going is, you know, I want to show more of Japan, make videos of the places that I love and talk about things and meet people who are also interested in Japan and just kind of going forward from there, you know. So as far as, you know, classes and things like that, you know, especially right now, once I start class in a couple weeks, um, that's going to be my main priority. So you're probably not going to see too many videos from me. Um, I'll try to update as, as much as I can, maybe do some live streams or something like that, which I have been doing more of um, while I'm editing videos and stuff. So you guys seem to be enjoying those as well, which is nice. Um, as far as making it a regular thing, I, I'm not really sure because, you know, it just depends on the level of work. And, you know, for me, editing and paying attention to a stream at the same time can get a little taxing. So if it's like super intense editing work that I have to like really focus on, you know, it's kind of difficult for me to stream that. Or, you know, if it's just a day where the dogs are barking like crazy and, you know, all this other stuff's going on, or maybe I don't have the right energy to, you know, do both at the same time, then probably not a good day for me to stream. So that just kind of kind of is what it is. And, you know, right now, you know, I don't really have a set schedule, as you guys know. So it's hard for me to say, yeah, tune in Wednesdays at 8 p.m. or something like that. And um, I'm hoping once I get out to Japan, get back into a rhythm and a flow with uh, making my own videos, making videos for others, and just doing my thing, then we'll get back into the scheduling flow that I had back when I was stationed out in Japan. Cause like, I had it down, man. Like, usually what I do is during the weekends, if I didn't have duty, I would go out to Tokyo or Yokohama or wherever and shoot the video. I do all my shooting on the weekends and then I would spend the rest of the week editing the video and sometimes it would only take like a day others where it's like a lot of different footage and stuff would take a bit longer but i would do like all my editing and all that stuff during the week all my sh shooting during the weekend so i had a nice nice rhythm and flow going and i would like you know write down different places that i want to go to you know i'd look at other people's videos and be like oh, i want to go to that place too and you know that's that was my mo from when i first got out there but i think now that there's so many people out there making videos of japan uh, one of the things i want to do to differentiate myself is to shoot at locations that aren't really all that covered uh, in most videos, you know, obviously you got the the touristy spots in Tokyo. You know, you got Harajuku, Shinjuku, Shibuya, um, Akihabara, all that stuff, which I definitely do want to make videos of. But you know, I also want to include some more like off the beaten path type places. And even if they don't get a lot of views, you know, for people that are looking for them, I want it to be like the top video. So um, there was a saying that uh, I was watching this, uh, this series on Netflix called, um, I think it was called Street Food. And I was watching the Osaka episode and this one guy who started in kind of an outdoor izakaya, he said, you should always strive to be the head of a chicken rather than the tail of a bull. And what that means is it's best to be in charge of something small than just be, you know, a small part of something big. And I really resonated with that. And I think, you know, for me, I definitely want to do my own thing. And I like the concept of freelancing because it allows me to be, you know, autonomous. Um, you know, the client just gives me their stuff. They may have some directions as far as what they want the video to be or what they want to showcase or, you know, take this part out, don't shoot that or color correct that or, you know, whatever. It all depends on the client, really. Some are more hands-on than others. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just sitting here from my computer, 
you know, sipping on some tea, sipping on some water, whatever, you know, putting these videos together. I don't have to worry about people looking over my shoulder and be like, yeah, I'm gonna need you to color correct that differently. Okay, thanks. <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. I just do my thing. And um, also, speaking of computers, uh, this is kind of a, you know, whatever. But uh, once I start up school, um, financially, how things are going to work out is um, obviously saving up for Japan is the highest priority. You know, getting plane ticket money, having a nice little nest egg, uh, so I have something to live off of until the GI Bill kicks in as well as have some emergency funds set up so if something were to happen or if like the GI Bill was a little short that month, you know, I'm not scrambling around to pay my bills or scramble around to eat something or whatever. So I'm um, taken care of. And that's why, you know, I want to wait until the beginning of 2020 to go out to Japan rather than the fall because I'll have more time to save up, more time to get better grades. So in the event that, you know, they don't accept my awesome summer grades, you know, I can apply the following semester and just kind of keep going from there, basically. So, um, but yeah, there are some things that I do need to buy in order to, you know, really function out in Japan. And the main thing is a laptop. Now, I love my desktop computer. I uh, built it back in 2015. So it's about five years old now. And even still, it's just a fucking beast. I have no problem playing any of the modern games. Editing is just effortless, basically. Unless I get into uh, 4K, it does struggle a little bit with 4K, but if you set it up just right, you know, put up proxies or, you know, whatever the case, then it is definitely doable, but uh, it does struggle a bit with it. So, uh, but that aside, you know, something like this is kind of hard to fit in a suitcase. So as much as I love it, um, it's just easier for me uh, to have a laptop. So I'm looking into buying a laptop on Amazon. And the nice thing is uh, some laptops have a five month payment program. So um, for me, you know, as I'm plugging away at classes, collecting that BAH, you know, I can just get the laptop, pay on it monthly, and uh, in five months I'll have it. So that's nice. Um, and as far as other things I want to get, um, it would be nice if I got the uh, the new Sony A6400. That's the camera I really want to get for shooting those really awesome Andy Japani videos. Last year I sold my Sony A5100 camera. Um, had to sell it to pay some bills, fix the car, all that fun stuff, you know. But I ended up selling it and I love that camera and I was looking at all the videos about the A6400, and there are some drawbacks, but for my own purposes, I couldn't have think of a better camera. You know, it's got the, uh, the shooting power, autofocus, it's got the flip up screen, which is the important thing. And, you know, as far as like, adjust having like an external mic or something like that with it, there's definitely ways around it. You can get the little cage, which is probably what I'm gonna get. I also saw recently uh, some company put out kind of a mini attachment that allows you to like, you know, have the little, the little cold shoe mount like in different positions. So it's not just like in the center that the Sony one has. So that's also a possibility. Uh, but the point being is I definitely at least want the camera and you know make some really high quality 4k videos So I definitely want to move up to 4k for the outside videos now for these Inside ones where I'm just you know in my room or whatever You know 10 AP is fine. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that But if I'm doing outside any Japani stuff definitely want to do 4k for sure. So yeah, that's Pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this uh, long-winded Obby Date video. Um, once again, I just want to thank you guys for tuning into the, this video, watching my other stuff, and you know, just supporting me through this through this time because I know, um, especially with my low video output, it's kind of hard. 
and you know I've been working doing other things and you know especially in this day and age on YouTube where you know if you don't post regularly you're considered relevant but uh, that's about to change so uh, just be on the lookout for Andy Japandi season 2 2020 baby so with that said guys this is the Andy Sun sign for now and as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye all right and we're recording hey gang andy here and welcome to my june 2019 update video for you guessed it june 2019 woo so yeah as always with these monthly update videos i'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff so let's just jump right into it and the first thing i want to talk about is a little bit of youtube -y stuff i don't have a whole lot to go over this month surprise but i do want to say that we've almost completely uploaded everything from the previous uh, personal channel. So the only thing we have left is one episode of Andy Before Japandi. It's gonna be coming out later on this week. And that's pretty much it. Now, we still do have uh, Military Mondays. Uh, so every Monday there's gonna be an episode of Andy Talks Navy. And those have been scheduled out as far as like the end of November of this year. So we definitely have a fair bit of content to get through as far as that goes. But as far as everything else, we're all caught up. So uh, feel free to watch some of those episodes and have fun reminiscing and stuff. Because, you know, I know I have. You know, that's one of the, that's one of the fun things about being a YouTuber for as long as I've been doing it. Cause like, I've been doing it for over 13 years now. And to just be able to go back and look at some of those awesome experiences and remember those times and actually like see where I was during those times instead of letting the nostalgia glasses, you know, get cranked on a little too tight and, you know, think it was actually like this, but in reality it was like this if that makes any sense. So, and to be able to share that with the whole world, you know, that's that's awesome. That's the, that's the power of YouTube, baby. So that's pretty much it for the youtube -y stuff. So let's get into some personal life stuff. So uh, the main thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is obviously this has been my first week back in school since I left at the end of 2017, back when I was up in Michigan. And uh, it's been great so far, you know, summer, is a highly underrated semester, especially if you're introverted with a, the dash of the uh, the anxiety and stuff. So summer semesters are nice because parking is usually a lot easier. Uh, classes are a lot more laid back. You know, there's not a lot of people running around. So you don't have to feel like you're just like stuck in a crowd of people, especially if you go to a big campus. But that being said, there are some disadvantages. One of them being that the pace is a lot faster in summer courses because the summer semester is shorter. So they have to like cram what would normally be like, what, 16 weeks worth of stuff into like eight weeks. So, you know, they kind of end up skipping out a lot of the, the filler stuff like lectures and all that other stuff and kind of just condensing it down, which that in and of itself can be a good thing, especially for me, just kind of wants to know the facts, wants to know what I want to know and not, you know, have to worry about attending lectures and stuff like that. So that's kind of nice, but I do have to be like on it. So, you know, as long as I approach it with the right mindset, I'm good. So, yeah. And speaking to school um this weekend i'm gonna be working on homework and all that fun stuff uh, for my classes and everything like that so and then afterwards you know work on some more free freelance projects things like that um i said this on instagram if you're not following me there instagram.com slash the andyson sure to give your boy a follow you know this is the first week where the work begins you know, this is where I actually begin to put some work towards coming back to Japan. You know, no longer is it just like hype and like, I really want to do it, guys. I'm, I'm serious about it. I mean, come on, guys. You know, it's like, you know, the hype's over. It's time to put in the work. You know, I'm going to take this as seriously as I can. I'll still probably stick to my usual-ish uploady schedule, you know, since there's not going to be as many, you know, constant weekly uploads since the archive's pretty much done, aside from the Andy Talks Navy stuff. I am taking school very seriously this semester because, you know, got to do good this semester, 
because those are the grades I'm gonna be using to apply to the schools that I wanna go out to uh, out in Tokyo. So I wanna make sure I present myself in the best possible way. You know, I made some mistakes in the past. That was like two, three years ago. Um, I've grown a lot since then, much different person now. And you know, you can even go back and look at some of those older videos and see some of the, the changes, you know, some of the growth. Um, and just focus on what I want, basically. Because um, I'm really serious about coming back to Japan and I want to do what I can to make it happen. You know, because the nice thing about the GI Bill is, you know, it'll take care of a lot of things. You know, like once I'm out there and, you know, the BH payments and stuff start coming in, then it's, you know, you can cruise nice and easy. But it's getting to that point. That's the hard part. You know, it's getting to save up the money to, you know, afford the plane tickets to come over, to afford the uh, the dorm that's out there. Because the, the dorms, because like with uh, a lot of the universities out there, they require you to spend at least the first semester in a dorm. And a lot of times, uh, because that, especially since the dorms are in Tokyo and not exactly in a cheap part of Tokyo, um, even though the dorms, they're still pretty expensive relative to uh, what you could get in either similar parts or maybe a bit further out from the more populated areas of Tokyo. So um, that's gonna be a little tough on the old wallet, at least for the first semester. But, you know, I've been looking at different areas around Tokyo, um, just like different like guest houses, share houses, uh, dorm dormitories, which are a lot, a lot better priced. Um, and just other living situations out there. Really looking forward to that, obviously. Um, I've just been doing a lot of research on the Tokyo area because like I visited Tokyo a whole lot when I was stationed in Yokosuka, but as you guys know, it's one thing to visit a place, but it's a completely different thing to live there because like when you're visiting, you don't really think of things like commute time, uh, traffic, and just all the little things that are involved with living in an extremely dense city like Tokyo. So there's a lot of different factors that I have to consider when finding a place out there. And, you know, I don't think I'll know for sure where I wanna go until I actually get out there and see the commute times and stuff for myself. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to uh, plan a little ahead and just have a general idea of what to look for and especially prices because sticker shock is real out there. You know, I've been looking for like cheap apartments and stuff. And, you know, I usually find that like the cheaper apartments are either tiny little shoe boxes in a guest house or like, you know, they're decently sized, but they're like way out in the friggin' countryside, the Yanaka area. It's basically a trade-off between low rent, but high travel costs, or high rent and low travel costs. So you gotta figure out like what's more uh, important to you. You know, do you want to live in a place that's reasonably sized for not a lot of money, but it takes you like two, two, two and a half hours to get to school and back? Or do you want to live fairly close to school, but live in a shoebox that costs way too much money? So just priorities, basically. And there's also a lot of hidden costs, especially with Japanese apartments, because you know you got your key money, deposit, you know, realtor's fee, all these other hidden fees, which thankfully there's, you know, websites out there that kind of outline those sorts of things. So it's not like a complete surprise. But you know, if you're just kind of like searching through stuff and you see, oh, this apartment's only like 250 bucks a month, okay, and you open it up and like initial moving cost is like almost $2,000. It's like, eh? <laughs> you know, I wasn't expecting that. So yeah, but yeah guys, getting back to uh, my previous thing uh, about, you know, presenting yourself in the best possible way uh, when applying to schools. So like I said, main focus is going to be on school. So if you don't see a whole lot of videos from me, you know, just know that I'm working hard <laughs> on school and uh, I'm gonna really give this uh, my best possible effort. So everything 
revolves around school, whether it's freelance projects, YouTube videos, everything. So again, you know, you're still gonna see a little trickle of videos from me as far as like the Andy Talks Navy series. And I might post a little video every once in a while just kinda let you know what's going on, especially if there's like a big update. But uh, for the most part, I'm just gonna be working on school, doing me. Um, but if you do want to, you know, reach out or something, sure leave a little comment down below in the boopy de boop or join my Discord. Um, I do have a Discord, there's a link in the description of all my videos, it's a permanent link, so it's not timed. So you can join whenever you like. But I really enjoy my Discord, it's got a good group of people in there, and uh, I wanna see it grow and flourish. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I wanna say in this particular update video. Really gotta go to the bathroom, so we're gonna pinch things off here. So, with that said guys, this is the Andy San, signing for now, thinking hey, you guys, pook, with an old school Andy San outro that's probably gonna last way too long, but whatever, I'm feeling it right now. I'm definitely feeling it right now. But anyway, I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video, liking this video, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, um, all the youtube call to action type stuff that you normally hear. Um, so, just wanna thank you guys for all the support. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to my June 2019 update video, part due. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some first life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So let's just jump right into it, as uh, Philly D would say, and uh, talk about some YouTube things. So first thing I do wanna say is I wanna thank you guys so much for all the support for my recent Andy Talks Navy episode. Um, it was a very special episode that I wanted to cover. It felt really good to get all that stuff off my chest and I've never really talked about it to anybody or made a video about it. Um, talked about some aspects of it, but I've never gone that in depth with uh, my experience overseas from 2013 to 2015. And it felt really good to get all that out there. And I'm so glad that you guys um, resonated with it as well. To see all the comments and views and all the support and messages and all that kind of stuff really makes a guy feel loved, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I definitely appreciate that so much. Moving on to personal life. Um, as you guys know, started college back up last month. Uh, first time in going on two years since I got out of college the, the uh, second time around. And uh, things are going good this time. Um, going to class, which helps. Getting homework and stuff submitted on time. You know, it's a, it's a major plus, obviously. And uh, it just, you know, the workload is very logically paced. There's no like weird surprise assignments or anything like that. And it just makes it so much easier to figure out what to do when instead of having to, you know, piece things together. You know, it's nice to have it all organized for me. So grade wise, I'm doing exceptionally well. My main obstacle now is saving up for my return to Japan. And I've come across um, owing the VA some money from an overpayment several years back. And they're taking it out of my BAH, book stipends, all that kind of stuff. It's really hurting my ability to save up for Japan. But in addition to that, even if I do manage to save up to go out to Japan, it's gonna hurt my viability to stay in the country, to be able to live in the country, basically, because uh, cutting my living allowance down. And so it's very difficult to figure out where to go from here as far as that goes. So I'm looking at other ways to raise the money, not just to move out to Japan, but also in savings as well. So if the GI Bill's a little short that month, you know, like every, every little bit counts as far as that goes. So I wanna make sure I have a very healthy amount saved up. So on the tight months, I got the money to do it. 
So I'm looking at uh, possibly bringing in some more freelance clients, doing some more freelance work, um, maybe selling some things, maybe getting a part-time job if workload and everything permits from school. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how much money I save up. If I don't get accepted into the school I want to, or just any school out in Japan in general, then it's not gonna mean anything because I won't have my in to go to Japan, right? But at the same time, you know, you need to afford the plane ticket money, you gotta afford living expenses until the GI Bill kicks in, considering how much I owe the VA and how much they're taking per housing payment, you know, it's gonna take some time. So it's very, difficult at this stage to figure out how to get out to Japan but you know I'm a problem solver that's uh it's kind of my deal so like I said looking at ways to be able to make it happen because you know I want to make this happen and you know even once I get out to Japan I've also looked at different ways that I can uh, make money out there and obviously the, the most obvious way for me to do it would be to get a job but with my um, student visa I can only work so many hours a day and so many hours a week as well so I'm very limited in how much I can earn on a student visa versus here in America I could work uh, like a full-time job and still go to school but you know for me personally I don't have the energy to, to do something like that but it is possible, but you know, if you have a student visa in Japan, you can only work, I think, a max of 28 hours a week. So you have to be very practical about the type of work you do and how many hours it takes, because like every hour counts, right? But that's what I love about doing freelance work is that, you know, for me, I'm a very fast editor, so that really cuts down the time that I work. And there's also other little side hustles and stuff like that I could do on when I'm out in Japan, you know, I can, in addition to getting like a, a regular ass job, you know, I could also do some English teaching on the side, doing stuff with what I work with in uh, video, doing some stock video. And uh, there's lots of different places out in Japan that I can make stock video of, including a lot of the, uh, the popular tourist attractions, but also I wanna do some stuff of some lesser known things. So, you know, just kind of get a, a little bit of everything basically. And I'm not looking to make a whole lot of money from it, but if you put out enough clips and you have like a whole library of stuff, all that stuff adds up, you know? All the little pennies and dimes and everything eventually add up. And if anything, it's a nice little secondary income, you know? So, I figure since I'll be doing a lot of shooting videos, not just for myself, but for others, um, again, that's another source of income as well. The opportunities are out there, is what I'm trying to say. But it's nice and will help really put me at ease to come out there with a pretty sizable nest egg, just to make sure during them, uh, them rough months that I'm good. And you know, even, if I didn't have these issues with the GI Bill and was getting paid the normal amount, I would still have to uh, have a nest egg set up so that way during the months that I'm not in school, because even if I'm going to school year round, you know, spring, summer, and fall, there are some months where school's not in session and if school's not in session, you don't get paid. So you gotta make sure you have plenty of money saved up to still cover those living expenses and everything until things Come back to normal you know so that's where a lot of that stuff really comes into play so yeah it's uh it's not gonna be easy for me coming back to japan never really expected it to be I'm still not gonna give up you know i know there's a lot of people who's probably gonna say in the comments well andy you should probably just wait to graduate before you get back out to japan and all this other stuff i would still have to save up a lot of money to get out there because even if i came out there with a job I'm not gonna get paid until a month later anyway. I still have to save up anyway, so it's not really gonna matter. And at least with the GI Bill, even though I, I don't get paid as much as I would be if I didn't owe money, it's better than nothing. And if I just went out there on a work visa, you know, I wouldn't be getting that GI Bill money. So 
it's always good to have money coming in. That's what I'm trying to say. And plus, you know, being a student, you do have a lot of free time, more so than if you were to work a full-time job. So you're a lot more able to, uh, to do things like that. I have like the most flexibility with my time being a student versus getting a work visa and being full-time doing whatever, teaching English to the kids, I don't know. That's pretty much all I wanna say in this little update video. Um, things are going pretty good. Really thankful for you guys for sticking around with me. Um, even during this time, which may not be the most exciting time on my channel, I realized that I know I don't really get out of the house as much as I did back when I was out in Japan. I gotta worry about safety and stuff out in America these days. And plus, you know, to me, it's not really that interesting. I mean, it might be for some people. There might be some outside videos coming in the future. You know, maybe bringing back the car vlogs or something like that. I actually did a little car vlog test on my new car, which is very loud, but found a way to, uh, to work around it. So there might be some, some car vlogs in the future. Definitely stay tuned for that. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanna say in this uh, little update video. So that said guys, this is the Andy San, sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to my very first car vlog in this car anyway. Uh, it's been a while since I've done car vlogs in general, and it's the first time doing it in this one. I think it's my first like 4K video. Um, I've tried doing it before, but it just wasn't quite working out. But uh, I wanted to break out the old GoPro and uh, see how she fares in this car. And uh, before we took off, I went and uh, tested out the uh, the image and everything, make sure everything's all in frame, and it looks pretty good. I kind of like the sort of quasi. 360 view you get with this thing. I'm really liking how it turns out, and hopefully, if, uh, if things work out, we're gonna be doing some more car vlogs. Cause uh, you know, gotta go to school, so that's that's where I'm going at right now. Um, go to school during the summer. I go twice a week on campus. It's uh, pretty hot out, so I'm hoping that the GoPro lasts. Um, because last time I tried recording a car vlog, the fucker died on me. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna do a, a vlog on uh, the uh, nine year anniversary of me going out to uh, Navy Basic, Navy Boot Camp, uh, but the thing died on me, so uh, kinda missed the deadline on that one, so eh, it is what it is. Yeah, like I said, still going to school. Um, it's gonna be my first month back in about two days, technically. Um, but yeah, things are going really well with school. I just checked my grades. Everything's great. Like the lowest grade I have is a B plus. So all things considered, I'm doing pretty damn good for myself. Looking to get that GPA up uh, so I can apply to schools out in Japan. But the main thing that I'm running up against uh, as far as that goes is getting the money to go back out to Japan. Because um, as you guys know, I'm on the GI Bill, so as far as paying for school goes, I'm good. But as far as paying for everything else, eh, <laughs> I owe the VA a little bit of money. So they're going to be taking it out of my VAH in order to pay for it. By the end of, not the end of this year, but in about a year's time, it'll be all paid for. So it's going to make saving up for Japan uh, a bit difficult. Uh, but not impossible, you know, and I'm looking at different ways to to make money to make that a reality. You know, one of them is doing some more freelance stuff, uh, whether that's doing more work with my current clientele or finding some new clients to do some work for. Um, just uh, putting some feelers out there right now to kind of see what's going on as far as that goes. And uh, I'm also looking into getting some part-time work as well over the weekends. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it's been pretty rough on the old Andy San San Modesta as of late, as far as that goes. I haven't really been getting a whole lot of sleep as of late. Now, last night I had a pretty good amount of sleep, but uh, before, not so much. Uh, and I think it's just, you know, a lot of the stress of worrying about, you know, what's going on with, um, you know, saving up for Japan, 
and you know just like what the future holds because you know what if it takes me a little bit longer to to save up for Japan you know like I've I've put it out there that I'm gonna be coming back to Japan next year 2020 woo and uh, what if that doesn't happen or what if I have to wait until later in 2020 to make it happen and I don't want to feel like I'm disappointing you guys and you know having to wait longer to uh, to get out to Japan so I've been dealing a lot with that of you know am I considered a failure if it takes me a little bit longer to uh, to make things happen and the reality is no I'm only a failure if I if I give up on it and I don't want to give up on it it's really hard to to deal with a lot of this this adversity as far as uh, saving up for things and stuff like that goes and you know dealing with your own personal issues and just you know feeling like kind of a failure in some aspects because you know you end up comparing yourself to others I've gotten a lot better at it you know I don't beat myself up as much over not being where I want to be or in comparison to my friends and family I realized that my path is a lot different than theirs and it's not to say that they're doing better than me or I'm doing worse than them or vice versa you know it's just we have different paths and that's really all there is to it as long as I'm staying the course and doing my thing and chasing what makes me happy then I'm doing good and I have to keep reminding myself of that because you know it's very tempting to uh, to be led astray by uh, what others are doing. And I see it all the time with like Instagram. Uh, Facebook was a big one for me. That's why I ended up having to pretty much <laughs> get off of Facebook almost entirely. I only check it for like uh, messages and stuff. Just gotta keep reminding yourself, man, that the path that you're on is the path that you're on. And you know, nobody else is gonna live your life. You know, you just gotta keep going, man. And you know, I've had some people message me about some things uh, most notably I've caught the uh, the ire of a certain subreddit on uh, reddit and uh, you know thankfully we've come to an understanding you know there's a lot of miscommunication involved with that so um, the parties involved have reached out to me about it and we're cool now so no worries um, but I think it's just uh, just a misunderstanding as far as uh, what my goals are and okay <laughs> sorry I was looking at the light well as far as like what my goals are and uh, you know what is happening now like with my channel my channel is a big one right because a lot of people you know they, they, they hear me talk about you know you guys and you know it seems like I have a very big audience when I'm talking you know, like I was telling somebody who was asking me about it, um, I'm not talking all this stuff about the people who are watching me right now. Um, I'm talking about it for the people who are going to watch me. It doesn't matter that some of my videos only get maybe 10 or 20 views and I only have such and such subscribers. I think time's recording, I'm closing in on 1,600 subscribers for my main channel. Those metrics don't really bother me anymore. They used to when I was younger, because I felt like my own worth and stuff was based on popular opinion. And you know, the more subscribers I got, and the more views, and the more likes, and all that kind of stuff, you know, that was my metric of success. But that's completely false. You know, once I started divesting myself from caring about vanity metrics, because that's basically what they are. I mean, let's let's be real here. You know, the the likes and the subscribers and all that kind of stuff. It's vanity metrics. You know, what really matters is the message that you're putting out there and what you intend on doing with your YouTube videos, YouTube channel, all that kind of stuff, man. You know, just the type of art audience that you're uh, you're looking to, to target, you know? Because I've seen some channels where they get, you know, hundreds of thousands of views and may only get a couple hundred bucks. And conversely, I've seen channels where they only get like maybe tens of thousands of views, but they're raking in thousands of dollars. 
everything's relative, man. It just depends on what you're talking about, how engaged your content is, and how engaged your audience is. So for me, I've learned to divest myself from vanity metrics and instead focus on what really matters, which is my message, what I'm trying to put out there. And basically what I'm doing is documenting. Right now, I'm documenting my journey. Uh, right now, literally, it's my journey to college. <laughs> but uh, in a broader sense, it's my journey back to Japan. Every journey begins with one step after another. And so with these videos, I'm documenting that, right? So I'm documenting my journey to school, getting through classes, saving up, then, you know, gonna be buying the plane ticket, getting it, well, getting accepted into a college first, then buying the plane ticket and all this other stuff that's involved with that. And I'll be able to look back on these videos and see like where I was way back in 2019, right? You know, just like I'm able to see where I was back in 2014 or 2015. You know, that's the beauty of YouTube, man. Like, I've been doing it for <clears throat> for over 13 years now. You know, I haven't seen the vanity success. You know, my vanity metrics aren't as high as, as other YouTubers who've been around as long as me, who are still around. Um, but, that being said, my goals are not their goals. Like, my goal is to document my journey. And you know what, even if I don't get lots of subscribers or lots of views, it doesn't really matter. So yeah guys, um, the camera actually overheated as I was finishing my thought there. Um, don't know exactly what I was talking about, so I uh, figured we'll just uh, end things here so that way keep things uh, nice and a prompt for y'all. So with that said guys, this is the Andy Sun. Sign for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to my July 2019 update video for, you guessed it, July 2019. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So let's just jump right into it. And I do wanna mention that I tried recording a new car vlog for this update video earlier today, but it's just too hot and the GoPro overheated and it just didn't quite come out right so kind of is what it is and I've been editing pretty much all day aside from going to school earlier today so I'm kind of kind of tired of editing for the rest of the day <laughs> gotta give myself a little bit of a break right so that's why I'm I'm doing this raw baby and I'm gonna try to curb my ums ahs you knows and so's and awkward pauses as much as I possibly can but you know me no guarantees so, um, you know, <laughs> I'm just fucking with it. Uh, but in any event, uh, we'll just uh, jump right into it, right? <laughs> this is why I edit my vlogs. So, for the month of July 2019, woo, uh, there's not a whole lot going on as usual. It's just kind of ho hum, I guess. Um, still going to school, still saving up for Japan, still doing freelance stuff. Uh, so, nothing really major as far as that goes. Um, I guess the, the main thing involving with school is that um, this is going to be the last month of my summer semester. So I finish up this semester at the end of this month and then I get a month off and then uh, fall semester starts afterwards. So I'm um, probably not going to be posting too many videos because I'll be working on finals and other projects and stuff like that so yeah so if you don't see anything from me aside from the military Mondays I'm busy working on school stuff so kind of is what it is as far as that goes now as far as the whole paying off debt thing goes I do have some interesting news as, as it involves that so I recently got some paperwork from the VA involving like what I owe and the breakdown and stuff like that and apparently I'm not going to give out exacts for privacy reasons, but apparently my debt has been split into three separate parts. Now you have the main part, and then you have two smaller parts. So what I originally signed up for as far as the repayment plan goes is that I pay them 
a good chunk of my BAH and then it'll evenly distribute out to what I owe to those three little uh, debts until the debt's been paid off within 12 months. But two of those debts I can probably pay off a lot faster. So the plan is to pay off one of those debts because one of them's like really small. So I could probably cover it with my BAH uh, at the end of this month. So the plan is to pay that one off and then work on the smaller debt, which might take me a couple months, but still doable. And then from there, probably just wait until the biggest, the, the main part of the debt has been whittled down through, you know, the usual, you know, BAH and stuff like that. And the idea behind that is, is the faster that I whittle my debts down, the faster I'll be able to get um, full BAH again. And the faster I'll be able to save up for Japan proper, and I'll actually have, like, you know, a livable source of income instead of just, like, a couple hundred bucks here and there, you know. So that will be extremely helpful in the coming months. So that's pretty much all I got to say about school, as far as that goes, and personal life, and, you know, all the usual stuff. So I guess the main thing I want to talk about in this video is that today is the 15-year anniversary of my dad's passing. Um, he passed away July 3rd, 2004 very shortly after I graduated high school, actually. And I remember the last time I talked with my dad was when I was 16. And, um, and fireworks. <laughs> Someone's starting early. But in any event, um, yeah, our relationship wasn't the best near the end uh, because of his drinking. And he was just like so out of it near the end. You know, it's just like, you know, my, you know, we would visit him on weekends and stuff because my mom and him divorced a long, long time ago. So we'd visit him like every other weekend usually and then like two weeks in the summer or something like that. And um, it was just rough, man. You know, just to see him. I don't know why the phone's having trouble focusing. Sorry. ADD moment. But anyway, uh, it was just hard to see him deteriorate like that and you know it's especially hard on on my little brother as well so we decided to um write a letter saying that we don't want to see you anymore until you get your you know alcohol usage um under control and we never saw him again alive sadly um, two years had passed, and then that's when we got the phone call that, you know, he was in the hospital. And he was actually on his way to uh, a, rehabil a rehabilitation center to uh, recover. And we thought that we'd have a longer time to talk with him and kind of, you know, patch things up. Because we, we knew he was dying, but uh, we figured we'd have, like, more time to... Uh, to talk with him and just kind of wrap up loose ends, ask for forgiveness and all that other stuff, just to get some closure with the relationship. But on his way to the rehabilitation center, I guess something happened and he died. That was kind of the the end, of the uh, basics behind that. <laughs> um, so. That was pretty shocking for me. Um, I just started up ITT Tech at that time, just to give you an idea of, of where I was at that time. I just started ITT Tech majoring in web design because I wanted to be a basically a freelance web designer, so not too far off from the freelance video editing. Um, it only took me 15 years to get there, but uh, <laughs> eventually got there, right? So... Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was just uh, a really hard time for me um, because I, I, I thought that we'd have 
more time to to have closure in the relationship because you know I felt very hurt that he wasn't willing to at least stop drinking while we were around you know like if he wanted to to booze it up and stuff while we were gone that's you know I wouldn't say it's fine but you know it's, uh, it's whatever but uh you know as long as he you know <laughs> at least like drank in moderation while we were around you know because we just wanted to be around our dad you know just wanted to be there with him but like while we were there he would just be like so spaced out and drunk and just not with it you know so we figured like what's the point why are we even here you know just you know at that point like I said I was about 16 so I was working so like every weekend or so I would go in and work a couple hours and then come back and it was just like I don't know and and I felt really bad for my brother about the whole thing too but um, you know it just kind of is what it is and I'm sorry if I'm sounding a little heartless about the situation but you know for me I've, I've long made peace with that whole situation you know it really really messed with me <clears throat> for for a long time after he passed um, I didn't really show it you know outwardly but I just kind of kept it within but you know it really messed with me because I wanted to have closure that relationship but just kind of is what it is you know like can't always have that luxury um and then um the following year beginning of 20 uh 2005 excuse me um that's when my grandma passed away too so thankfully i was able to have some closure with her but um for my own dad it just you know just kind of was what it was and he had his own issues and everything too so you know it's it's hard to uh, say what we could have done better you know because I felt I feel like mental health has really progressed significantly since you know the 90s and early 2000s um, it, I, I can remember like when he was you know, getting on medicine and stuff like that, because he he did have bipolar disorder. I don't know exacts. Apparently, there's like four or five different versions of bipolar disorder. So I don't know what version he had or any of the other stuff. But I remember he was on like lithium and shit like that, kind of even him out. And uh, you know, back in the the early days, it was. Uh, really difficult because you know small town Ohio doesn't really see a lot of mental health stuff you know if it was probably back in the 70s or 80s they probably think that like the devil possessed him or something like that because that's kind of how small towns are sorry I thought I heard a noise but anyway that's kind of how small towns are and that's kind of how you know where where we grew up was was like back in the day and mental health was such a stigma you know especially in a small town where everybody talks and everybody knows everybody's business so you know it's it's a little difficult to um, have to deal with your dad having mental disorders very at times very public mental disorders because you know when who would have his manic episodes and manic lows and stuff like that. He would act out in public, and it wouldn't be the best. <clears throat> Jesus, I'm losing my voice. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, he would have episodes, and sometimes they'd be very public. Um, so it was really hard growing up and, you know, having to 
not only live with that, but uh, to have to like go to school and you know try to make friends and stuff like that. It, it was really hard, you know. And like I said, it took me many years to kind of come to some form of closure with how that relationship ended. And, you know, I'm glad that I managed to to find that. And, you know, I've learned to kind of accept that, you know, he had he had his issues, he had his addictions, his, his demons, or whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, he was still my dad. And of the moments that he was lucid and wasn't on a manic high or low, um, you know, he was really a really good person deep down. And I really wish I would have had more time to to get to know him, especially as an adult, because, you know, I, I think the relationship that, you know, parents and kids have when the kids are adults is a lot different than when the kids are kids, you know? Um, and I see that, you know, with, with my own mom, of my stepdad, you know, our relationship is a lot different now than what it was back in the day. And, you know, I see them in a, in a much different light now. And I wish I could have that sort of relationship with my own, with my own dad. But, uh, you know, things just, just aren't meant to be. And I'm sorry if this, this vlog is a bit of a Debbie Downer because of all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to get the video out before the end of today because today's the 15 year anniversary. And it's also the 15 year anniversary on a, on a more positive note, kind of lift things up a bit. Um, it's also the 15 year anniversary of me graduating from high school. So sadly, I'm not in the area. So I won't be attending the 15 year reunion. And plus I wanna, you know, lose some weight before I even attempt something like that. You know, I don't wanna go in there looking like a chunker. So uh, yeah, just gotta hit the gym or something like that before the 20 year anniversary, right? So uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanna say in this little up even date video. So just a quick little recap. Um, might be a little busy for this month because it's the last month of uh, the summer semester so I have some final projects and stuff I'll be working on in the coming weeks. I'll try to uh, maybe get some videos out, maybe get some Mandy Before Japan stuff out. Maybe, no guarantees, because again, priority school. Uh, but, you know, if you want to be on the up and up with what I'm up to, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also sign up for my Discord. Link's in the description. Um, so be sure to do that. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Welcome to my July 2019 update video. Part do. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is a literal pain in my ass. So over this past weekend, I've been going through some physical pain in that area, trying to figure out what it is, because originally I thought it was a skin infection, because I had that a couple years back when I was in the Navy, and it was not a fun time. But went through, did some more super sleuthing, and ruling out stage four terminal brain cancer, found out it was something called sequel, isothequial, I can't pronounce it, uh, bursitis. Basically, it's these little sacs in between your hamstring and your hip bone and if they're irritated enough through uh, mostly sedentary activity, like sitting down, editing videos and things, they become inflamed and it can be really hard to sit down. For the past week, I've been doing a lot of standing up, literally getting off my ass 
<laughs> I couldn't bear to sit down for more than a couple seconds. Thanks to walking around and stuff, as much as I can anyway, because it's either like really fucking hot around here, or it's raining, or both, because the South, <laughs> basically. Uh, but I'm doing as much as I could to um, alleviate it. And I'm happy to say, a week later, you can't tell, I'm sitting down. And I'm not screaming in agony, so major plus. But uh, it still does hurt a little bit, so I got myself a little cushion for my seat, which helps. And I'm also doing like standing and stuff like that, taking uh, breaks. Because it used to be when I was working on videos, I would just edit for like hours at a time without moving. Not really good for uh, the old behind, as it were. So doing as much as I can to alleviate that and well on a way to a uh, full recovery, which is good because this is the week that I'm gonna be the busiest as far as school goes, because the summer semester is gonna be wrapping up here in a few weeks and I have some big projects on the way. So I'm gonna have my hands full with that and also have another video project that I gotta get out as well. And then I'm gonna be working on school stuff. So I'm gonna be quite the busy beaver for the next couple weeks, but not here on YouTube, sadly. On the plus side, the semester is gonna be over uh, near the end of July and I'll have basically like a month off. So during that time, I'm gonna be keep myself as busy as possible, working on some new videos, video editing projects. Once again, apologies for the lack of videos as of late. School obviously takes priority over that stuff. So I wanna make sure I'm good to go as far as grades go. Once the semester's over, I'll be going a little bit ham on the videos. And I've been working on what type of videos that I wanna put out. One of the top things on the list is new video editing tutorials for my editing channel, because I've been looking to see like when I last uploaded a tutorial, and it's been a little bit, been a couple months, and I wanna get that taken care of and have some videos for you guys to watch. But I also wanna do more than just tutorials for that channel as well. I wanna do also some more like dealing with creator type problems, a la Roberto Blake, that sort of thing. So in addition to learning how to do stuff in like Premiere Pro and things like that, I also wanna delve more into the creator side of things and kind of address some problems there and some stuff that I'm working out in my 13 plus years on the platform. So be on the lookout for that as well. As far as videos for this channel goes, definitely want to bring back Andy before Japandi, thinking of a bunch of different ideas for it, different topics that I wanna discuss. And the main thing that I wanna change about it is the name. Because yesterday I was thinking about what I can make videos of for Andy Before Japandi. And I got to thinking, you know, the name Andy Before Japandi, like I get it. It's, you know, Andy before he goes back to Japan. D. Not really as jazzed about the name as I once was. Once I start making videos again, they're gonna be under the new name, which is gonna be Andy Talks Japandi, which is a very slight change, but uh, it's gonna be the same exact series, just with a slightly different name. And I'm probably gonna go through like a million first takes because I'm gonna call it Andy Talks Navy. But that was kind of like where I got the idea from because I'm not really doing the Andy Talks Navy series anymore. So I figure why not incorporate that into something that I am doing, which is Andy Talks Japandi. So once the summer semester is over, I'm gonna be rolling out some Andy Talks Japandi videos. So be on the lookout for those. And uh, good things are coming, guys. It feels like I've been going under a bit of a dry spell. Being on this platform for as long as I have, 13 plus years, you know, I hear a lot of whispers and stuff about, well, you've been on the platform for 13 years and you still haven't, quote, made it. You know, you still only get a couple of views and maybe like a comment or two. Like, why you still do it? Why you still bother? And the short answer is, because I love making YouTube videos, you know? I just love it. So, you know, I wouldn't have lasted nearly as long if I didn't love what I do. Right now, I'm on the come up. I have a really strong goal in mind and I wanna see it through. For me, you know, that goal is getting back out to Japan, making the videos that I wanna make, as well as going back to school abroad in Japan. 
as it were. So that's what's keeping me going on the platform. And I realized that some of my videos may not be super duper interesting right now because I'm on the come up, but in the future, when things start picking back up again, these are gonna be the interesting videos to see like kind of where I came from, you know, the Andy before joining the Navy, Andy while he was in the Navy in San Diego, then in Yokosuka, then when he got out of the Navy in Michigan, then in Ohio, and currently in North Carolina, and then back to Japan. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me on this journey. It certainly hasn't been easy, to say the least. That said, this is the Andy San, side for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. In today's video, guys, I wanna ask you a question. But before we get into that, I just wanna give you a little quick up -in date on what I've been up to the past couple weeks. Um, as you guys know, it is finals week for me. So I've been working on final papers, final exams, gonna be starting up this coming week. So your boy's been hella busy, as it were. And I just wanted to take some time away from YouTube and most other places to focus on that. And I've also been doing uh, some freelance video projects as well whenever I have time. And uh, just been keeping myself busy, basically. But I wanted to take some time away from YouTube to focus more on finals so I can get that good grade, so I can uh, apply to Japanese University and uh, have a better chance at getting accepted. Once this semester is done, we'll be done at the end of this coming week. I'll be having a month off and I'll be focusing on getting some more videos done for myself as well as for others, doing some more freelance video editing projects. And I've got a bunch of different ideas for new videos, including doing some more uh, video editing tutorials, which I've been rather lax on for the past couple months. Uh, I wanna get back in the saddle as far as that goes. And also, I want to really pump out some videos for my Andy Talks Japandi series, which was formerly known as Andy Before Japandi. But I decided to rebrand it, and uh, we're gonna get kicking back with that series once finals are over in this coming week. And I have a bunch of different ideas as far as questions that I want to answer and put to video. But in today's video, I wanna ask you guys a question. And that question is, what types of questions would you like me to answer in a future Andy Talks Japandi video? Now, like I said, I got a whole bunch of them um, written down. i just been uh, writing down different ideas and stuff as they come to me. As far as videos that I want to make, questions I want to answer, things like that. But I'd also like to hear from you guys as far as what type of burning questions you guys might have about Japan, especially as it comes to someone being stationed out in Japan versus coming over as either study abroad student or an English teacher or what have you. So my experience in Japan is a lot different than most other people, especially most other people on YouTube. So I think it'd be interesting to answer some questions that relate specifically to that. But if you have some general Japan questions, I'm more than willing to answer those as well. Um, just for some context, if you guys don't know who I am, um, my name is Andy. I was stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan, which is in the Kanagawa Prefecture, which is south of Tokyo. And I was stationed there from 2013 to 2015 when I got out of the US Navy, came back to America, all that fun stuff. And looking to come back to Japan to study abroad in Tokyo. And uh, in the meantime, I wanna make some Japan content for you guys. So let me know what type of questions you have in the comments down below in the boopity boops as it relates to um, Japan. And uh, also taking questions for like uh, video editing tutorials as well. So if you have any questions as far as that goes, I'm game for that. Uh, but those will be <laughs> dealt with on my editing channel. So that said guys, this is the Andy San. Not for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording.
Hey gang, Andy here. In today's video, guys, I'm going to be talking about my first semester back since I left school in 2017. So, as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is my grades, or more specifically, my GPA. We'll get into the reason why a little bit later. But this semester uh, is finally over, and my overall GPA is a 3.0. Now, could it have been higher? Of course. But overall, pretty pleased with it. Certainly a lot higher than uh, my other semesters have been, even on my good semesters. And uh, I have two main takeaways from this semester as far as changing learning styles and stuff like that. Not so much the stuff I learned in class, but just kind of like how what I learned about learning, basically. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So the first takeaway, is to do better planning and work on some big projects early. Now, I did have some major projects that I knew about uh, from the very beginning of the semester, and the main reason my grades weren't higher was because I took some major hits from certain projects. And I think that had I started work on those projects earlier, maybe come up with like a rough draft or an outline or a basic concept of what I wanted to do with those projects, then I would have had a much better chance at success with those projects and thus higher grades. So I kind of took the hit on that, but uh, it's a good learning experience and I got a pretty gosh darn good uh, GPA out of it. And the second takeaway is to obviously get some more exercise. Now I know y'all are gonna be in the comments saying, Andy, hit the gym, lose some damn weight, you know, stuff like that, which I appreciate the concern. But as far as like weight loss and stuff like that, I'm going to wait until I get out to Japan just because it's easier. Uh, the food portions are smaller. It's overall healthier food, even the not so healthy stuff. And I'm gonna be doing a lot more walking there than I do here in America. So I'm just gonna wait until I get out to Japan to really focus on weight loss. But in the meantime, since I'm here, I might as well focus a little bit on kind of building my muscles back up because since I got back to the States, I don't do nearly as much walking as I did back when I was out in Japan where I pretty much either walked or bicycled pretty much everywhere. But basically I want to uh, build my walking muscles back up and also kind of give me some kind of physical activity to do to uh, clear up the old head brain and also the physicality as well because as I talked about in previous update videos, I had some problems with my hip slash butt area from sitting too much. If that wasn't a sign, I don't know what is to uh, literally get off my ass and start walking some more. So that's really been helping. Uh, slowly but surely and obviously I'm able to sit down and not scream in agony so uh, it's good for something right so figure just do that get me out of the house doing something because I'm sitting here in my room all day either you know working on freelance projects or homework or whatever isn't exactly good for the old head brain or anywhere else in my body so I gotta get out there get moving but uh, I don't want to be doing running because uh, right now out here in North Carolina and apparently the rest of America, we're going through a massive heat wave right now. So there's been days where it's been, you know, ill-advised to even go out for a walk because of the heat and especially here in the south, uh, the humidity as well. But I do have to prepare myself for Japanese summer, right? So uh, I figure might as well get on it, right? And plus running really hurts my joints. I can't really do like high impact stuff like I used to. And even when I was a lot lighter, uh, it still really hurt my joints. So I don't know what the deal is with that. So I've just been focusing more on kind of low impact activity, you know, just doing some walk-in. And so that's pretty much all I wanted to say about my GPA. Now, the reason that I didn't say my grades and said, say, said my GPA was because currently the college has placed a hold on my account. Now, it's kind of complicated, but I'm gonna give the uh, kind of the basic gist of the reason behind that. And that is uh, the school charged me for out-of-state tuition because I haven't been living in North Carolina for a year. So they treated me as an out-of-state student. I came across this in Michigan, but basically uh, through the GI Bill, there are certain schools that have something called the Yellow Ribbon Program, which basically reduces your out-of-state tuition 
and makes it equivalent to in-state tuition. Since I qualify for the Yellow Ribbon program, the VA basically paid them in-state tuition, but the school charged me out-of-state tuition. And I've gone through like 10 or 12 different departments and people to kind of figure out what the situation is. And basically, I just had to put in an appeal for the outstanding charge. And then um, I'm also in talks with the VSO, the uh, Veteran Services Office, and they're gonna be taking care of that once that appeal has been processed, whether it's successful or not. So it just has to get in the system for the VSO to go in there and be like, hey, this guy's a yellow ribbon student. So, you know, figure that stuff out and then it'll remove my outstanding charge and I'll be able to carry on smartly from there. So bureaucracy, gotta love it, right? <laughs> so right now, uh, it's just a matter of waiting for the system to, to do its thing. So that's pretty much it for the school stuff. In between now and the next semester, is about a one month period. What's your boy, the old Andy San San Modesta, to do? Basically, I'm gonna be focusing on some freelance video editing projects. I have four in the queue that I gotta get to uh, to working on. Uh, so your boy's gonna be busy with that. And in addition to that, I'm also going to be working on my own videos as well. Now, I plan on doing some video editing tutorials on my editing channel because I've been rather lax in updating that channel. I basically took a break during the summer semester to focus on school and stuff like that. And uh, obviously did pretty well. <laughs> but I definitely want to get back to making videos on that channel again. And not just tutorials, I also want to do other videos on that channel as well, like uh, talking about sort of like content creator problems, a la Roberto Blake, maybe going over some equipment stuff, maybe going over uh, like certain editing programs, things like that. Just kind of, you know, building up more of a variety on that channel as opposed to just tutorials. And I'm just, you know, experimenting with a few things, seeing what sticks, might come across the, the next big series. <laughs> so that's the plan moving forward with that channel. Now, as far as this channel goes, um, I definitely want to do more episodes of Andy Talks Japandi, formerly known as Andy Before Japandi, and uh, have some ideas already written down and just been kind of compiling them over the summer semester. And I've also been taking some questions from you guys as far as what I should talk about as it involves Japan and my time there, circa 2013, 2015. Now, as far as the, uh, the whole getting to Japan thing, because I'm sure you guys probably want to know, about that. I owe a little bit of money to the VA. As long as I owe money to the VA, I'm not getting full BAH. And that's a bit of a problem if I'm going overseas where the amount of hours and stuff that I can work is limited. My main goal is to reduce that debt as much as possible. Once the debt is reduced or preferably eliminated, then to really start putting in some money for savings to get out to Japan because I do got to save up a lot for it and I want to make sure that I have full BH when I'm out there so I have a, a fighting chance of living in Tokyo because Tokyo can be pretty expensive but it can also be very cheap if you know where to look and know how to spend your money but I just want to set myself up best way possible so I'm not coming home broke and uh, trying to pick up the pieces from there. Basically the plan is to use as much of my BAH as I can to pay off the smaller debts because the debt that I owe the VA is broken up into three chunks. I wanna pay off the two smaller chunks and then from there, just kind of let what uh, I agreed upon to be taken out from my BH to pay off the debt over time. So rather than it taking 12 months, it'll take like maybe six or eight. And so from there, I'll be able to put away that BH to save up for my trip to Japan. And the main things that I'm using that money to save up for is uh, plane ticket money. I gotta save up for a laptop, because as much as I love the chill box, and it's been serving me well these past four, going on five years, uh, it's not exactly the most portable, practical thing when uh, you're backpacking to Tokyo. So I gotta get myself something a bit more mobile. And uh, I also gotta get myself a camera, because I sold all my cameras uh, last year 
And uh, the next thing is most important, which is living expenses money until the GI Bill kicks in overseas. So those are the main things I'm gonna be saving up for. Um, ideally, as far as like bare minimum amount of money that I want, I'm shooting for about $3,000 USD. That seems to be a pretty good chunk of money to get started out there. And then once GI Bill kicks in and I do some freelance projects and all this other stuff, then it'll just kind of go from there. Um, as far as like, you know, potential semester or anything like that, on my return to Japan. Grade wise, I could easily apply for the spring semester, but as far as financially, uh, it would be in my best interest to apply for the summer semester. There's a couple reasons for that. One, it gives me a little bit more time to save up. And two, there are certain universities that require you to spend some time in a dorm. Um, there might be a way for me to get out of it because I'm you know, much older than most of the people that go out there. And I'm also a prior service veteran who's lived in Japan before. So there's a possibility of me being able to, to bypass that. But in the event that I can't, the summer semester is the shortest, so I'll end up spending the least amount of money on the dorms, which can get pretty pricey. I, I've been looking up the prices for uh, for dorms and stuff like that. I mean, they're in like ideal parts of Tokyo and they're very westernized, so obviously you get what you pay for. But uh, if you don't exactly have the scratch for that, uh, it's a little, a little daunting. So I figure best bet would be to go in the summer so I don't have to spend as much on the dorms. And then once summer semester's over in the fall, I can move to uh, more cheaper accommodations. So that's the plan moving forward, the ja plan, as it were. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy San. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And welcome to my August 2019 update video for, you guessed it, August 2019. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the, well, lack of videos as of late. Now I know I promised you guys I was gonna make some more videos now that I'm on summer break for the next couple weeks or so before the fall semester starts up at the uh, end of this month. And there's been two things that have been kind of keeping me from doing that. And one of them is my physical health. Um, as you guys know, from last month's update video, I'm going through some hip slash butt issues, uh, some inflammation, things like that. Nothing like too super serious, but I mean, serious enough to where <laughs> it's, you know, really hard for me to, to sit down, or at least it was. So I've been mostly focusing on my physical health for these past few weeks, trying to get this uh, issue taken care of. And it's mostly just taking anti-inflammatories, like uh, I t I'm taking Aleve, which is like Napraxin, I guess is the official name for it. Uh, I've been icing the effective area. In fact, I got an ice pack on it right now <laughs> as I'm recording this video. And I've been doing that, uh, doing some stretching, and I've also been doing a lot more walking outside. I've noticed that's really um, significantly affected it for the better. Now, there was times where I could only walk like maybe a mile or less, and then it would start acting up and I'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm probably get my ass home. <laughs> basically. And uh, there'd be other times where I could uh, walk my full uh, little circuit that I got going for me and uh, come home feeling pretty good about myself. All hot and sweaty, but feeling good. And I noticed it's really been uh, positively affecting my mental health as well. So that's uh, another major plus. And uh, the way things are going, man, uh, I think this will be all completely taken care of within about a week or two, the way things are going. And then the second issue that I've been running across is involving school. Now, uh, it's kind of a complicated issue because there's a lot of moving parts involved and I don't wanna bog this whole video down just talking about that, but the basic gist is that uh, the school that I'm currently going to charged me out-of-state tuition while the GI Bill only covered for in-state tuition. So there's been a lot of talks between myself, the VA, at my school, and other 
various departments. I've gone through probably like 15 or 20 different people at this point just to get a straight answer out of somebody. And I've been like turning in forms and finding out that's the wrong form. You have to actually use this form and no, this doesn't work. And it's just been a whole big runaround and it's been really frustrating to be honest because the thing is I qualify for the yellow ribbon program. Basically, uh, some states do it, not all states, but a lot of states do. And basically what it is, is that if you're an out-of-state student, if you qualify for the Yellow Ribbon Program, the Yellow Ribbon Program will match the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition. So big VA thought that I was getting charged for in-state tuition because I qualified for the Yellow Ribbon Program, but the VA at my school didn't sign me up for the Yellow Ribbon Program. So I was getting charged for out-of-state tuition. So I've been going back and forth between different departments to kind of figure out how to resolve this issue. I'm gonna be going in uh, this week to hopefully, hopefully get a straight answer out of somebody and get this thing taken care of. Because if I don't, then not only will I not be able to go to class this, uh, this coming fall semester, I won't be able to use my grades to uh, apply out to Japan because they'll be locked up because I'll have an outstanding balance of tad south of $2,000. Definitely looking to get this issue resolved and hopefully it'll get resolved this week and won't have to worry about it and be able to carry on smartly from here. And so despite all these little roadblocks, I did record uh, two new episodes of Andy Talks Japandi, which is my renamed series, formerly known as Andy Before Japandi. I uh, decided on the rename because uh, I like that name a lot better and it kind of fits with what I want to do moving forward to where like I want to continue the series even while I'm out in Japan. So that way it's not just me going out in Japan doing stuff. I'm also kind of sitting down in my little apartment or whatever, just kind of talking about some stuff. So, you know, it's a nice series. I really enjoy making it and I want to continue making it more. And then as far as editing tutorials go, I have plenty of ideas for those. Um, just a matter of picking which one I want to do. And I got a couple good ones and I want to make sure that they're really well put together. I'm also thinking about doing some other different types of content for my editing channel. In addition to tutorials, I also want to do more stuff kind of like Roberto Blake, that sort of thing where kind of talking about creator type problems, doing some other stuff beyond tutorials, maybe talking about like how to buy your first camera or do you even need a camera to record on YouTube these days? You know, just talking about some practical advice that I've learned over the years being a YouTuber. Now I'm, I'm nobody super big and famous, but uh, I've been on YouTube for well over 13 years at this point. I've learned my fair share uh, being on the platform for as long as I have, and I want to share that knowledge with you guys. And now getting into the getting back to Japan type stuff, because there's not really a whole lot of personal life stuff to talk about because we already kind of talked about that before. So I'm just gonna dedicate this segment to the getting back to Japan status type dealio. So as you guys know, uh, the summer semester was a huge success. Uh, there's some points that could have been a little better. I could have planned out assignments a little better, but overall the results speak for themselves. I got a 3.0 GPA, which is the highest I've gotten uh, in quite some time. I don't think I've gotten that GPA that high since like high school, to be honest with you. Definitely really proud, really pleased with the results. That's just one major step to me returning back to Japan. But the major step that we have to deal with now is, well, for one, maintaining the GPA. I can't just rest on my laurels here. Um, and also uh, to save up for my return to Japan. So um, I, there's four big ticket items that I gotta worry about for my return to Japan. One is the plane ticket, obviously. <laughs> That's one of the more uh, costly expenses, but thankfully, I have a, a buddy of mine, friend of the show, who uh, is gonna help me out with that, give me some cheap plane tickets. Really gotta thank you so much for that. And then the second thing is a laptop, because as much as I love the good old chill box, and it served me well these past four plus years since I made it, but it's 
not really a practical thing to carry around with me out to Japan, especially if I'm going to be like changing dorms and stuff like that. You know, I need something a bit more mobile. So I'm going to be saving up for a good laptop looking around the thousand dollar, maybe like twelve hundred at the most kind of range of laptops. Just something that's really good enough to render a lot of good stuff on uh, on the Adobe suite. And uh, you know, one that's not gonna crap out on me in the year, hopefully. <laughs> and the third thing is gonna be a new camera because I sold all of my uh, camera equipment and everything uh, this last year uh, during Christmas time. Uh, to cover expenses for my car and to later buy a new one, <laughs> which I didn't know at the time I'd, I would need that money for, but uh, it is what it is, I guess, right? So I ended up selling uh, all my camera gear, all that stuff. I don't really have any cameras anymore, aside from like my cell phone, which I guess could be good in a pinch, but I want like a camera camera, basically. So the one I'm gonna be uh, looking to get is the Canon M50. Uh, really liking the footage that's coming from it. Been watching a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot of different reviews. Uh, shout out to the Everyday Dad, because if he can figure it out, you can figure it out. <laughs> so, been really watching his stuff a lot lately too. Um, it's really been a big factor in my decision to um, get a uh, Canon M50. I'd really prefer the Sony 6400, but right now I just don't have the money for something like that. It may be uh, a later purchase, but. Uh, to get me uh, in the door, I think we'll stick with uh, the Canon M50. And so the fourth and final thing that I need to save up for is the main nest egg that I'm gonna be living off of until the GI Bill starts kicking in. So the thing is with Japan, as far as expenses and stuff like that goes, um, the initial expenses are what usually throw a lot of people off. And you gotta save up a lot of money to get yourself established. But once you're established, and you got a place locked down and you start kind of getting yourself into the groove of things, then generally not so bad. But uh, I got to save up a pretty solid nest egg until GI Bill starts kicking in and you know, I do some more freelance work and some other things to kind of keep that going so I'm not completely living off the nest egg and I can just use it for emergency funds to, if I need to go back home for whatever reason, I got the plane ticket money, or if I need to buy something, I got the money for it. It's always good to have money in savings, kids. Definitely save up. Thinking about ballpark wise, probably shooting for like three or $5,000. Anything more than that would be awesome, but at the very least, $3,000 in savings. So yeah, that's uh, basically all I got for this month. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sun. Signing for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to my August 2019 update video, part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. And today, I decided to do a raw vlog because uh, I know you guys get a little sick and tired of me just always in my room vlogging about stuff. So I just wanted to get out and uh, give you some new scenery to look at them trees <laughs> it ain't much but it's something so yeah here at uh, good old escuela here uh here in north carolina um got a class here in a few minutes but i got a little speck of time so i figured just uh pump out a little raw vlog for y'all to let you guys know what's been going on with the old andy sand samadishta so yeah let's just jump into the youtube stuff so First up, I do want to apologize for the lack of videos that I promised over summer break. Um, there's been two main reasons for that. One of them is my physical health. So as you guys know, I've been going through some hip issues. Uh, it's been making it hard to literally sit down and work on stuff. And of the time that you know everything was good, I devoted most of that to freelance work so I can get paid, get fed, all that fun stuff. Um, so it's been kind of hard to, to pump out the vids like I wanted to. Um, but I'm going to be shifting my focus more towards um, some other stuff, which we'll talk about here in a sec. Um, but the second thing that's been inhibiting me is um, just the environment. And, you know, I like to have a nice, clean 
recording environment most of the time um, when I'm doing stuff, especially tutorials. Um, I really want to have the one you guys like hearing dogs and stuff barking in the background or you know, video game music or whatever going on in the background or people talking or whatever the case. You know, just nice, clean audio so you guys can hear me and uh, carry on with your day smartly. So, yeah, uh, it's been kind of hard getting that environment lately. So, you know, and plus, you know, I, I like to uh, go to bed a bit earlier. So it's, it's harder to, like, stay up and have, like, the same energy um, at, like, midnight or whatever when I'm usually winding down for the night. You know, I don't want to come on being all like, hey, guys, it's Andy here. I'm so freaking tired. You know, I don't want to be doing that to you guys. So I have, I have to have some energy, right? Um, so it's been kind of hard, like, between those two things, like, pumping out vids like I wanted to. Um, but that being said, and I don't want to promise anything because I think I might jinx myself if I do that. But I do want to work on some more, you know, tutorials and stuff. I've been feeling really bullish on tutorials lately. And, you know, if we're talking strictly from an ad revenue perspective... They provide the uh, the far lion's share of my ad revenue. And as much as I love my personal channel, my personal content, I still want to make that as well. But I really want to shift my focus more towards um, tutorials because it's just shorter, easier to digest type content. And, you know, at the end of the day, as Tiku Sam would say, at the end of the day, guys, <laughs> I do get paid a little bit more for those tutorials. So... Kind of is what it is, and I uh, want to get that information out to you guys. So, got a bunch of ideas written down for future tutorials. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the right time, the clean recording environment to record them. So, and I do want to say, um, before we move on, as far as the hip issue and stuff like that goes, which I guess we could use that to segue into the personal life stuff, because today's a raw vlog baby so i'm kind of all over the place but i guess we'll just segue into personal life stuff so yeah um hip issue is feeling pretty good um muscles are just kind of tight right now so it's just a matter of you know keep things loosey-goosey um doing like some walking and stretches and all that kind of stuff and uh feeling pretty good for the most part so it's just a matter of having a better work-life balance, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, hoping to crank out some vids for y'all soon. Not promising, I think, because last time I did that, I uh, jinxed myself. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, as far as school goes, well, I'm here, baby. We out here. And uh, got a class here in a few minutes. Um, things have been going pretty good so far. And... Uh, yeah, feeling really good about this semester. So um, last semester I was focused on getting a really good GPA so I can uh, use that to apply to schools out in Tokyo, get that study abroad and stuff like that going. And I did that. Got 3.0, feeling pretty damn good about that, if I do say so myself. And uh, yeah, um, this semester I want to keep that going. You know, maybe get a little bit higher, but I'm not like solely focused on that like I was last semester. Um, bah, brain fart, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this semester is going to be mostly focusing on, you know, obviously maintaining, if not exceeding that GPA as well as, uh, saving up. And I hope that didn't catch on the audio cause I don't want to get copyright flagged. Um, but in any event, yeah, saving up is going to be the main goal for this semester as well as next. Um, cause you know, it's kind of hard to get out of Japan if you don't have the plane ticket money, right? <laughs> Not to mention living expenses until the GI bill kicks in. So speaking of which, uh, I guess we'll segue over to the getting to Japan status. Um, pretty much same as it ever was just continuing to, to work, save up, do what I can. Um, you know, I just started school this week, so you know, I don't really have any GI Bill money to like put away in savings, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to, you know, really save up for it. Um, I am using some of my freelance money, but that's mostly going towards living expenses as well as, um, you know, paying off bills and things like that. So, yeah, 
that's kind of where we're at with with that. Not expecting to really see some big strides in saving up for Japan until maybe a month or so later. So I get a little bit of uh, a little bit of that GI Bill money, put it away, and uh, carry on from there. So. Yeah, and I think that's another reason why I want to do more tutorials as well to get my uh, my AdSense rev up and uh, use that to save up as well. So because I used uh, my last check to renew my website, which uh, I've been trying to keep on the up and up, <laughs> but it's just so much harder to do nowadays. Um, just kind of is what it is. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say in this little be my date video. So with that said, guys, it's the Andy Sign. Sign for now. As always, see you next time. It's later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to a reaction video to my very first vlog. I can't believe it's been over 11 years. I was originally going to do this yesterday, but stuff came up. But in any event, we're doing it today. It's just amazing just to see how far I've come, just technology wise, personality wise. A lot can happen in 11 years. So, with that said, let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're here at my very first vlog, vlog one. Now, keep in mind, this video was in 480p, which was, at the time, the highest resolution that you could, YouTube could do. And uh, yeah, it's all pillar boxed and stuff like that. So that said, let's go back in time, 11 years, back to Salina, Ohio, where I was from. This is actually in front of uh, my old house, too. Like, my parents don't even live there anymore. So it's just kind of crazy to look back at that, too. Guess what, kids? Andy san has got his own camera now. So that means <laughs> he can finally vlog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good times. Good times, indeed. Yeah, that original Guess What Kids was a sly Tokyo Kuni reference because he referenced that in one of his videos that was at the time pretty new. Uh, I forget exactly which one it was, but I just remember him saying, Guess What Kids? Yeah, even back then, from the very beginning, making Tokyo Kuni references. <laughs> and look at me with my old glasses, too. This was before I joined the Navy. This was way before I joined the Navy. So I had my old. Uh, tint glasses so they would like tint in the sun and stuff they still have that sort of frame but i don't have those glasses anymore they're probably lost in storage somewhere who knows so got these from the uh from the navy from back in the day so yeah this is my first official vlog yes i've done some uh, vlogging in the past but that was with you know an inferior setup now i have my own camera yeah, so even though I said this is my first vlog, it's not my first video. Uh, my original videos were uh, stuff that I ripped from like video CDs. This is like before DVDs and stuff that my friends took of their karate practices, tournaments, things like that. And there's a couple moments where I basically cut up like some highlights and stuff of stuff they would always talk about. Like, oh my God, I can't remember. You know, do you remember that time Ben kicked that dude in the face? And then we'd have to like break out the video CD and it's like three or five minutes in. We had to like fast forward it and all this other stuff. So I decided to just kind of cut up that little clip and just put it up on YouTube. So if we ever wanted to watch it or something, we could. And that clip is now 13 years old. So <laughs> hashtag fuck them old. But yeah, I did that. I uh, did a couple more highlight clips, uh, recorded my friend Ben and his uh, band at the time doing uh, practice and stuff like that out of their garage. And then did some like voiceover type stuff, which didn't really go anywhere. But this one was my actual first for realsies vlog with my own camera. Because before I had to like borrow my friend's camera. And I think I'll talk about that here in this video too. Which is a uh, Sanyo Zacti CG6. You know, kind of a starter entry model or budget, cheapo, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, it's it's just really great for the money. I mean, really great for the money. I can't even talk like that anymore. Uh, that's what 11 years does to you. Yeah, aside from it being really great for the money, it was at the time one of the uh, trendy types of cameras. So let me take you all back to the very beginnings of YouTube. So, you know, before DSLRs and you know, Canon ADDs and all this other stuff became the rage as far as YouTube equipment goes. Um, we had two main types of cameras. You had your flip cams and you had your Sanyo Zactis. The flip cam, despite the name, didn't have a flip out screen. The flip came from the little flip up USB dongle that you just 
you know, attached to your computer and that's how you transfer files. Uh, the CNU Zacti was the one that had the flip out screen and you could like see yourself and it was like a pistol grip type camera. I don't think they've really made too many of those since the Zacti line died out a long time ago. But it was actually a really comfortable camera. You know, if it had a, a wider angle lens, it would probably be uh, still useful even today. You know, it just has, if anything, just kind of an entry model type camera to get onto the YouTube Zors and stuff like that. But like I said in this video, the one I got was on the, uh, the lower end of things. Uh, I got it off of eBay. I uh, got it pretty cheap too. Uh, because the tripod mount on the bottom was stripped, so I couldn't like attach it to a gorilla pod or any of that other stuff at the time. In fact, I did a lot of creative things to get the camera to stand up. <laughs> Usually, I put it in like really big coffee cups because if I put it in like a, a lighter cup or something like that, it would just tip over because of the top heaviness. But if I got a really like heavy coffee cup or something like that, then it would be a little bit more balanced. And that's that was my tripod. So. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So let's continue. I just wanted a camera with a flip out screen because uh, I've operated on uh, my friend Ariopolis's camera and uh, his is just like a basic like snapshot camera, like, you know, Kodak or something. So. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what his camera was. It might've been like a Kodak or a very low end Canon. I'm not sure. <laughs> History has not recorded the camera camera name. I wanted something with a flip out screen because I always found it tedious to kind of, you know, go like this and then uh, 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 uh. Jesus, I was really into like the uncomfortable close-ups back in the day, wasn't I? But I guess since the, the, the lens wasn't as wide angle, even if I had my hand all the way out, that was kind of the, the main disadvantage of this particular camera. Because it was such a shorter angle lens, even if I had my arm like fully stretched out, it would still look like I was holding the camera like right up to my face. And so my arm would get constantly tired from like having it overextended for long periods of time while I'm vlogging and still trying to like sound natural and hey, I'm vlogging. And meanwhile, my arm's like <laughs> uncontrollably shaking because I have it fully extended for 10, 15 minutes at a time. That's if I get it on the first take too. To just kind of see, you know, what's going on. So I decided to get this little puppy off of eBay for about 122 bucks. Normal retail, it sells for about 200. And uh, Walmart, they had it a uh, clearance to like 133. So even with shipping and all that shit, which collectively added up to 120, I think it was 22 or 27, I don't quite remember. You know, I saved like 12 bucks. So I mean, bitchin'. But uh, the big drawback with- <laughs> That's funny, the whole bitchin' thing. Uh, like the one comment that's still in this video, actually, uh, Stefan Lowe, um, he was actually one of the guys that really didn't like uh, my younger brother. So he found out that I was making a YouTube channel and you, you'll see this within like the first couple of vlogs as well. Like he leaves little comments and digs and shit at me, but it's not really at me in particular. It's just because of my younger brother. He didn't really like him too much. So it's just transference. And sadly, Stefan Lowe passed away back in... I want to say like 2013, 2014. I don't know of what, but uh, yeah. This camera is that the uh, tripod mount is stripped. Yeah, I remember Which that. isn't really that big of a deal right now. And I think honestly, later on, I could get it repaired for like next to nothing. And uh, the only other like quote unquote problem is that it comes with a 512 memory card, which means. Okay. I want you to keep this in mind. This was 2008. What I mean by 512 is not 512 gigabytes, 512 megabytes. So half a gig, half of one gigabyte. Just, just letting you all know, because that was the kind of shit we had to go through back in the day. Even with standard definition video, I could probably record maybe the half hour, 45 minutes worth of, of stuff. And then I'd have to like dump it on my computer and go from there. And also keep in mind that my first couple vlogs up to like vlog four um, were completely unedited. So there was no cuts or anything like that. I literally just hit record and go. Like YouTube itself didn't have like a on-site editor to like trim out the beginnings and ends or any of that stuff. It was all, it was all you baby. So, and I didn't have any video editing software at the time. And I know you might be asking, well, Andy, what about those uh, those earlier vids before that? You know, you 
you did do some like cuts and stuff like that and that was because I was using something called Total Video Converter which had a compilation feature so it's like very primitive form of editing I basically like had to memorize the time codes of where I wanted to cut so I would like memorize okay from this time code to this time code is one clip and then just kind of like wait until the beginning of the next clip and then the end of the next clip and just keep on doing that from there and that got hella tedious dude but uh, I was able to make some very primitively edited videos doing it that way as far as like true editing software um, I got Sony Vegas uh, around vlog four. So that's when I actually started doing some editing. But yeah, for the first like three vlogs, completely uncut, one take. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it kind of shows in some instances, but you know, it is what it is. It means I can only hold about 20 minutes of, you know, video footage on this thing. Oh, 20 minutes? My Which bad. isn't so bad. I mean, that's, you know, perfect size for vlogging. But uh, if I wanted to do something more, like maybe capture some footage and then later on edit it, and just kind of like compile everything, then we'd have a bit of a problem. So I plan on, not anytime soon, but you know, in the future, to uh, purchase a uh, bigger memory card, obviously. This thing is SDHC compatible, so I can go up to like four, maybe in like 16 gig, no Woo! problem. 16 gig, baby, ow! <laughs> Which I think was like the high end of no, the, the actual high end of SDHC is 32, but I don't, th I don't even think they made those cards that high capacity at the time. And if they did, they were like hundreds of dollars. The cost of these, the higher capacity SD cards was astounding back in the day. Now you can get like a 512 for like 50 bucks or some shit like that, I don't know. So I'm pretty confident about this camera and uh, the future that, you know, it will bring me. Because when I bought this camera, my uh, parents were obviously a little pissed because right, right now I'm saving up for a car. Uh, because yeah. my old one broke down in, I think it was July. You'll have to read my blog to be sure. You can locate my blog at uh, www.theandyson.com. Oh, uh, Jesus. You can, look, you can locate my blog at www. <laughs> oh, man, this brings back a lot of memories. So, yeah, at the time, I was saving up for a car because my other one had broke down. I was still working at Walmart at the time, and I was using my brother's moped to get me back and forth. It was kind of nice to, like, ride the moped late at night, you know, as long as it wasn't raining or something like that. You know, it was kind of peaceful. Yeah, I'd much prefer a car, <laughs> to be honest. And yeah, my parents were kind of pissed that I spent all that money on a camera. They didn't really recognize what the camera would bring as far as like what I would do with it because like keep in mind again this is 2008 you know way before YouTube hit the mainstream back in I'd say from 2010 to 2012 is when YouTube became mainstream so this is way before any of that stuff way before like making money online was really that well known and of the ones who did it you know they were considered like the lucky ones and the fortunate ones and they lucked into some opportunity and somehow they're making money hand over fist somehow meanwhile nowadays it's actually become a lot more commonplace to to make money online yeah a lot has changed in 11 years and you'll probably hear some uh just some kind of negative talk about my parents in this video so yeah keep in mind this was 11 years ago uh, I was a lot younger, had a way different mindset. I was 22 at the time, 33 now, going on 34 at the end of this year. So a lot's changed. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, it, the truck broke down and I've been uh, looking for a new vehicle ever since. Right now I have about 250, maybe 240 uh, saved up for right now. Oh yeah, that's right. I totally forgot. Okay, so I got like an old, old like Ford truck. Like it was called a Ford Ranger, but I think it was before they made the Ranger like a smaller truck. So it was more like the bigger Ford trucks. And it was like from 77 or some shit like that. It was an old ass like farm truck, I guess. Um, got it for a couple hundred bucks. Something broke on it. I think it was like the shaft or some shit like that. And I didn't have the money to replace it or to repair it. So I had to find money to replace it because the truck was so old, finding the parts and then the labor and all that kind of stuff. At the time, it just made more sense to buy another vehicle. So that's what I was saving up for. 
And my parents are a little pissed because it's the beginning of September and I only have 250 bucks saved up. Now granted, I get paid this uh, coming Thursday, but still they're really quite pissed that, you know, I'm splurging all my money, you know, buying cameras and shit. But they don't realize the potential that a camera can bring me. I mean, look at, you know, Tay Zonday, freaking Chocolate Rain dude. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, and I kind of talked about this earlier. Um, again, like online successes weren't really as well known. Of the ones that were well known, they were kind of considered a novelty. And I think I, you know, I name dropped Tay Zonday, Chocolate Rain, which was actually pretty relevant at the time, but now it's just like, that's a blast from the past. But yeah, they were kind of mad about it. So I just kind of told them, you know, originally, which is true, uh, originally, I bought the camera to uh, take pictures of stuff off of eBay. I think I might explain it in this video, but I'm not sure, so I'll just explain it here. So I originally bought the camera to take pictures of stuff that I would sell on eBay, most notably like my old textbooks from ITT Tech and Urbana, which got me like fucking nothing, but mm, <laughs> hindsight being what it is. I was gonna use it to take pictures of stuff to sell on eBay, and then in the meantime, I would also use it to vlog. I was more into blogging, and I just wanted to do vlogging on the side to see if I'd like it and see if I'd want to maybe incorporate it into my blog posts rather than make it its own separate thing because I didn't know if I'd like it, or if I'd be any good at it. So I just kind of used this as a little experiment. And uh, obviously, <laughs> 11 years later, it turned out pretty good, right? But uh, that's just kind of the mindset I was in at the time. So just keep that in mind. He had, you know, camera, a sheet, microphone, and a piano. And he recorded Chocolate Rain, which got, you know, millions of views on YouTube. And got him, you know, gigs on like the Jimmy Kimmel show. And, you know, other things like that. Now, I don't plan on recording, you know, anything like Chocolate Rain or anything like that. But I do plan on selling some of my items on eBay. Yep. You know, just so that way I can save up for my vehicle faster than just simply working all the time. And to be honest, I don't really like my job at Walmart that much. It's, Foreshadowing. Uh, it's very <laughs> just monotonous. And uh, I mean, it's a very easy job. It's not really physically demanding or anything like that, which is good because, you know, I'm not that very physical of a person. But it's just, it's the same thing day in, day out. You get. You know, the same customers wanting the same things, talking about the same stuff. And it's just, it's really boring. You know, I want, you know, something a little more, I don't know, intellectually stimulating, which is why I have applied at Bowling Green State University. Just wanted to give you all a little heads up before I get into this whole thing, because it does, it does get into some kind of cringy territory, so. A little bit of context. This was in 2008. I had gotten kicked out of Urbana University in Urbana, Ohio at the end of the spring semester. So like May 2007. So this is about a year and a half or so later. And I've been trying to like get back into college because I had this like real need to meet up with my friends as far as like get on their level and, you know, get that college degree and move on to whatever else. I don't know if I was thinking about moving to Japan at this time. It might have came a little later. I'm not sure. I plan on majoring in uh, Asian studies oh, Jesus. with an emphasis on Japanese. Now, this program is a three-year program, even though it's a bachelor's degree, which is, you know, a four-year program. But it's done within three years, which will save me a shit ton in the long run. That's true. Now, I also plan on a dual minoring in a management information systems and creative writing. I wanted to uh, dual minor. Jesus, I was really ambitious back in the day. <laughs> like my heart was in the right place, but my priorities, not so much. So I also was thinking of taking on a little too much, you know, like if I were to major in like management information systems or minor in creative writing or Asian studies or something like that. I know for a lot of courses, you can take languages because I think that's part of the electives. Like you have to study a language for at least two semesters. Usually I was really into Japan stuff. Still am. I think <laughs> experience has taught me to do things a little bit differently. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little cringy to hear the dual minoring in Japanese. <laughs> Oh boy, let's continue. 
in a management inf information systems and creative writing because with management information systems, I can utilize my old credits from ITT Tech. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And uh, actually do something with them because if I just, you know, majored in Asian studies and that was it, then all my old credits from ITT Tech would just, you know, go to waste. So, like, I kind of had my head in the right place, too. I don't know if those credits from ITT Tech are any good anymore. Not because uh, IT Tech has since gone bankrupt, so that should have been a, a sign. But uh, I went from uh, 2004 to 2006 before I transferred over to Urbana University. I did learn a, a good deal from ITT Tech, but just the way everything was structured just wasn't that good. I think my main point of contention was their online classes, which even though now I'm taking online classes and I love it, back in the day, it wasn't really as well structured and taking online classes was a very new thing. Like we didn't do any of this kind of stuff in high school or any other stuff, so I had no idea <laughs> how to deal with it. And there was very little communication between myself and the instructors. If I needed a question or something answered, it was very difficult to get a hold of an instructor because a lot of times they would either be in a different time zone or I would be busy working. If they're not around to respond to a simple question or something like that, I'm like, fuck, I gotta go to work at McDonald's, dude. I ain't got time to wait around. And then they'd be like, well, the assignment's due, where are you at? Again, my mindset was different. I wasn't really good at communicating with people. I just kind of expected them to kind of do everything and me just kind of get pushed along in the system which works for uh, K through 12, but not so much once you get to college. Cause all that motivation comes from you. So it's a little little public service announcement from the Andy San. And besides, I have, I think around 26 or 27 credit hours. So Damn. I figure, you know, what the hey? They're just kind of sitting around doing nothing. Let's, you know, actually use them. Damn, I wonder if I could still use them. I know I said this earlier, but I wonder, like, I think since it's been over 10 years, hell, going on 15 years to this point, I don't know if they're still usable, but I wonder. And uh, besides, I think I have enough, you know, for a minor in management information systems anyway. I may have to take, like, a class or two, but that's about it. Now. Okay, so now I remember. So, sorry I keep pausing. It's just, like, so much stuff that I'm, like, re-remembering. Uh, so the reason that I wanted to minor in management information systems was because I had already developed enough credits from ITT Tech to just kind of get the minor by default. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Versus if I were to major in it, then I have to continue to take more classes in it and all this other stuff. So basically the management information systems minor would just be a gimme. I would work on the Asian studies, Japanese thing, and then uh, creative writing as well. Oh, for creative writing, okay. it's, it's a little bit more obvious why I'm picking that. It's because I want to uh, expand and uh, have my blog grow. Because I feel right now that my writing just isn't where, you know, I want it to be. I mean, it's getting better, but not quite as good as I think it can be. Yeah, just a quick little thing. So just keep in mind, it's 2008. I just started like really doing YouTube. Uh, I mean, obviously it's my first vlog and I was more focused on my blog than it was like making videos and stuff. So this is kind of fun to, to look back in hindsight. <laughs> Cause I mean, I've looked at some of my old, you know, my old posts and uh, some of the writing I did back when I was at Urbana University. And it's just like, I, I can do so much better. I mean, I've done a lot of great things when I was in college. I mean, so, you know, let's just try to go back. Even though, yes, I owe Urbana University a ton of money, but, you know, my mom insisted that, you know, I apply somewhere else and see what happens. I mean, worst case scenario, I'm just out 40 bucks for the uh, application fee, and that's about it. So I decided, oh, what the hell, let's go for it. And I applied. They got my application fee, and uh, because my GPA was so low coming out of both high school and ITT Tech, they uh, said I wasn't accepted, but they gave me a chance to appeal it because my GPA was kind of like borderline. I think their uh, minimum requirement GPA is uh, 2.5, but mine was like 2.33 or like 2.0 or something like that. So it was close but not quite up to their standards. So I was given the chance to appeal it, obviously did. I sent in the appeal letter about a week or so ago, and uh, I haven't heard back from them yet, <laughs> but 
I called them, not today, but uh, the other day, and they said that normally, since I applied for the spring semester, which is the beginning of, Jul of a January, I almost said July, <laughs> you know, it takes a little bit longer to process everything, which, I mean, I can understand, but also, in the same sense, I want to know if I'm going to college or not. So, I mean, I want to, uh, I don't want to go out and buy a bunch of things and then have them come back saying, you know, Andy, you're not accepted because of blah, 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 blah. Like, oh shit, I bought a whole bunch of stuff for my dorm and I can't use it. Fuck. <laughs> so, I wanted to make sure as soon as possible and whether or not I'm accepted at Bowling Green. And if I am, then, you know, I won't immediately go out and buy things, but just kind of like one at a time, because I still have a lot of old things from Urbana that I can still use, like my uh, sheets and things like that, which honestly, when I went to Urbana, that was the most expensive thing to buy. So uh, with the sheets, uh, this is for people who don't know. So the sheets for the dorms, uh, the beds are uh, like twin size, but they're like twin size Excel. So they're a little bit longer than a normal twin size. So you have to get like special sheets, which usually cost more than if you were to get like regular twins or even full size or whatever. So yeah, I've got that covered. Got the trash can covered. I've still got like a shit ton of liners left from uh, my one of my old roommates. He, he uh, my first roommate at Urbana left, I think only like not even a month into it. And uh, he left a lot of stuff, like some of his posters and uh, trash liners, which, you know, thank God, because I had no freaking money. Ah, shoot, I forget his name. I think it began with a D, like Derek or Darren or Aaron or something like that. My first roommate, he was actually pretty chill. I liked him, even though he's like a sports dude. He was pretty chill. Oh, we're almost at the end of the vlog. But anyway, uh, real quick. So my first roommate at Urbana, he got on through a soccer scholarship, uh, football for my non-Americans out there. But he got on through that scholarship. I don't know if it was half ride or full ride, but he only lasted uh, a few weeks like maybe two or three weeks and then he left. I think within like a couple days, my uh, second roommate, Matt, I remember him, came in. I don't know, man, I just, I didn't really like him as much. I mean, he was, he was kind of quiet, but he was also loud at the same time. If that makes any sense. Like he wouldn't like come up and talk to me or anything like that. He just kind of kept himself. But like, you know, he would have friends over, it's just people I didn't know, and sometimes he'd have his girl over, and you know, I didn't have the money to just like kind of stay at a hotel or whatever while he was, you know, doing his thing. So I just kind of sat there, either on the computer, or trying to sleep or whatever. The thing I remember most about him, aside from all that stuff, was his phone. Yeah, so his phone would vibrate, and he would always keep it by this little pile of change he'd have on his desk. So it wouldn't just like vibrate and you hear like the zzz, zzz, you know, that whole thing. Like the change and shit would rattle and like the vibration was so loud. It wasn't like the little ones you see from these smartphones. You know, zzz, zzz. You know it, was, it was like, <laughs> I always like <laughs> had this running joke in my head about saying, oh, Matt's vibrator's going off. <laughs> Because it'd be so fucking loud because the vibration was so loud and then all the change moving and shit with it, it just kind of amplified it and I'd just be like, Jesus Christ. Like the vibration was louder than his ringtone. Like his ringtone would be just weak little like -da -da -da. Meanwhile his phone would be like <laughs> and like all this change and shit rattling and a little da -da -da -da. <laughs> whatever the fuck his ringtone was at the time. Maybe it was a beep or something, but whatever. So we only got a couple seconds left of the vlog, so let's power through. So, I mean, that, that saved me a lot. And I hardly ever used them when I was in college. I mean, it's mostly my new roommate that, you know, used the trash. I mean, I was very, I, I like to think, you know, I was very efficient with my trash. And plus, you know, I didn't really have a lot, so that kind of contributes to it too. Now, I see that we're approaching the uh, 10 minute limit for YouTube, so I'm going to have to stop here. And uh, let's just uh, sign off real quick. Okay, this is the Andy San. Hoping that you guys all have a good day, and I look forward to uh, seeing you all in the future. Bye now. So yeah, that was my very first vlog from way back in September of 2008, 11 years ago, as of 
yesterday. But uh, yeah, that was such a nostalgia trip, man, to see uh, not just my old house back in Salina, Ohio, well, the garage part of it anyway, uh, to see like my old glasses with the tint lenses and my old camera um, just brought a lot of the uh, the nostalgia, the old natsukashi, as the Japanese would say. A lot of things were different back then, and including the outro. <laughs> I didn't have an outro. I was just like looking at the camera and noticed that I was approaching like the 10 minute thing. And because I didn't have any way to cut the video, I had to like cut it manually, just like stop recording. <laughs> and I was just like, oh shit, I don't have an outro. What do I say? Uh, bye now. <laughs> So it's kind of funny to uh, to look at the uh, the outro. A little bit of background here, since you know we're on a little bit of a nostalgia trip here. My current outro, which started back in 2010, was derived from the late great Roger Swan, and he would always do his thing uh, at the end of his videos. You know, this is like Tokyo Swan, or this is Iwate Swan, or whatever. And be like, and we'll see you next time. And that, that was the whole thing. So I incorporated that into my videos as tribute to Roger. It's just a small little thing, but I feel like having incorporated it, especially for this long, like we're going on like 10 years since his passing. And to see that is, is incredible. So I think I've rambled and raved long enough in this this uh, celebratory reaction video. So hope you guys enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. And with that said, this is the Andy San, signing for now. And as Roger Swan will say, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my September 2019 update video for you guessed it, September 2019. Woo. So yeah, as always with these up date videos, we're going to go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. And today I decided to record on my cell phone because recently got an update so my audio doesn't sound like hot garbo. I'm using my Rode VideoMic Me and uh, it actually sounds pretty good. I decided to have a slight change in scenery. Tried recording outside but it's still just too gosh darn hot so phone kept on overheating. We out here like a little bit away from my usual recording spot which is right there. Slight change in scenery. Just wanted to do something a little different. Got a fair amount of stuff to talk about here so let's get on with the youtube -y stuff. So YouTube wise, I've been feeling pretty dang bullish with uh, making videos as of late. Uh, if you noticed on my editing channel, edited by the Andy San, been making a fair amount of tutorial videos and been feeling pretty good about them. Uh, I've been getting some really good numbers with them, been sharing them around online, like Reddit and stuff like that. And they've been getting pretty positive reviews on there as well. And uh, really thankful that you guys are taking so well to the tutorials. But I also want to do some other types of content for that channel as well, in addition to the tutorials. So I'm actually working on a freelancing video where I talk about uh, different aspects of freelancing. And I'm hoping to integrate that content in along with the video editing tutorials so you get more of a breadth of content for that channel. So be on the lookout for that video soon, as well as others covering different uh, facets of the creative industry. Really looking forward to that. And as far as uh, this channel here, I've been feeling really good about the Andy Talks Japandi series, but currently at this time, I had a bit of a dry spell as far as that goes. Just trying to think of different ideas for the Andy Talks Japandi series, talk about like different topics and things like that. But I feel like at this time, there's not really a whole lot I can talk about. It's just, I'm, I'm kind of hitting a wall with the Andy Talks Japan series for the time being. Once things start getting moving on the Japan train, we'll be able to kick things back off again. But uh, for now, uh, kind of running out of ideas. So if you'd like me to answer some Japan related questions, give you my thoughts on some things, be sure to leave them down below in the comments, in the boopy de boops, and uh, I'll do my best to make a video. I really do enjoy making that series. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it and I want to continue doing it. So that's pretty much it as far as YouTube -y stuff goes. Um, as far as like personal life stuff goes, uh, school, Started that up last month. I've uh, been doing pretty good with that. Uh, getting good grades, turning in the homework. Really not much else to say as far as that goes. And as far as the freelancing goes, um, 
been kind of hitting a dry spell with that as of late. So my main clients have been taking a break before uh, quarter four starts up, which is like the main busy season as far as content production goes. So they've just been taking a break as of late. I've just been, you know, looking for some new clients to kind of help carry me over until quarter four starts up and, and kick things into high gear. Next thing we can talk about is the whole Japan status. Right now at this time, not really much to, to say about it because the whole saving up for Japan thing is really dependent on BAH and stuff like that. Just whatever else I can save up from freelancing. And like I said, freelancing has been hitting kind of a dry spell. So I've been dedicating pretty much all my money for that towards living expenses and other bills and things like that. BAH should start kicking off here at the end of the month. So we'll start making some progress then. Now, as far as like applying to schools out in Japan, deadline wise, I don't really have to start worrying until next year. Just a matter of saving up at this point. September is kind of a, a weird month for me. So this is usually when the weather starts cooling down and I start getting like really contemplative. This is kind of the month where I kind of review like what I've done this year and just kind of where I see myself going from here. Also, uh, September is a month of change for me. Um, September is when I left Japan, come back to the States, and it's also the month where I got out of the Navy. So I'll be celebrating four years for both of those milestones later on this month. It's pretty crazy to think about, like I've almost been out of the Navy as long as I've been in the Navy at this point. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, you know, to think about all the different changes and stuff that's gone on in my life since then. And just, you know, not just like location-wise, school-wise, finance-wise, but just like personal-wise, you know? Like, I go back and look at some of my older videos to kind of see where I was at that point in time. And that's that's really the fun part about doing these monthly vlogs. It's fun to look back on, the, on those videos and even this video, you know, be fun to look back on this like a year or two later and just kind of see where I was and you know kind of help put the pieces together so even though it may not seem very interesting now but in retrospect that's when things are really going to start being like oh okay <laughs> I get it so even if I don't get a whole lot of views or a whole lot of subscribers from it it's fun that's why I've been doing YouTube for 13 years I've been on the platform been doing fairly regular stuff for over 11 years now. It's always fun to look back and uh, see how far I've come and uh, to see where we go from here. So yeah, that said, the Andy Son, that for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my September 2019 update video. Part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as the YouTube stuff. So as we always do, let's just jump right into it. And yeah, we out here. Just wanted to do a little video outside of my room. Get a little bit of fresh air and uh, sweat. <laughs> Actually, I just got done eating some Taco Bell. So uh, feeling pretty good about that. I don't need eat it nearly as much as I used to so I was wondering like Andy you shouldn't be eating that stuff you're trying to lose weight and stuff right I get it I hear you I do and I don't eat it nearly as much as I used to this is more just kind of a every once in a while a treat for me because I'm doing the uh, uh what's that diet called uh being poor so <laughs> it's just kind of a, a fun little treat at this point so don't worry I'm not getting off the diet train the heat's any indication I'm just gonna be sweating all this shit off by the time I even get home anyway so it's kind of a moot point. So that out of the way, let's get on to some up date stuff. So don't really have a whole lot to talk about in here, but what I do have to talk about is pretty significant. One of the things I want to talk about is um, my whole uh, debt status slash saving up for Japan and all that stuff. So um, as you guys know, I owe a little bit of money to the VA from an overpayment back in 2017. The, uh, the way we have it all set up is that you know, the VA takes out a set amount of money to pay off what I owe them. And they usually do it in uh, little chunks. So I have like three chunks of debt with them. And then they just take however much that would, you know, cost to, uh, to repay the debt within a year. Now, that's what I originally thought it was, you know. So say I owe 
1200 bucks, 1200 bucks. I don't actually owe that much, but just for, for simple mathematic reasons, we'll say I do. The idea, at least had, as it was pitched to me from them, was that they would take what I owe, divide it in 12. So for like every every month, I would you know pay them, in this case, 100 bucks out of my BH. And uh, it would just keep going on until the debt's paid off. I think, and I'll have to call them on Monday, but based on this recent message that I got from them, this uh, piece of mail came in, um, I think that they're trying to get me to pay off the debt within this year. So not within a year, but rather the year. It definitely changes some things. Uh, it's both good and bad. It's bad because you know, I feel like I'm not really making any real progress or headway towards saving up for Japan because you guys know uh, freelancing has been in a bit of a dry spell this month and a little bit last month so I'm pretty much using any little bit of money that I get for living expenses and bills and whatever else until uh, the BAH and other things start kicking in and uh, I was really looking forward to that uh, first you know big BAH check so I was looking to get a good chunk of cash but at this rate I'll be lucky to get like 200 bucks from that which I mean not for nothing it's money but uh, not nearly as much as I thought it would be I'm a little frustrated about that but at the same time on the good end of things it is making me pay off my debt a lot faster which means that I'll be able to uh, get full BAH payments again much quicker than if this were to be padded out to uh, in this case, like May next year, if it were to go the 12 month cycle. So this is good. You know, uh, to me, the pros definitely outweigh the cons, although those cons are definitely pretty high up there, especially in the short term. But in the long term, I think it's going to be really good. And uh, we'll be able to get those full BH payments. And the plan, the jet plan, as it was, or whatever, <laughs> uh, it was to use my BH payments to save up to get back out to Japan and then just use freelancing as a means to pay off my monthly expenses. So, you know, bills and food and gas for the car and all that other stuff. If freelancing's a little low that month, I'd, you know, dip a little bit into the savings, but for the most part, just keep the BH payments in like a savings account and just use those like strictly for Japan. That's kind of kind of where we stand as far as the whole journey back to Japan goes. But uh, in other news, speaking of Japan, I told you guys in the last update video that I was a little low on ideas for the old Andy Talks Japandi series. And still trying to think of some stuff, but uh, I want to open up the floor to you guys as far as like what type of uh, Japan questions you would like me to answer. And uh, if there's any aspects or whatever you want me to talk about. I'm all for uh, some fresh new ideas. Uh, I'll try to uh, answer the questions as best I can, try to make a video out of it. But you know, for me right now, I feel like there's only so much I can do from out here in North Carolina. You know, there's, there's some things that I feel have to be like in the country to explain. Uh, if anything, get like some nice B-roll. So it's not just talking head crap all the time. Because I know you guys are getting kind of tired of that. Because, you know, I'm getting tired of that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty bad when even I'm getting tired of seeing my big old head in frame all the time. But uh, I digress. This also goes for uh, my editing channel, edited by the Andy San. Although I do have some more ideas for those. It's just a matter of putting away some time to, uh, to record and have a nice clean audio environment and stuff like that. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for editing tutorials and other content from that channel soon. So yeah, this also carries over to my Andy Japandi content for when I eventually make my ass back to Japan. Uh, what type of content you'd like to see. Um, I do have a lot of ideas for that, but again, opening the floor up to you guys. Um, definitely want to know what type of content you'd like to see, if there's any uh, particular parts of you know Tokyo or other parts of Japan. Uh, we'll try to stick within Tokyo at first, but I do eventually want to make my way out of Tokyo, go to other cities out in the good old Yaban, you know, like uh, Osaka, Fukuoka. Uh, I want to go back to Hiroshima again because I didn't get video the last time I was out there. Hell, we could even go up north to like Sapporo and stuff like that. So um, definitely want to do that. But I do want to hear what you guys have to say as far as that goes because 
your opinion matters. With that said, guys, before my phone overheats again, uh, we'll just uh, end things here. Definitely look forward to reading you guys' comments down below in the boobie boops. And with that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. As always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my October 2019 update video for, you guessed it, October 2019. Woo. So yeah, as we always do with these monthly update day videos, I'm gonna talk about some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So, as we always do, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing you guys probably noticed is the fact that I'm recording on my new camera for the first time in a long time. Got a camera up here on the sticks, on the tripod, and it is my new Panasonic G85. Shout out to the Everyday Dad, because if he can figure it out, you can figure it out. And he's the one that showed me what this camera can do, and so I decided to take the plunge and buy it. So I'm really loving the videos that I made with it so far. I did a couple of unboxing videos. I'm really loving the quality of it. And I can't wait to really show you guys what this camera can do. But so far so good. Really loving the nice crisp 4K quality. Although I can't get away with not shaving anymore. <laughs> if you've seen those unboxing videos, I look pretty uh, unkempt. So I gotta get a shave a little more often before I hop on camera. Thanks 4K. But anyway, yeah, so we're gonna be doing some more uh, unboxing videos in the next week or so. Got a couple more things that I got ordered, want to do unboxings of. And from there, um, I don't really have any scheduled youtube -y type content. I got some ideas and stuff, you know, typed out in the computer, but as far as, you know, making my own YouTube videos go, it's just on a kind of an as-is basis, I guess, because I'm gonna be focusing more on school as well as the major personal life news, which I guess we'll just segue over to personal life stuff. If you haven't watched my latest Andy Talks Japandi episode, it's official guys, I've been officially accepted into Lakeland University of Japan to start in the spring 2020 semester. So I am just so over the moon with this. This has been the culmination of four years and I couldn't be happier. And I can't wait to be finally back in Japan doing the Andy Japandi series for the first time in four years and making the videos that I wanna make, as well as collabing with uh, some YouTubers out there as well. I'm gonna be pushing for a lot more collabs uh, when I'm out there, cause I'll be living in Tokyo this time. I won't be stationed in Yokosuka and have to make like a two hour train ride up there every time I wanna go see my friends. I'll be, I'll be out there, I'll be in the area. So it'll be a lot of fun, a lot of stuff to cover, and I can't wait to take y'all on that journey with me. So basically what I'm gonna be doing for the next couple months that I'm still here in Amarkajin land, I'm gonna be selling off pretty much all my stuff. Um, I don't really need to take a whole lot with me to go study abroad in Japan. I'm probably just gonna be taking, you know, camera, obviously, a few electronics, um, clothes, shoes, you know, laptop, once it comes in. Aside from a few other things, that's pretty much it, really. So, really looking forward to be back in Japan. Ah, just such a satisfying feeling, so. Things are looking great for the old Andy San Samadeshta, and I can't wait to take y'all on that journey with me. Yeah, this one's uh, kind of a short up date. Uh, I don't have a whole lot else to really talk about. I'm um, just gonna be focused on school and selling my stuff and saving up as much as I can for these next two months and just push really hard for that. So as far as, you know, YouTube videos from your boy uh, for the next couple months, it's just kind of a, you know, whenever I can sort of basis, you know, as as I usually do. So just wanted to let y'all know that beforehand. If I get a little speck of time here or there, I'll put out a YouTube video, but I'm gonna be focused more on making them muns. You know what I'm saying? Before I start rambling on even more, <laughs> we'll just we'll just end things here. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Sign it for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. See you soon in Japan. <laughs> Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And welcome once again to my October 2019 update video, part two. So yeah, 
As we always do with these monthly up date videos, we're gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So, as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the fact that my faithful companion of four plus years, good old Chillbox, has been taken offline. If you guys saw on my Instagram, instagram.com slash theandysan, you'll have seen that um, yesterday, at the time of this recording, I formatted the hard drives on the old chill box, so she is no more. So F in the chat for good old chill box. I didn't think I would get so emotional over formatting the hard drives for a computer. And I know at the end of the day, it's just like wires and circuits and stuff like that. But uh, the old chill box has really meant a lot to me. And it was thanks to the chill box I was able to get into freelance video editing and be able to push out content and stuff like that for my clients as well as for myself from a production company in Ohio. Yeah, couldn't have done it without uh, the old chill box. And I remember first building the chill box back when I was still stationed out in Yokosuka, Japan. Um, before then, I'd never built a computer from scratch before. Uh, the only thing I did that even was close to that was like upgrading my old Dell Dimension desktop PC from like 2004. So it's a little out of practice as far as that stuff goes. But uh, thanks to some tutorials and talking with my friends online, I was able to get the old chill box up and running. And she's been just a complete workhorse for me these past four plus years. And I couldn't have done what I did without her. So F in the chat the old chill box. Where she goes from here, I'm um, basically gonna be parting her out, you know, selling the individual parts on eBay, and the money from that is gonna go towards my Japan fund. Even though I got a decent amount from my retirement fund and all that, I did have to use a lot of it for essential gear, like camera, laptop, cell phone, and also had to dip into it a little bit for some uh, living expenses. Freelancing has been a little scarce these past couple months. Kind of is what it is, you know, people go on breaks and stuff like that and, you know, I was busy with school. Now that we're getting ourselves back on track, I'm going to be, you know, selling all of my stuff pretty much and putting it on eBay and using that money to put back into the Japan fund. Your boy's going to be pretty busy with that because I have a lot of stuff I need to sell on eBay. But in addition to that, I'm also going to be focusing on school, which is my number one priority, not only maintaining my good GPA, but exceeding that GPA. So my goal is to increase my 3.0 GPA, which I have now, to a 3.5 at the end of this semester. So when I transfer over to Lakeland, I have a nice high GPA. And if anything, it's just for my own personal satisfaction. You know, it's nice to meet and exceed goals that you have for yourself. And also right now I'm, you know, finishing up some paperwork for Lakeland University of Japan, sending in some stuff for my visa and other things. So your boy's gonna be pretty busy and that's just the way I like it. I like to keep myself occupied. But also a little bit of uh, personal news, even though this is kind of a bad camera angle to, uh, to share this news with, but uh, I noticed that I lost some weight over these past couple months. As of yesterday, weighed myself and I'm down to 245 pounds. So feeling pretty good about that. I know I still got a little a little more to, uh, to lose to really get down to where I wanna get down to, but I'm actually pretty close to where I was uh, when I left Japan initially. I think I was around like 235, 240 when I left. And uh, with all the walking and stuff I'm gonna be doing out in Japan, I'm definitely gonna be uh, losing some more chubbage. You know, definitely feels good to lose some weight because not gonna lie, about three to four months ago, I was closing in on 270 pounds and stuff was getting a little tight. Just been, you know, going outside, doing some walking, drinking water, getting rid of some extra sugar and stuff in my diet. Nothing too serious. Uh, so this has been like the easiest 25 pounds I've ever lost. And I plan on losing more, especially when I get to Japan. So yeah, feeling pretty good about that. Speaking of Japan, last little bit I wanna to talk to you guys about before my camera battery dies, cause I see it flashing in the corner there. What type of content would you like to see from your boy, the Andy Sands Hamadeshta, once he gets out to Japan. Now, I have my own ideas. Also have some ideas for Andy Talks Japandy before I leave here. But I wanna know what you guys wanna see and have me talk about and things like that. My plan is to obviously share my experiences out in Japan, going to college as not only an American student, 
but an American student in his 30s because I don't really see a lot of the older folks who go out to college abroad talking about their experiences. Like the only ones who I, the only one who I really know, especially the one that did it in Japan, and you know, she's not like old, but uh, she is outside of college age, we'll say that, is Loretta from the Kamushi Chan channel when she got accepted for the Mex scholarship. I mean, I've been following Loretta for years and years now, but uh, I've been really paying attention to her um, like university videos she did when she was a graduate student out in Japan. And it really gave me a lot of encouragement to get my own self back to Japan and to talk about my experiences out there. So anyway, let me know in the comments down below in the boopity boops what type of quality Japan content you'd like to see from your boy. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy San, signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my October 2019 update video, part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that we out here at the post office, just got done dropping off some stuff that sold on eBay. So I'm feeling really good about that. I'm making a little bit of coin to help me with my return to Japan. And I'm looking forward to selling some more things. All right, so let's get on with the YouTube stuff. So uh, the biggest news I gotta share with you guys as far as YouTube stuff goes is the fact that I've started a new channel. Well, a new channel. Uh, it was originally my Andy San Life and Video channel before I moved to this channel. I've rebranded it as my Andy Japani channel. So I've decided moving forward that my Japan centric content is going to be featured on that channel. Now, I'm not gonna be moving any of my old content over to that channel, so all the content that's already on this channel is not gonna get moved over there. It's gonna be all new content. I learned my lesson last time. <laughs> and plus, it's just a big pain in the ass to move everything over anyway. So, yeah, it's just gonna be all new content. So, moving forward, the uh, Andy Talks Japan series is gonna be over there. Uh, the Andy Japan series is gonna be over there once I get myself back out to Japan. And uh, as far as what's gonna happen on this channel, I'm gonna be using this as my personal channel. So it's gonna be personal updates, uh, general updates, just kind of kind of what we're doing right now, actually. Just letting you guys know what's going on in my life, uh, what to expect on YouTube, just some other stuff that doesn't really fit in with the other two channels. Uh, you know, my editing channel and now my Japan channel. I just wanna keep the, the format of this channel a bit more open, but still kind of focusing on personal life stuff, updates and that, that sort of thing. If I have something that doesn't necessarily fit in with those other two channels, I can put it here and I'm okay with it. Yeah, I just decided that considering the current climate of YouTube, how it favors channels that uh, talk about specific types of content, uh, that would just make more sense to make a channel dedicated to that specific type of content. Plus I already had about 180 subscribers on that channel anyway, so why not, right? It was just kind of sitting there collecting dust. Really looking forward to banging out some Andy Talks Japan -y videos as well as my Andy Japan -y videos once I get out to Japan. So uh, be sure to subscribe. It's in the sidebar, but in case you uh, don't want to click over there, youtube.com slash Andy Japan -y. Check it out. So let's just segue over to personal life stuff. Aside from the uh, Andy Japan -y channel launch, the reason there hasn't really been a whole lot of YouTube videos for me is because I've been focusing mostly on school. You know, getting all my assignments and stuff like that done, as well as getting uh, the paperwork and all that kind of stuff taken care of for Lakeland. Uh, I just submitted the last little bit of it uh, last week. So right now I'm basically just waiting on my visa to come back. And then once I get my visa, then I'm gonna look for plane tickets, get those taken care of, and then look for uh, some housing, get that set up, and we'll go from there. But for now, just waiting on paperwork to come back. But that being said, I do have to say, I have been very worried about my finances as of late. It's mostly just because there really hasn't been a whole lot of freelance work for me. I'm not blaming my clients or anything like that. You know, it's just kind of the times right now. You know, it's right before the holiday. It kinda is what it is, you know? But uh, that being said though, I'm gonna be looking for some seasonal work to help give me some a good amount in savings. And then I'm also gonna be putting in BH and all that kind of stuff into savings. And then what I get from selling my stuff is gonna go into savings. So I should be okay. As far as, you know, getting myself out to Japan and stuff, like I should be fine. But, you know, I'm still worried because I'm not getting as much freelance work as I used to. And I have to dip into my savings in order to cover expenses and all that kind of stuff. 
up. I am my mother's son, as I always say, and I definitely do worry. You know, I am going to be looking for employment elsewhere so I can have a more stable source of income. Already applied to some stores and stuff like that in the area. So if freelancing doesn't start picking up, come the holiday season, I at least have something to fall back on. That's pretty much all I got to say in this little update video. Uh, this is actually the first uh, like vlog vlog that I've recorded on my new phone, the Samsung Galaxy S10e, which I did an unboxing for fairly recently that's gotten some pretty good views uh, relative to, to my channel anyway. So I'm really uh, proud about that and I can't wait to sit down and edit this video, hear out sounds and everything and all that fun stuff. So yeah, really looking forward to it, man. Nervous, but excited. So be on the lookout for some new stuff coming up. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Signed for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to my November 2019 update video for, you guessed it, November 2019. Woo. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, we're going to go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I want to talk about is YouTube stuff because I actually have some stuff to talk about YouTube wise. And that is uh, first I want to talk about my newest channel, Andy Japandi. Um, as you guys know, if you follow me in my previous updates, I released an all new channel, Andy Japandi and uh, it's gonna host my Japan content moving forward. So it's gonna have the Andy Talks Japandi series as well as the Andy Japandi series for when I finally get myself out to Tokyo, Japan at the end of the year. And uh, the response for the uh, first two episodes on that channel of Andy Talks Japandi has been tremendous. Really loving reading you guys' comments and seeing the views and all that kind of stuff pop up. It's really giving me a lot of motivation to uh, to keep going with that channel. And I also want to talk about my editing channel, edited by the Andy Son. I know I haven't really been the best or the most consistent with that channel. I've kind of had phases with it, you know, where I just bust out a bunch of tutorials and then leave for a couple months. And uh, that was kind of the case uh, recently. Um, I had some time and uh, decided to bust out a whole bunch of tutorials and uh, been really loving the response for those as well. And I've really been loving covering the new stuff in Adobe Premiere for 2020. Definitely going to be putting out some more tutorials. I have uh, three to four on deck that I get to get down to editing and I'm going to be releasing those on Fridays moving forward until I run out basically. <laughs> And uh, another bit of uh, YouTube news, and that is this is the last month for Military Mondays. As I said, when I uh, first moved to this channel, I was moving all my stuff over from my Andy Talks Navy channel onto this channel. And I wanted to do it, just kind of phase it in a little bit at a time. So I dedicated every Monday to having it upload from my Andy Talks Navy channel onto this channel. And uh, we're re reaching the end of our backlog. So by the end of this month, I think the 18th, will be the last upload for Andy Talks Navy, unless I make some new episodes. Those will be just kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. It's not going to be a regular series anymore. So Military Mondays are going to be coming to an end. Now, as far as the direction of this channel moving forward, with the uh, introduction of the Andy Japandi channel, I want to make this my personal channel. So it's going to contain a lot of uh, overall updates and stuff like that, and not just involving my personal life, but also my other channels as well. So that way I don't bog down those other channels with updates and things like that. And you just get the content that you sign up for and just have this as an update channel, as well as just a channel for uh, stuff that doesn't really fall under the, uh, the purview of uh, those other channels. You know, it's always nice to have a, a, just kind of a channel you can do whatever with. <laughs> you don't have to worry about, oh, I don't know if this content is, you know, falls under editing tutorial content, or I don't know if this is Japani enough for uh, this channel. You know, I can just kind of do whatever and just have the freedom to express myself, broadcast myself, as it were. Now, let's get on to some personal life news. So, just a little update on the whole Japan situation. I haven't gotten any response back as of yet uh, for my visa. Uh, I just kind of turned it in a couple weeks ago. About a month ago actually over a month ago shit and they said it usually takes about six to eight weeks to process and you can't really get a hold of tokyo immigration or anything like that uh, during the process there's not like a little status check thing you can look up sadly so i'm just kind of in limbo for the next couple weeks or so when it should be coming in but uh, as far as school goes i'm doing pretty well with that um getting really good grades turning in assignments 
pretty much all I can say really. As far as other stuff like uh, freelancing projects and uh, flipping and all that kind of stuff, I still have a couple freelance projects I got to work on as well. But I've been primarily getting by thanks to uh, the GI Bill and also selling stuff on eBay, which I've been doing pretty good with that. You know, I've been selling stuff like once every two to three days seems like. Yeah, that's also something I want to pursue when I get myself back out to Japan is different ways to make money. You know, like a lot of people, when they think of making money in Japan uh, as a foreigner, anyway, uh, the main thing they think of is like teaching English. But there's all kinds of different ways to make money. And I'm not saying this to like downplay English teaching or to look down on it or whatever. You know, you can definitely make a fair bit of coin teaching English, but uh, more one way to make a buck in Japan or a couple yen, <laughs> as it were. And I want to showcase those things, and especially for students, because on a student visa, you can only work so many hours a week, so you're pretty limited as far as that goes. But there's other ways to make money that uh, don't consume quite as much time. Do it right, you could make a fair bit of coin in the long run. That's pretty much it for uh, the updates for this month. So, with that said, this is the Andy San. It's not for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Welcome once again to my November 2019 update video, part due, Thanksgiving edition. So, yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, we go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So, as always, let's just jump right into it. And first thing I want to talk about is why I'm laying down in my bed. So, I've been busy working on some uh, freelance work, some homework assignments and stuff that's due at the end of the week and uh, some other things. So my back's a little jacked up at the moment. So I'm just laying down my bed, stretching my back out and it's feeling pretty good so far, but uh, just gotta keep the shoulders nice and limber so I don't get all stiff from overworking, uh, especially on Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> so but yeah, just, uh, you know, chilling on Thanksgiving. Yeah, so let's get right into some youtube -y stuff. So as you guys know, a couple months ago, I launched my Andy Japandy channel and it's been doing really well. Glad to see you guys watching the videos, engaging with the content, all that kinds of stuff. Um, and I can't wait to get myself out to Japan at the end of the year, which is next month. It's already quickly approaching and I gotta get myself a bit more ready than I am now. But uh, we'll save that for a later time. But uh, yeah, just really proud of how the channel's doing. Really loving that you guys are showing up for, uh, for the videos and stuff. And uh, once I get out to Japan, Hope you guys uh, continue to watch and tune in and all that fun stuff. Um, as far as editing and stuff like that goes, time of recording, I have an editing tutorial coming out on Friday, so Black Friday tutorial. And it's gonna be covering how to have text behind you. Yeah, as far as other non youtube -y stuff, but not yet personal life stuff, I'm really proud to say I've been doing really well on TikTok, actually. Um, I started an account on TikTok about going on two months now you know maybe about a month and a half at this point and in that time i'm closing in on 1000 followers it's uh been incredible to uh see all all y'all showing up for that and i haven't really even been putting up that great of videos really you know just maybe a couple little updates on japan and whatnot and uh just you know showing different anime that i'm watching this season and uh stuff like that you know just trying stuff out. Um, the nice thing about it is that it, you know, I don't have to focus on, you know, what's the most marketable video? What's the video that all the kids are gonna watch? And what's the most viewable content? And all this other stuff. You know, I, I ain't gotta think about that shit. So I just put out whatever, see what does well. And you guys seem to really like the, uh, the anime stuff that I'm watching. So definitely gonna be doing more of that as so long as TikTok allows me, because their copyright, uh, stuff is a little little wild west white now <laughs> wild west white now but uh that could change but for now yeah i'll just keep doing it yeah uh, once i get out to japan definitely want to make some more uh content for tiktok as well uh because there's really not a whole lot of people in japan on tiktok um and of the ones that are on it they mostly do like dancing memes and stuff like that so nothing really too startlingly you know wow i guess but uh, i definitely want to make some tiktok content once i'm out in little haban so yeah let's move on to some personal life stuff and like i said just laying down in my bed to stretch my back out because my shoulders and stuff are really stiff uh, they're feeling pretty good right now but i just want to 
you know, relax them a little bit before I get back to work. As far as personal life updates go, still doing well in school, you know, showing up, turning in assignments. That's about it, really. Um, we're closing in on the tail end of this semester. I only got a couple more weeks before it's over. It's crazy to think about it. I think I only have, like, what, two weeks left? Shit. <laughs> yeah, because I got uh, next week, which is the last, like, full week of school. Then the week after is finals. And then once that's done, that's it <laughs> for this semester. And from then I'm gonna be focusing on my return to Japan. So once the semester is over, then I'll set a uh, fly out date for my return to Tokyo. Really excited for everything. I just gotta get a little bit more ready than I am now. Honestly, I think uh, I need to get rid of some more stuff. So I think I'm gonna be donating a lot of clothes and just other shit that I don't use anymore. I've been selling a lot of stuff on eBay actually and that's how I've been keeping myself afloat financially because freelance wise I haven't had you know too much luck with it as of late but that's okay you know there's a will is a way right <laughs> so just gotta find other ways to keep myself afloat and uh, keep as much money and savings as possible so that way I have a sizable nest egg uh, when I get out to Japan right now it's pretty decent but it definitely could be better but yeah, that's basically what I'm going to be doing for the next couple weeks. Just getting rid of as much shit as possible and, uh, you know, putting as much money into savings as I can, even though I probably can't really do a whole lot with it just yet. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Sorry if it's a bit of a rambly mess. I'm just kind of sitting here chilling on this Thanksgiving day, 2019. Woo. So anyway, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. And as always... We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang. Andy here. Welcome to my December 2019 update video for, you guessed it, December 2019. Woo. So, yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, going to go over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff. So, as always... Let's just jump right into it. And the first thing I wanna talk about is some youtube -y stuff. So as you guys know, I started my Andy Japandi channel a couple months back, and it's been doing really well, I gotta say. Um, really been loving you guys' feedback, all the engagement, all that kind of stuff with the channel. And once I get myself out to Japan, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, I just can't wait for the even more growth for the channel to happen because I have a lot of plans for quality Japan content, gotta say. And I uh, can't wait for the channel to continue its, uh, its upward trend of growth. And uh, speaking of growth, even though this isn't really YouTube per se, um, I passed 1,000 followers on TikTok the other day. Really excited to be on that platform and to be doing some good stuff on there. Uh, right now, you know, the content's kind of, eh, you know, it's just kind of everyday life sort of dealios. But uh, once I get myself out to Japan, we're gonna be putting up some more Japan-related content on there. Uh, showing you around different places in Tokyo and all that kind of fun stuff. Just kind of like a, a condensed version of what you'll see on Andy Japandi. So uh, be on the lookout. If you're not following me on TikTok, what are you doing? It's uh, at the.andy.san. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about as far as youtube -y stuff goes. So, that said, let's get on to some personal life stuff. And I got a fair bit to talk about this month because there's a whole heck of a lot going on this month, you guys. First up, I got to say, this Saturday, by the time I release this video, it's going to be my birthday, a day that will live in infamy. And I'll be 34 years old, and it's just crazy to think about it, man. You know, 34 years old, no longer in my early 30s, but uh, I'll be squarely in my mid-30s. So it's a little, a little crazy to think about, you know, like even when I turned 30 back in 2015. Um, I always liked saw 30 as kind of like the beginning of old age, I guess. So it's just like, oh man, by the time I hit 30, I should have my life figured out, right? Not the case. And uh, I think all for the better, all things considered. I uh, probably won't do a whole lot because, you know, I'm old and boring. But, uh, you know, I might go out for a nice dinner or something like that. Nothing too, too fancy. And you know, as far as school stuff goes, um, next week is going to be finals week, so I'm going to be a little busy as far as that goes, getting in uh, final exams, final projects, and just, you know, finishing out the semester. 
turning in any other homework that uh, that I can. And then uh, once next week's done, done for the semester. All I have left to do is focus on getting my ass back to Japan. Speaking of which, let's move on to that. As far as my uh, my current status and getting myself back to Japan goes, um, I turned in the last of my visa paperwork and all that stuff uh, to the nearest Japanese consulate, which out here in North Carolina is in Atlanta, Georgia. So I just sent out all of uh, my information and stuff out to them. I'm expecting, you know, by the time this semester's over, I'll have a response back. When I sent out the, uh, the last of my visa paperwork, I also sent out the last piece of the old chill box, which was the case. I had sold everything else, motherboard, hard drives, CPU, RAM. Yeah, I definitely lost a lot of money on that because it's so fucking big and shit. And I had to send it all the way to freaking Washington State. Definitely an end of an era as far as that goes because, you know, like I said, I had the chill box since 2015. I built it when I was still living in Yokosuka, Japan. You know, I got all the parts from my uh, PC Depot, which was a computer store, uh, literally right next door to my apartment. I literally just like got all the parts and like walked from PC Depot to my apartment, <laughs> put everything together. With that case, it was a real pain in the ass, but uh, I made it work, right? Yeah, man, you know, I got the laptop going. Now, as far as like long-term solutions go, I'll probably end up getting another desktop at some point, but I'm looking more towards like small form factor. So I don't want to get a huge like mini fridge size desktop because, you know, I've been following like the subreddit that does uh, small form factor PCs. And it's really interesting to see what you can put together in such a small amount of space. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That's going to be several years down the line once I'm in a much more stable position. But for now, I'm pretty OK just editing on a laptop like I used to back in the day. Yeah, man, you know, I got a whole bunch of different ideas once I get out to Japan. I can't really share them all just yet because, you know, all these are contingent on me doing well in school, you know, because school is ultimately the number one priority. So it doesn't matter, you know, all the video ideas and all these other side hustles and things like that. You know, that shit really matters unless school is in a good spot. And uh, the way I've calculated everything, credit-wise, I should be able to get my associates in basically two semesters. Anything that I can't take in the summer, I'll be taking in the spring, get my paper, and then ideally I want to transfer over to Temple University to finish out my bachelor's. It's gonna be a whole lot going on, man. I just, I'm so, so over the moon. You guys have no idea of me getting myself back to Japan. <sighs> With that said, I gotta get going because I'm just sweating from the sun just beating on my face. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sun. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to my December 2019 update video, part two. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. So as always, let's just jump right into it. The first thing I wanna talk about is YouTube stuff because I just want to say thanks to you guys for all the support for my Andy Japani channel. I know I just launched it officially as the Andy Japani channel just a few months ago at the time of this recording, but in that short time, you guys have really been very supportive of the channel. I can't thank you guys enough for all the subs, views, comments, messages, all that stuff. I can't thank you guys enough for it. And, you know, moving forward into 2020, uh, doing the Gary V Challenge, really looking forward to making some more of that quality Japan content for you guys also for other platforms as well. Now, what does this mean for my other channels? I'm basically gonna be shifting the majority of my focus over to my Andy Japani channel, especially since it's gonna be the most relevant in my life at the time, because I'll be in Japan, and I wanna share that with you guys. But for my Edited by the Andy-san channel, uh, it's just kind of a as-is sort of thing, so if I find something neat that I wanna share with you guys as it involves like Adobe Premiere or other related software, uh, I'll put it up on the channel, but uh, it's not something I'm gonna be doing on a very uh, consistent basis. So I've also been toying with uh, different content ideas for that channel, like the how to YouTube type stuff and sharing my experiences as a freelancer, freelance video editor, definitely wanna share those with you guys. But basically, it's just gonna be on an as is sort of base, or as needed 
sort of basis. So don't expect too much from that channel as far as being on like a regular schedule goes. But as for this channel, um, I've been doing a lot of thinking. It's been my OG channel. It's been my ride or die since 2006. Been making content for it since 2008. And since coming back, I've been just loving being back in the OG channel. Uh, but the reality is that my focus has shifted a lot to my newest channel, Andy Japandi. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast, as it were. You know, as I'm focusing more on making Japan content, uh, the content for this channel is kind of not being pushed out as much. And um, that's just kind of what I want to focus on moving forward. Um, so am I going away from this channel? No, I'm still going to stay here. Uh, but basically this channel is going to be my personal channel. So it's not really going to be my main channel anymore. It's just going to be uh, a personal channel hosting uh, just, you know, monthly updates like this one, just to let you guys know what's going on in the life of the old Andy and Sam Adeshta, as well as other types of content that doesn't really fall under the video editing, how to YouTube uh, umbrella or the Japan umbrella. So just basically just have this as like a miscellaneous type channel. I really enjoy it because it gives me the creative freedom to post whatever and I don't have to worry about it. So with that said, let's move on to personal life updates. And I don't really have a whole lot to share from my last video, but I figured I'd just give you all a little update on my visa. I uh, just called the, uh, the office in Georgia not too long ago before I started recording and they're gonna be sending out the, uh, the visa paperwork and all that stuff today. So we're looking forward to that and uh, we're gonna be setting up plane tickets and setting up housing and all that kinds of stuff. So really looking forward to getting that all settled because I know the main question everybody's been asking is, Andy Sam, when are you flying out? When are you flying out? When's your fly out date? When are you coming to Japan? So I'm gonna be able to give you guys a more solid answer moving forward. So I'm aiming for uh, next weekend actually. So sometime around like the 21st, 22nd, something like that. So that way I have a little bit of time to uh, get used to Japan, not be so jet lagged, hopefully, <laughs> uh, by the time Christmas rolls around. So my big Christmas present to myself, being back in good old Japan, good old Haban. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Get myself some Christmas cake, a cold chew high, and enjoy myself. Yeah, uh, once I get out to Japan, I'm gonna be making some vids, uh, getting boots on the ground as far as that goes, uh, looking for some part-time work, uh, not just for videography, but for other things as well, maybe do some English teaching, whatever I gotta do to make them months, because uh, I got a couple weeks before I start school, so I'll have uh, plenty of time to uh, get that all set up, and then once school rolls around, um, I can, you know, I'll have uh, some sort of income to fall on so I'm not just completely relying on savings the whole time because as you guys know, if you're on the GI Bill, winter break is the worst of the months. So you gotta make sure you're bringing in some money because you're not gonna be making a whole lot until probably end of February, end of March is when the paychecks start to get a bit more consistent. So definitely gotta hit the ground running. <laughs> boots on the ground, as it were, as far as making the months go. And uh, definitely want to be making that quality Japan content, like I said, uh, once I get out there. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this little monthly update video. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy San, signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to my December 2019 update video. Part 3. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, gonna go over some personal life stuff as well as YouTube stuff. Oh wait, we're not gonna go over YouTube stuff this uh, this update video. So yeah, anyway, I decided to just do this uh, raw because uh, I'm gonna be really busy this week, uh, packing up, getting myself ready to go out to Japan at the end of the week. Woo, so uh, yeah, just doing this one raw. So apologies for the ums and the ahs and the you knows and the doggies barking in the background, but uh, gotta do what you gotta do to get a video out, right? So yeah, um, like I said, YouTube-wise, 
not a whole lot to talk about. I already pretty much said what I wanted to say in previous update videos. So if you don't know, now you know. But in any event, uh, let's go over some personal life stuff. And today I wanna talk about my grades, which just came in today. <laughs> so yeah, and in the uh, interest of being transparent with you guys, um, I'll be honest, I didn't do as good this semester as I did the previous one. So I did falter on a couple classes. Um, I could sit here and make excuses and be like, oh, you know, this, that, and the other. But really at the end of the day, it's on me. So it is what it is. But that being said, it didn't, you know, affect my GPA overall as badly as you might think. So it did go down a bit, but it's not the end of the world. So um, I basically got an A, a B, two C's and one D. So yeah, one course I didn't really do so good in. Uh, like I said, kind of is what it is. Um, I know there's, you know, gonna be a whole bunch of people in the comments being like, oh, you should stop being the fat, lazy fuck and blah, 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 blah. And I get it, but we're not here to, you know, talk about what I could have done. You know, just simply here to say what I did. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, GPA wise, I think I went from like a 3.0 to a 2.7, 2.0. Yeah, I think like a 2.7 is what it was. I don't have it in front of me, but uh, that's just what I remember. So, I mean, it's not that bad of a dip, but still definitely a dip. And I wanted to be on the other side of that. But uh, like I said, it is what it is. You know, the only thing we can do is uh, try better out in good old Haban and, you know, take the studies and stuff seriously. So, and plus out there, I won't have to worry about, you know, getting myself ready for Japan and being all anxious if the visa is going to come in and, you know, all this other stuff. So, you know, I won't have to worry about that. But uh, yeah, definitely will be taking my studies a lot more seriously out in Japan. So, yeah. And I think for the first semester, we'll try to pick some easy classes. So that way, you know, I don't have to worry about my GPA as much. So is what it is. But yeah, so grades are in, semester's over, and uh, all I got left to do this week is, uh, you know, get rid of the stuff that I'm not taking with me to Japan, um, turn over uh, my car, uh, give my TV to my brother, a bunch of other things um, that I'm not obviously taking with me to Japan. So uh, yeah, he's gonna have a pretty nice Christmas this year, not gonna lie. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, so I'm just going to be pretty busy with that this week. So don't know what's going on video-wise. I want to make as much as I can, but no guarantees, <laughs> you know. So, and if I do make videos, they'll probably just be these raw vlogs, vlogs, if anything. But, uh, yeah, no guarantees. But uh, definitely, once I get myself back to Japan, be making more videos. Um, obviously, after homework's done. So, <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> I won't start school until the 7th of January. So I do have a little bit of time in between then and now to make some videos. So that's what I want to do. I just want to make as much stuff as I can before school starts. And that way I can just, uh, you know, push stuff out for like the back catalog and things like that. And I can just like slowly release things over time. And, uh, you know, once I get myself used to school and just, you know, the flow of things, then, you know, I can start pushing out more content. But I definitely do want to kind of ease myself into it. I know I said I was going to do the Gary V Challenge. I'm still going to do it. But uh, after seeing the grades and stuff, um, obviously, school comes first. So I got to gotta definitely take that stuff seriously. Uh, so, you know, after school and stuff's all taken care of homework wise getting that shukudai in stuff like that then we can focus on videos but like i said i got two weeks in between then and now so it's plenty of time to uh, get some videos out and uh, there's definitely some stuff i want to talk about in andy talks japandi and obviously starting up the andy japandi series again after four plus years of hiatus <laughs> in between um so it's definitely a lot to do in a short amount of time. So your boy's going to be pretty dang old busy. 
and uh, I can't wait to uh, make some videos out in Japan once again. Uh, that was a stretch of a rhyme, but in any event, I'm kind of rambling on, so you guys get the deal. So, yeah, be on the lookout for new videos, but they probably won't be coming this week. Um, I'll do my best, but no guarantees. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Sign for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. And as always with these raw vlogs, we're just going to keep smiling and waving until the end card is over. So, hopefully I don't get dinged up in the comments too bad. <laughs> but it is what it is. Alright. <laughs> Bye, guys.